what are you afraid of? Those feelings are made of. Get in the game, your moment of fame, show them what you made of. It's time that we stand up. It's time that we man up. For anyone asking who is the best, we put in our hands up. My time, my time, nothing can keep me from reaching the top. This time, like the last time, I'm moving so fast, I'm ready to I'm ride. ready to throw down, it's time for the showdown. I'm ready to rise, don't be surprised, I'll take on the world now. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down, hand over my crown, hand over my heart. I do this for my town, I do this for my crowd. So turn me up real loud, my time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. My town, my crown, we know what it takes to be reaching the top. We're reaching the top, we're reaching the top. We know what it takes to be reaching the top. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. My town, my crown. We know what it takes to be reaching the top. Few things in life that come close to driving at the legendary circuit spa Francochamps. When you take that and club that with a 24 hour long endurance race, you're in for a fine day ahead. Welcome along, ladies and gentlemen, to the circuit spa Francochamps for the HNR 24 hours of spa organized by Mule Motorsport. My name is Samuel Rora and I'll be joined by Justin Prince right here as we take you through the first six hours of this legendary race right here at this iconic circuit and what a treat it offers to be absolutely samil this is going to be one of the most exciting races to keep an eye on seven kilometers in distance around this track 4.35 miles 19 corners around this circuit with plenty of good passing zones including down the camel straight as well as the run out of launchamont to the final chicane on this circuit there's also the danger zones, however, that can pop around this racetrack. They come one of the most dangerous portions of this track, as well as Malmedy to be able to roll your way to Sector 2. Speaking of, Sector 2 going to be crucial if you want a shot to set up your passes for the rest of the lap. And it's a circuit where the most legendary drivers in the world have competed and have shown their class. And look at the site right here. Multiple LMP2 cars heading out on the track at the iconic Eau Rouge corner. Careers have ended here and careers have been made here as well. It's a circuit that has defined drivers across the eras. And of course, on the camera work today, we've got Hugo Luis with TV cameras provided to us by Iswan Valo from Track Camps 22. And now let's get to what's happening right here on the track. Beginning right now is a 15 minute long qualifying session for the LMP2 category. And overall right here, we've got three categories today. The LMP2s, the GTEs and the GT3. So unlike the real world Spa 24 hours, it's not only GT3s, but this is, say, more on the IMSA side of things with prototypes, GTEs and GT3s competing together. But first, Justin, it's the new Dilaras that are right here on Showcase. And what's special about these cars that have just popped onto the iRacing service? Well, for one, just a few of the cars have been bringing a lot of excitement across the service for the drivers as well, though. It's the speed these machines carry. It's the prestige they carry. Of course, they ran at Le Mans, for example, in 2017, in 2018 with this chassis. But as well, with this respective track and this respective car combination, the main thing's going to be how you manage your way around the corners today and around the traffic it's much more quicker compared to the lmp ones of the past as well as the past prototypes these cars are going to be tricky to drive here today and for several of these organizations you have a mix of real world drivers real world sanctioned and affiliated teams along with some of the top sim racing organizations across i racing as well as the top organizations from europe all taking part in this respective clash you have a mix of talent groups all set to go racing today absolutely quite a few teams are competing here that you would recognize 
on the whole there are a total of 16 cars competing in this qualifying session for the LMP2s and it's a straight shootout right here for the next 15 odd minutes we're down on board with the low group racing team heading towards Orhoj and Radio and Justin the key to having a good qualifying lap here at the circuit goes through Eau Rouge. And what's it like? How do you take this particular corner? Well, for Eau Rouge, you have to be able to time it up with the right amount of speed, but also you have to be picture perfect on your marks. You miss the corner apex by even a little bit. You're either getting an incident point or you're crashing the car to the right side tire wall, coming out of Radion and up towards Kemmel. This is the type of track that punishes you for those types of mistakes around this track today. It's going to be critical to be able to get through. And there's so many times I've seen in some cases, Samil, when you're behind somebody and get a good run out of that section, you pull that draft and turn down the Kimball straight to be able to set up some passes. This could be crucial, especially early on in this race today, for teams like Low Grip Racing. Make sure they get and stay with good track position throughout today's race. And track position is going to be something very critical towards the later half of this race. Of course, it's an endurance race. There are 24 long hours, as we see one of the prototypes getting a bit loose on the exit. But nevertheless, it may be a wide circuit, it may be a long race, but there's always that advantage of starting up ahead of your competitors. And this is what this qualifying is all about. Another one of, another one of those big challenges of Circuit Spa for the Shops, at least on iRacing, is the track limits. And Justin, from what I've heard, and at least from what I've tried as well, the iRacing police is pretty harsh over here. Yes, it's one of the most strict track limit circuits in all of iRacing. Today, for example, for this race, 120 incident points is the limit before you have to serve a penalty within the sim. Then any further 25 more incident points trigger penalties, disqualification up to 255. The thing is, it is extremely easy over the course of 24 hours to get some of the incident points. It's just a matter of as a group that you know those exact limits and drive within them. It's been talked about in the past, for example, with the various different limits in the past overall iRacing 24 hours of spawn, where you want to be able to get within the right mix of reach to be able to carry speed with that being so strict today, Samil, the main thing's going to be drivers are going to not likely cut across those track limits too, too often because you do that too many times, obviously, you're going to be in big time trouble. You can only essentially afford a couple incident points an hour as a group. And that is something pretty tight when you consider that it's a 24 hour long race and drivers will eventually get fatigued at some point. Of course, driver times are something that we must speak about later on, but let's focus on qualifying that we are seeing right here. And WS Racing Esports Team Magenta are the team that we are following as they go past the tricky middle sector of the circuit, heading towards the Savlo and Coupal Frey corner. They currently stand in P number 3, with Nicholas Nagele behind the wheel of that car, but look at the gap, Justin. Eight tenths of a second, and Simpson Esports are doing a pretty good job early on in the session. And shouldn't be surprised, right, with the experience Simza has with their organization, with the drivers that are a part of that roster. It's been a group that's been looking to expand as well. It's brought along some of the top road course raiders to its organization. It should be surprising towards the front, but for some of the other teams, such as WS Racing Esports Magenta, this is a chance to show what they can do in series such as this. They've competed in real world events. They've competed in various sim racing events in various different types of the sim racing world. This is a chance for drivers to show what they can ex do in the big stage as T3 Esports moves their way up to P3. And now, of course, we have to focus on Team Mortal Racing Esports coming across the final corner. The bus stop chicane is what it's known as. A pretty tricky section this in qualifying as well because you can just so easily overshoot yourself and miss your breaking point. And Team Mortal Esports only good enough to go up into P number eight. Now then, let's talk a little bit about Team Mulder Motorsport. Now, Mulder Motorsport in real life have been what, going along for a very, very long time. In fact, they started out in 1978 with Bert Mueller and his brother Hartman, who were racing VW Golf GTIs back in the day. And since then, they've progressed. They've gone into lots of touring car races. 
and eventually right now they're also racing in the Porsche Michelin Super Cup and GT3 racing with Porsche so there's certainly a lot of history behind them in real world and now in the virtual side of things as well they are doing a pretty good job as Alexander Diaco goes up into P number five yeah, they've been growing their team as well in recent months as well. Each and every one of their drivers, for the most part, have their own sim racing rig as well that's set up to their personal preferences. Their specific sim racing chair, their specific type of steering wheel, as well as at least one gigantic monitor set up or triple monitors for the respective drivers. It's a team that wants to show speed. It's been competing in several various sim racing organizations is sanctioning events throughout the year. And now having its own event to show and support the sim race community right now their drivers currently run the mid pack though on the board give or take some of the other teams we we're talking about though expect to be quick as well though today phoenix racing esport is they also expect to be fairly quick this is dirk walter behind the wheel right now with this car and phoenix racing if you haven't quite recognized them from the real world motorsport are the very same team that run in dtm and also in the porsche came in club sport category in germany as well so they are pretty big names in the real world side of motorsport and they now go up in to second place the phoenix Motor racing green car now then it's mark welch in p number eight for motor racing esports they did their first run not a very great one let's call it that way by their own standards but they are coming across for a second one around to just backing off right here they have a little bit more time to work with and this is an era group that has had some real world drivers take part with them this year and in several different events including the 24 hours of spawn for i racing still about p8 on the board but this is the chance for other organizations to try and have fun, see if they can compete for the top level prizes today. There's 330 euros available per class today. It's available for the top three organizations. There's going to be a lot of pressure in terms of that to be able to get on the podium, whether you're in an LMP2, GTE, or GT3 today, for teams such as this. They're gonna need to push up the tempo. They are off the pull time by two seconds, just about. Yup, it's not just a case of pride right here in such a big 24-hour race. The financial rewards are also on play right here. And for each of these teams, there is a certain hunger, a certain desire to go one up and do better. For them now, there's only nine more minutes left in qualifying to prove their best shot in the LMP2 category. The same can be said for Bull Out Racing as well. They find themselves in in the mid-pack at B number 9 as they come across to the final corner the chicane they've got to keep it very tight right here there's a bit of undulation in the middle and you, if you power out a bit too early you can end up finding yourself facing the wrong way around where does the pull-out racing team go they still say B number 9 do they yes indeed 201 258 they didn't have their lap count in fact with incident points but you mentioned the difficulty of that final chicane you'll see this here with the 77 you have to be able to time it up right to the left side of the track along those rumble strips not hit the rumble strips too hard where it slides the tires you overcook the braking entry you're likely colliding into somebody during race conditions then there's that quick flick from the right to the left for the final chicane down the front stretch where a couple times we've seen if you haven't been hit from behind some drivers have hit the gas too hard and spun it around or looped it around by that midsection that can in turn be one of your major danger spots today because of the chance where once the racing gets underway, you may see someone dive up to the right side of somebody in the short term to try and take advantage of them if they take that line a little bit too shallow or break a little bit too further back. Absolutely. But, to... to. Yeah. I was going to say, in other words, you're going to need to be careful here and you'll see how some of these drivers are taking this and how aggressive they are how comfortable they feel on taking this section absolutely this place has caused a lot of confusions in real world and in sim racing and we've seen so many times especially when the multi-class categories get involved that a lot of drama takes place right here meanwhile it's angry bull racing yet again on another lap they still find themselves in B12, but briefly, we just caught a glimpse of Sims and Esports LMP2 back at the very top. And they still are in B number one with a gap of five tenths of a second to their advantage. What can D3 Esports do then? They're currently in P number four. They want a challenge for the win and get those rewards in along with a great sense of pride. The qualifying will certainly help them out in this case. 
Coming across to the final chicane that Justin spoke about right here and seems to be going good, powering out on the exit, just making sure that it don't go a bit too eager on the throttle and E3 Sports. Well, doesn't count. Incident exactly. point. Like I said, it's very easy to get one, right? If you clip even a little bit of over top the rumble strips over more than half the car over those rumble strips along that green astral turf for example will give you an instant point a little bit of kick up on the dirt will give you an instant point that's what we talked about as well with the importance of a rouge and ready on for today and you'll see it right here there's so many drivers have seen take that section coming out of Longchamp too wide and get an instant point right there WS Racing Esports Magenta though does have the chance to pick up some draft here in the closing stages of LMV2 qualifying here possibly yep here he comes crosses the line and it's had another lap discounted by the yes. instant points that was a 155 I think they may have cut the corner somewhere for it to be four seconds faster than the pole time yeah, that was a rather shocking one, wasn't it? So certainly things coming into perspective right here. Teams finding it a bit tricky to stay on the track and avoid the incident points. And in some cases, finding it tricky even to not outbreak themselves and cut corners in this case. That shouldn't be a surprise though, right? We talked about the strictness of this racetrack and we're seeing it right there. But I'm curious how teams like this do today. First time I've personally seen Prism Sim Racing Beta They've been looking good in some of the practices with individual preparation and training sessions throughout the week. Currently P12 though, only on the Bora. 201-275. This may be a decent one this time though. Yeah, they come across then. For a good lap time. And another one discounted. Ah, ah, look at this now. Look at this now. So many teams are having their lap times cut out by this clear case of track infringement that the Irish and police believes in. And so it's quite clear right here then, if you even put half a wheel out on the circuit, off the circuit rather, you will get penalized for that and we've seen so many brilliant lap times just be cut out for them. Indeed, checker flag started a wave though for the OMP2s. These drivers will have the chance to finish their lap and then we'll go GTE qualifying here just like that. So several of the teams happy with their times I'd have to say. But that is an astonishingly quick time from Simsa Esports. One of the best qualifying performances I've seen, Samil, from them in an event. Again, to recap right now, Simsa Esports, 159, 725 at the top of the board. Phoenix Racing Esports Green, a 202.239, followed by Rick Furchart Sim Racing in third, T3 Esports Low Grip Racing Team in the top five, WS Racing Esports Magenta pulling off the track in sixth, Bullout Racing in seventh, with Moore Motorsports Sim Racing's Pro Car in eighth, Goomer Motorsport Club in ninth, and Motel Racing Esports rounding up the top 10, 15 cars, all getting the chance to set qualifying times. Just like that, it's time for GT qualifying. Here on RaceBot TV, the Iron Racing Esports Network for those competitors. And this is the class to keep an eye on today for those respective cars as they make their way on the racetrack. Because some of the teams have second cars in that. But for others like Race Union, nobody able to take part in this one today. JMS Racing, Race Union, and several other organizations expect to be factors for today in that class. Those cars are all on track right now as you see your LMP2 final running orders still on the left side of your screen separated by 2.3 seconds was the qualifying difference from the bottom of the board to the top of the board today. See how the drivers do for race pace. They'll be triggered by the green flag later on today for the official event. Take a look now at GTE qualifying though here at the Circuit of Spa Franco Shop. This is JMS Racing. One of several organizations, of course, taking part today, and one of those who have been fairly quick in their practices throughout the day, including earlier this morning. They'll be driving the Porsches. Now, there was a late decision in September, rather, to switch from the BMW M8 to the Corvette for the second car for this class for today. We've seen several teams represent the Corvette, including Rasmus Busk, who switched recently to HM Engineering. We'll be driving the 159 today. We'll be one of the drivers in the Corvettes. He's just a few car lanes up the road.
from your 182 machine on track. Overall, more than 12 competitors currently on the racetrack for this part of qualifying is let's take a listen in on board here. Once again, this is JMS racing to the 182. Phone call slap then for GMS Racing with Marcel Kiefer behind the wheel. They cross the line in P number four as it stands in this Porsche 911 RSI. And then we're coming up to the online simracing.de team in the Ferrari. They seem to be the only Ferrari competing here in this GTE category. So they do stand out quite a bit. But will their lap time stand out? That's the question. Come across the line and get that P4 position, Justin. Indeed, a good qualifying session so far for some of these competitors. No surprise, though, to see HM Engineering at the top of the board, isn't it? But Austrian Sim Racers up to second and Bentley Guns up to P3 already in their respective class. So very competitive for some of these cars already, with some of them picking up some draft, but some of them, as we've seen in the past, seem to prefer some of the clean air because you can lose time behind somebody in some of the corners around this racetrack. Absolutely. Well, as we have discussed time and again in the world of Formula 1, two, dirty air is something that can really, really compromise you on each of your laps, be it in qualifying or in race condition. And so the drivers want to stay away, want to have that clean air. They want to do something special with just that. Team Race Union is coming across to the final chicane. And what can they do in the Porsche 911 RSL? Coming across here, using the undulations, getting a tight exit, powering out that beautiful straight six engine surrounding the area. And for Team Race Union, is it a counted lap? Have they gone no. over the track limits? It's not. That was only the first lap, and some of these teams do take a couple laps, remember, Samil, to have the tires heat up. Enough to put in a good lap. It takes a few laps to be able to get them to optimal temperatures on the iRacing service. And that's why you'll see some drivers have their fast slap in lap two or lap three. Some of them will then come back down the pit lane and change their set of tires. Some of them will try and cool them down as well. But the difference is astounding though from the classes. 11 to 12 second difference between your GTEs and your LMP2s in pace. Absolutely, that can be a major problem in the race for each of these guys. Just trying to avoid trouble, trying to stay out of the way and make sure that the traffic management is incredibly clean. So we take a look at what Stage 1 Racing Black are going to do in their first run. The second one rather, because they've already done a first one. 
and it is a 2 minute 12.9 that would put them in P number 6 initially and then team 11-9 Simsport with Dave South behind the wheel are going for their second run in this one and Justin you spoke about tyre temperatures being a major factor here on iRacing as they are in the real world too what kind of a difference in lap time do you get if you're on the right temperatures if you're not? At least half a second or a full second difference in some cases, depending on the circuit. We've seen it already with the LMP2s where drivers, when they had good laps on a few lap holder tires, were about at least a few tenths slower and couldn't match or surpass the quickest mark on the pylon. And that shouldn't be surprised. That's the case for plenty of cars on the surface. But the thing is, with this respective tire, it takes those couple laps to build up. So, it takes a few laps to get optimal grip, optimal runs in terms of pace, and be able to take the corners hard enough in turn to be able to send it on in. Some of the teams are a bit more cautious on this. Some of them are a bit more aggressive when it comes to their tire calls. But for we'll see with Race Union, for example, 211, 231 that time it does count for them and now they're off to get some new tires yep the tires the old ones were warmed up primed up and ready and here they are then back in the pit lane after taking a quick oh they'll be warming up their tires for yet another lap and then they'll be going on for a quick qualifying run but at the top then as we do approach the 10 minute mark in this session it is still hm engineering leading in qualifying with Rasmus Bust behind the wheel of that 159 car. If they are driving the Corvette here this weekend, as so are the Rings, the Ring Fizzard Sim Racing GTE team, who are coming across for another lap. They put in a 2 minute 13.234, Justin, and that will put them ideally in P number 8, but they are going for another one, so I'm presuming that the old one was just an outlap for them. They actually picked up time for the second, they lost time in the third, and now they pulled over actually on the track of note. The 179, you see also cooking along and pushing along for a third lap. And they have their best on the first. So there's just the preference of some of the drivers as well. And this is not going to be an easy race, as we talked about. Hmm. Lots of different coordination is going to be important for drivers, as well as what type of driver we want at specific times of the race, right? Because... We've talked about it in the past on many different broadcasts over the years where some teams have a gold driver or a silver driver or a bronze driver. Some it's about availability, mind you, on who can run X amount of stints or are we going to go back and forth after a double stint or a triple stint and then switch drivers then. There's so many discussions that come into play in preparation for this, including, mind you, who qualifies this car to be able to start the race, which is also so crucial. Make sure you have that early position because, as we've seen, you fall behind early by getting stuck in the second or third pack, you'll likely lose a ton of time on the circuit. Indeed, and it may be a 24-hour race, but track position still incredibly crucial. We do, of course, see the provisional qualifying results on your screen right here with Etchum Engineering and the Corvette having a two-tenth of a second advantage over Team Race Union in the Porsche. Three cars, of course, in this category, the Corvettes, the Porsches and the Ferrari, just like we do in real life. Should be a fun battle to see how this one plays out. The Valkyrie E-Racing Green Team are up here putting in their qualifying lap for the Corvette and let's have a chat about this car for a second Justin because it's only recently come onto the iRacing service and all of a sudden it has turned out to be quite a popular one right here. I mean it should be a surprise right it's a dominant car in real life but the main thing is it was a surprise to many people because notably it was talked about by iRacing they used the CAD drawings for this car with the 2020 being 2020 situation to be able to get this car in the iRacing service. The main thing is, though, on that, though, Samil, and the main and crucial thing is, it's a car still active in competition and winning in real-world competition. And that's where it became so surprising to see that in there, and drivers love it. Not just the speed of it, but the thrill of it. The feel of the car is near perfect. The way it grips the corners is really well, and there's a reason it surpassed cars like the Ferrari, even the Porsche, as one of the most preferred GTEs on the iRacing service to run. Exactly, we're seeing so many top drivers in the sim racing world also give it their go on the Corvette C8R. And they are having quite positive reviews of this one as well. Of course, the first ever Corvette to be mid-engine. Usually they were all front-engine, including the C6 and the C7R. 
which are on the iRacing service. But this one, yeah, this one is a bit different. And it's suddenly making the headlines as we come towards the very end of this GTE qualifying. The Ring Physio Esports Sim Racing GTE team once again coming for a run, heading past Bochmore, which is stay virtually flat in these GTE cars because of the amount of downforce that they've got. But this also means that when you're chasing somebody, the dirty air is ever more significant. And as well, just in some cases, having clean space helps you focus directly on your marks and just focus on putting in a hot time or a hot lap rather around the circuit. In some cases, being behind somebody can throw you off as well, momentum-wise and rhythm-wise. Interested to see what Ooh. happens here. No race union just says, you know what, I'm going to pull off the racetrack. They're not happy with their lap, and that pulled the draft off with somebody who was behind them in turn. Yep, they had a bit of a twitchy moment ahead during the final chicane. We saw their front end slide a little bit, and then they decided that enough was enough, and they had to abandon that lap. What about the Benley Godston in the Corvette? It's a green one. And here they are coming across past the final chicane. Seemingly looks like a decent lap, but can they translate it into a high good position? But now it's a 211463, which puts them up into P number five, Justin, which is not bad per se. Yeah, only a four tenths off the pole time. Much more closer, have to be frank compared to the LMP2 qualifying, the top five separated by about just four or five tenths of a second. And that I think is a good sign of what we expect to have a good race overall. But the main thing to think about too is some of these teams, especially the big ones, have tried the various cars to see which one is quicker for what strategy call, what's the preference for our drivers. Were they able to handle the characteristics for this specific type of car? It's been talked about, for example, the Porsche has been really good at this track in the corners. The straight line speed for the Corvette going to be crucial as well here at this racetrack. Still about four or five minutes. We are getting towards, in fact, the end of this qualifying grouping for the GTE's checker flag is now starting to wave for these cars. And those characteristics are going to come into play once we go green flag racing in turn. Absolutely. So the session for the GTEs is done. HM Engineering still provisionally on pole position for this one. There are a few teams that can beat their lap time. They're not too far off. Can one of those teams be the Austrian Sim Racers rock team? Julian Kesselhut behind the wheel off at Porsche. A good combination with Austrian drivers and Porsches usually. Coming across past the chicane. It's a quite a swanky looking livery this one. But is it fast? That's the main question. Crosses the line, a 2.11.485, not a bad lap time, P4 it is for them. Doesn't improve their time, in fact, their race union just needs two tenths of a second, though, they say. I'm going to take those two seconds and just go in the pit lane. I mean, do you blame the track position for the event? And Florian Bowden seems to be very happy with how his run went here in, in turn. I believe that means one group is left here to qualify, though, Samil, as everyone else is in the pit lane. GT3s oh, yes. are all set to go. Bring it on then, GT3s. Before that, let's take a look at your results for the GTE qualifying. And yes, indeed, it is HM Engineering with the pole position with a brilliant lap time of 2 minute 10.903. So they have the prime position for this one. With Race Union in second, Prism Sim Racing Alpha in third, the Austrian Sim Racers Rock Team in fourth and all the others following behind. Of course, some have the track position advantage. In the long run, there is still an advantage, there is still a chance rather for each of these teams to try and make their way up the top. But quite clearly, the gulf is quite huge in the GTE category. But what about the GT3s then? They're currently out on track, trying to warm themselves up, warm the tires up. And interestingly enough, Justin, there is quite a bit of variety in this GT3 category that we've got right here. Quite a few BMWs, quite a few Audis, but interestingly, only one Mercedes AMG GT3. So drivers clearly picking the Audi for its corner speed and the BMWs for its straight line advantage. Exactly. And they know that based on the preferences. Curious how the Mercedes though performs because here's the thing again, all these drivers know with the preparation what's going to work out the best and if they choose wrong they're going to be in trouble the whole event they are essentially stuck to their choice for this race 
So if you haven't done your due diligence, you're likely going to be paying for it. You see here with this BMW, we're on board with, for example, though, how quick and how tough that section we talked about was up the hillside can be because of that curbing if you touch it. That just lost a lot of time from the 285. It did indeed. You've got to be pretty precise in the way you go about with things right here in each and every category, and even more so in the GT3, because remember, the nature of this car is such that you can't push it as hard as you can with the GTEs or the LMP2s. They're not as frisky, they're not as pinpoint as those other cars. So you've got to be a lot, you've got to adapt your driving style accordingly. And now, of course, we in the World Sports Sim Racing Black are the team who we are riding on board with. Tell you what, let's take a couple of moments, let's have a good run at the final sector of Spa and see what it's like from the driver's perspective. Have a listen. GT3 qualifying once again underway. We were focusing on Mill Motorsport Black. They are facing a bit of internet issues here and there, so that's why they're popping on and off. You can see them on screen. But let's focus on a different team then. Let's focus on Phoenix Racing Esports Orange with Jan Hotschek behind the wheel of that BMW Z4. Now then, Justin, there is a popular perception that the BMW is a lot more stable to drive in comparison to all the other cars, say the Audi the Mercedes or even the Ferrari that we have not competing here sadly but nevertheless it's an old beast it's been around in the R racing service for quite a while but it's still the favorite option but critically right here we don't have any BOP changes so how will that impact the BMW and all the other cars in perspective right here well again that's where the perspective of preparation comes into play with no BOP that means whatever car feels the best not just team-wise, but performance-wise, you're likely going to be seen. That's why I think we'll see one Mercedes here. In terms of how effect the BMW is, though, I'm quite curious as well with that as well, because the Audis have been very sporty here in the past, especially here at Circus Spa Francochamp. In terms of speed, they've been tough to beat, but the BMWs were some of the more quicker cars this year as well to compete against in the iRacing 24 hours. In other words, I think that's going to be Pretty balanced in terms of the speed. The main telling sign, though, is what you see towards the top of the pilot. Because it's currently BMW, BMW, and then you have the 285, who's been having the issues in. Oh, guess what? BMW. In other words, the BMW is going to be quite fun. Yep. Don't win it at the very top, then, for the BMWs right here at Spa in qualifying. Let's see what the other cars can do. I mean, if you take your mind back to... The recent Spa 24 hours that we had here, organized by VCO, the big special events, we did see quite a variety of cars right here. We saw the McLarens, the BMWs, the Audis. Over there, there was a McLaren that won in the form of VRS Grand the Sim Sport. And by nature, that car, let's say, is quite similar to the Audi in terms of how it handles. It's very twitchy. And the BMW is still very certain, still very stable, and with no BOP, certainly hitting the markers. Coming across the line is the Phoenix Racing Esports Orange car. 2 minutes 17.013. Where does that put them? In P number 2 provisionally. And now we're going to have the results right here, Justin, from this session. Still plenty of time for these times to get shuffled around, but still, W. Bush, he should, such rather, has been able to put his time car on top of the pylon for now by just about a tenth of a second. Since the Esports competitive in both their main entrants so far, seems the phoenix racing winter motorsports sim racing black then you have team race getter all competitive today with how things can go for how these drivers are today you can see 3.32 seconds rather 
the separation for the top 10 provisionally at the moment. Indeed, looking back at live pictures as qualifying still goes on for the GT3 category. It's the ring visit sim racing GT3 Pro Car that we are taking a look at right here. As just to mention, guess what? It's yet another BMW. So it's quite the parade of these cars that we are seeing right here in qualifying as we will see in the race as well. So the ring visit team go up into B number 8 and hey look! Something different! It's an Audi! Hooray! It hasn't set a lap time yet, that's the thing though. Yan Men trying to show what he can do in the Wolf Motorsport Sim Racing Lumpus Machine. And these cars, keep in mind, for this respect, organization also competes in the various different German-based racing organizations. You see the ADAC logos, for example, competes in some of the endurance races at the Nürburgring. The thing is, though, this driver has yet to set an official time. Two laps in a row. The 210 has had an incident point around this track. Coming across to Eau Rouge in the Audi, 10 cylinders, it's a classic old V10 powering this beast and of course having another wheel being put behind the curbing red on Eau Rouge, so I wonder if this lap will be invalidated or not, but yet again as we are seeing time and again the iRacing marshals and stewards are pretty aggressive in terms of track limits, very stringent, very strict in terms of how they go about with things. And Jan Mender riding up the curves. And now, Justin, in terms of GT3 cars, we see them sitting not being as pinpoint as GTE machines or LMP2s, of course, by the nature of their design. But we often see drivers in real world route motorsport just slightly ride the curbs here. So, can you really ride the curbs in eye racing? And does that really offer you a major advantage, per se? Well, it kind of depends, really, because you're seeing. They're trying to avoid the curves here. And the one main thing is sometimes you can hit on the straights in some of the corners, but if you hit the back tire on the curves a little bit too much, for example, that's where you see snaps of oversteer and drivers going to the arm code with the tire barriers in some of the major events. You see, just knows that limitation for the left side of the car because he can see more so on that driver's side than the right side of the car. You go a little bit too further in, you get an instant point. That may trigger one right there. Just snapped a little bit and had a bit of wheel hop as he clipped the grass. Major moment there for the Wolf Motorsport Sim Racing Lupus team on their qualifying lap right now. Drama all around, even in qualifying. And it just goes to show what kind of a challenging circuit spa for Uncle Shams actually is. And you can follow all our drivers, all their lap times at racespot.tv slash endurance. That's where the live timing is. Where you can go about and check what these guys are doing and Jan Mende crosses the line not the cleanest of lap times for him but there's still time left in this session Justin for him to go ahead and do another one only one driver yet to set a time though out of 40 total entries today in the 299 and that in part is after they crashed on their initial warm-up lap but for Phoenix Race and Esport Orange I think they're in a comfortable spot here just six tenths off the pole, yes. But this is looking pretty quick in their BMW as well. They had an incident point on the last lap, however. Yup, each and every team finding it a bit difficult to cope with all the incident points that are going about here at Spa. You have to be so pinpoint with the way you drive this car. And then Phoenix Racing comes across the line. Still be number three. And I think that was just a warm up lap. They'll be going for another one, will they? They have oh. to. That was actually a tenth off their pull time, their quickest time, rather. So they've lost time compared to the Ford. May have to push a little bit harder now and hope for no incident point. Steinke have to keep an eye on these cars. There were several different Albrecht Motorsports machines taking part in worms. Upwards of five to seven drivers were seen in the final training sessions earlier this morning for these competitors. So a lot of drivers looking to take part potentially or at least help out for that team's efforts. Get on the BMW on track as we reach the very closing stages of qualifying right here. Marcus Unkoff for the repair expert out. Altal Motorsport Sim Racing. I hope I've got that one correctly. He's riding on board right now as we come across the chicane again. 
just have to be very pinpoint, not heading on the exit anywhere off and using the curves to your advantage, not getting too twitchy. And powering out, where does that yep. put them? Out lap. That puts Wait, them on the run for another fine flying lap then, let's call it that yes. way. <laughs> As mentioned, out lap, yes. But still, this is just part of the preparation, right? You need to, as a driver, think of the big picture and know that you have a chance to, with 15 minutes on the clock, put in a few laps. It's not like, say, Le Mans, where you have maybe one or two shots to get a good lap. If you mess it up, you're in trouble. If you say, do what that just had happen, you have the chance to pull, reset if you have enough time on the clock. You'll have enough time for maybe an hour, two, three laps on fresher tires. For teams such as this, there's also a chance, say, if you're happy with your lap time, if you don't feel you can bump up the time and just want to keep on chugging along, you may be able to also get some chances to get some extra preparation here. This is now, in total, their fourth total lap, now their fifth now, coming towards the end of said fifth this time. Where does the race get a team come across as they come to the line? The best was 2 minutes 17. And the last lap, well, yeah, I, I, I guess. Yeah, they're going for another one right here. So yes. let's take a look at the provisional results on screen right now. It's the Familian Bomber team with Fabio Bu uh, Bush at the top of the, Busu at the top of the screen. I beg your pardon for the pronunciation. As we see another car spinning around at the background, then it's Simza Esports GT3. They're doing a good job in each category. They're up in P number two, Michael Davies behind the wheel of that car to qualify it. The only motorsport, the organizers of this event, having a good, strong performance so far in qualifying with P number three in Phoenix Racing Esports and the German's perf German per performance sim racing, the first of the Audis. So, it's a purely BMW dominated field right here, but there is still potential for things to happen right now. And just look at that glorious sight of cars going past the Go Rouge. Isn't that what we love to see? Check the flag now waving though for some of these drivers. So they only have a couple more moments to try and show what they can do and end their laps now to get themselves up higher on the pylon. 217.5 though for the 200. They actually get only up to P8 with that. That jumps them up one spot. Can these guys then jump another spot? Can they do something special for B number 13? The ring visit sim racing GT3 and machine is coming across to the final chicane yet again. Tricky corner as we've all spoken about and no, they say it's enough for qualifying. We'll go back to the pits. And actually, Justin, speaking of the pit lane, that is something we have to speak about. It's an especially long one. But for now, let's see what Team RaceKidder.de are going to do. Are they going to complete the slap? Are they going to back out? What are their intentions? What their last lap not counting, that's going to be the questioning mark it looks like based on how they're running at the very least they're trying to keep it up to speed it's just a matter of if they had an incident point if they had one you'll see them pull to the right looks like they're going to try and record this lap and so where does this lap put them that's the critical question for team racekiller.de are they going to get track position on their side it is their best lap so far but the position still be number six what about the pole sitters though? Are they going to do another lap? Yes, they are going to finish this lap. Their last one wasn't the best of laps, but they're still provisionally on pole position. Nothing to worry about per se, but they still go in and make their personal best from the looks of things. No, actually, incident point once again on that. So that will end off their session for the most part. I believe a couple other cars have a shot to try and improve their times. Just a couple. This is one that definitely needs to bump up thirds. A 2.18.9 as the rest time. You have to think they can put it a much quicker time. And answer is no. With that three minutes you've seen on there on the pylon. And this car probably also done. Yep, so qualifying is reaching its final couple of breaths as each of the cars are finishing off their final runs. What about the AMC Birkenfeld EV Pre Alpha? Talk about a handful of a name, that one. Simon Esses is behind the wheel of this one, so they're going to come across to Bloshimo. A gentle lift as you go across this fast left hand there with speeds over 200 kilometers per hour. To the final chicane, braking extremely hard. You're mashing the brake foot, the brake pedal right here. 
navigating away past the chicane powering on once again is there going to be an improvement for the amc team no that doesn't count either a 218 either way that wouldn't have gone them up higher i believe that's all the cards in fact Seville, just like that exactly just like that qualifying has come to an end and that's it for the gt3 category 2 so just after we show you the results of this one very very shortly we shall be going green for the 24 hours of spa the hr &R 24 hours of spa i should say rather organized by mule the motorsport who incidentally are also based here at this very circuit so then results from gd3 qualifying it's the familiar bomber team who have bombed their way past with Fabio Busu. Fabio Busu, I beg your pardon, taking pole position for that team. Simsa Esports are then in second place with the home heroes, Mule Motorsport, starting in third. Phoenix Racing Team Esport Orange are fourth with German Performance Sim Racing, the first of the Audis in P number five. And then Team RaceKitter.de and all the other cars following through. I'm curious to see whether Mercedes has qualified eventually. And that feels like they haven't. Either way, competitive qualifying session, one of the closest gaps between the top of the pylon and the bottom of the pylon. Still 3.3 odd seconds or so, but the mid pack nearly on top of one another in pace in the GT3s today. And that's exactly what we are going to see in the race as well with all the teams all the drivers just getting so close to each other always being so competitive and when you factor in the traffic oh boy this should be a fun one so then with only a couple of moments remaining before we go green for the 24 hour race i think it's time to look at our starting grid and let's begin with the lmp2s because simsa esports have taken pole position right here they've grabbed top honors and phoenix racing esports green they have to settle for p number two with the ring wizard lmp2 team in third and d3 esports in fourth and it's a load of racing team with sammy Lowe qualifying the car in p5 with the ws racing esports the magenta team following them in p6 the bullard racing team have sharpened their horns and they're up in p number seven and mule motorsport sim racing pro are in eight the Durana Motorsport Club. EV are in ninth. Motor Racing Esports only starting up in P number ten. Then the midfield, Progressive Sim Racing Alpha in eleventh, and the Prism Sim Racing Beta team. The Justin is pretty excited to watch out for in twelfth. And rounding off the grid, we have the Angry Bull Racing, the Phoenix Racing Esports Yellow, and the Fit Fuel Racing. So that's the LMP 2s rounded off. What have you got for GTEs then, Justin? HM Engineering, we talked about the hype for him, them, and their main driver for today, Rasmus Busk. He set the pole time by three tenths of a second over Race Union. Prism Sim Racing Alpha starts in P3 with Austrian Sim Racers RLT rounding out your top four. The Bentley Gods looking to try and bend the might of the checker flag towards the direction from P5 with online Sim Racing.de rounding out the top six. 1.4 seconds off the pole time. It was stage one racing black with Valkyrie Esports or E Racing Green rather starting inside the top eight. Ring for, ring for short, Sim Racing GE DGE starts in 24th overall in the field today with Mundra Motorsport Sim Racing Blue rounding up the top 10. JMS Racing 11 9 Sim Sport round out the entrance today in your GT Class ML. Yep, that's GD is done. Let's focus on the GT3s then. And as we just saw in qualifying, Fabio Busu doing an excellent job to put that car up in a pole position. But the gap, oh, seems a eSports GD3 only a tenth behind with Mule Motorsport Sim Racing Black in third and Phoenix Racing eSports Orange in fourth. Then a the German Performance Sim Racing team, the first Audi in P number five. And the team race get a DE team starts in six. Absolute Motorsports, Aislinn Design are in 7th and Repair X by Ultra Motorsports Sim Racing start on 8th. AMC Birkenfeld EV Pre Alpha are in ninth with yet another one of the Drink Wizard Sim Racing cars in 10th. Albrecht Motorsports start in P11 and Wolf Motorsports Sim Racing Lupus in the Audi start 12th. 
And rounding off the grid in a solitary role, that is Ring Fizzard Sim Racing GT3 Am. They've got multiple teams competing right here. Let's see what they can make up in the following 24 hours. It's going to be a long race, it's going to be grueling at times, but trust me, with some cracking multi-class racing along the way, should be a fine 24 hours coming up next. It's going to be a fun day to say the very least for these drivers already drivers getting ready to get rolling and keep in mind there is a start zone in effect for the gtes and gt3s today these lmp2s they can go as soon as the green flag waves in the iRacing sim however everyone else they're gonna have to wait from around the coca-cola scoring tower down the main straight today all the way to just in front of the total El bridge to be able to start the race in other words Patience is going to be crucial for some of these classes off the jump to make sure they don't get any penalties today, Samil. But also, how they take the start is going to be critical because as we've seen in recent months, some of the endurance races, even the 24-hour distance ones, can be crazy for the first 30 minutes. And the drivers who are able to keep themselves out of trouble are ones who contend to the end. Absolutely. And keep in mind that we are starting with a shorter pace lap, so the drivers will not have the entire seven kilometers as part of their advantage to warm up their tires. Tires will be cold, tempers will be flaring up. 6.93 kilometers of this legendary circuit that we'll be driving on for 24 hours. It's partly cloudy here, 18 degrees Celsius on the track going to be cold the grip is going to be there but initially you've got to warm things up you've got to warm your tires up and make sure that you keep it clean because if you don't as justin mentioned the 24 hours race could be hampered in a matter of seconds so then the drivers have put up here what a fantastic sight it is on the run down to blanchiment lmp2s gtes gt3s all in their glory waiting for the race to begin here they are then gridding up and just before we get going justin your final thoughts as we prepare to begin the hnr 24 hours of spa months of preparation all comes down to this some of these drivers have been registered as far back as september for this event lots of excitement for these competitors several of these teams have raced together in the in against one another in the past but all that prep work, all those calculations, all that strategy work, all is crucial for this moment, for this race, because now the laps count, now the positions count, and the chance to get top prize money on the line now, to say the very least. Already been a contact, though. I believe somebody hit somebody back there. Drama even before we begin. Here we go, then. 24 hours of spa. The LMP2s are warming up getting ready and we shall be beginning any moment now the tempers are raging the excitement level is just bumping up this is the moment that all these drivers have prepared for for such a long time coming up to the start zone Green flags in the air, green, 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 off we go for the 24 hours of Spa and the Simsa Esports car gets a flying start at the very top but we're already seeing cars go side by side, nose to tail, heading towards Eau Rouge, a bit naughty at the background over there but Simsa Esports maintain their lead and it's a Phoenix Racing Esports screen following up in P number 2, already on the Kevin straight. At the back there, GTEs have also begun, they're going side by side at Eau Rouge. I mean, not a brilliant idea, but they are still doing the daring stuff. Going wheel to wheel right here, Let's you Engineering still seemingly leading right now from the race union team. As we now see the GT3s beginning their race. Quite a clean start all the way through, Justin, as we are seeing for LMP2s and GTEs. What are we going to get for GT3s right here as the green flag's in the air and they get going. We have to see how Bushu does now in the start. He did switch lanes. They're right at the edge of the start zone. We'll have to see if that's reviewed there. But great launch by him. Everybody already single file. No major incidents for any of the drivers. No major off tracks even. 
for these competitors or any of the classes. There have been a couple bad starts here and there, though. We've seen Austrian Sim Racers get freight trained after they couldn't get a good launch, and because there wasn't a good launch from the second row, guess what? The battle for second already is heated. Exactly, it is the Simsa Esports GT3 team in the orange car getting behind the Mule Motorsport Sim Racing back. They've lost a position, and Mule Motorsport quick to bounce on in the BMW Z4 GT3 and keeping things rather clean at the very top. We saw one of the Audis at the back losing a position too, so all of us on the German performance sim racing team who started fifth in the GT3 category are down to P number five, but already one lap in for the LMP2s, and what a quick one it has been so far. Simsa Esports LMP2 having a blistering start, still keeping P1, but look at this battle going on. It's the Mjolnir Motorsport Sim Racing Pro team getting involved with the motor racing team, going side by side on the entry to Eau Rouge. Get on the edge of your seats, this should be exciting! And the Mortal Racing team smartly gets the position as Mule Motorsports backs off, but Justin, this is where the fun begins. The draft on the chemistry. That was actually a really great move by Alexander Dejanko to be able to cross him up, get to his left side, and try and outbreak him right here. The dangerous part is not making contact on the switchback, and there's been several incidents we've seen in the past right along that rumble strip that time. It was planned perfectly. Just let the other car go, and force them to make a mistake in El Rouge and Radion, and make the pass back. Absolutely. Drivers being incredibly calm in their approach. They realize that it's not a 24-minute race. It's a 24-hour race, and there's ample of time to gain back any lost positions. Nevertheless, they are still pretty aggressive in the way they drive, and that can be seen in the way that Mike Ehring is driving for the T3 Esports team in P number 4. Already behind the ring visit, Sim Racing LMP2 car. No steel action already here as we come across to the middle section of this circuit. Getting across to the good ball, Frere. It's a tricky corner, just have to avoid going off. And he just put a wheel outside there, so perhaps momentum is not on his side, but the draft will come into picture right now. Heading past Blanchimo, you've got to get a feeling that Dirty A is going to come into perspective. Loses a bit of time, but here he comes then. Here comes Mike Erang, but he backs off. The ring visit Sim Racing LMP2 car just reminding him that the position is strongly theirs for now. I understand the reasoning here to follow on behind. You can save fuel by riding behind somebody by about a lap or two. But the main thing is for a ring, he had to lift off the gas three times. You're not over on the corner or not run over the back end of that car. That's lost him now two seconds already. Make it 2.5 seconds and already two laps. Moves such as this, I don't blame moves such as this because it's close as some of these cars will be today. The Porsche lunges down the inside of the Corvette. Same can't be said in the real world IMSA series this year. But nevertheless, it's the Austrian Sim Racers team who got the move done. But look at the drama right here in the mid pack of the LMP2 category. Almost getting three wide for a couple of seconds into Lecom. It's the low grip racing team in the middle of all this protracted drama. And while all that has gone on, the WS Racing Esports Magenta team have got P number five for themselves. And the 41 car of Bullard Racing, well, they find themselves at beat number seven right behind. And look at this lovely little pack that we are seeing forming right now, Justin. And the thing is, if they race against each other a bit too hard early on, the leading pack can just check out, even though it's just the start of the race, and build up an almost unassailable gap. Exactly. And while you have to think about your whole race strategy in the long term picture, the main thing that makes me nervous as a driver and as a competitor at the same time, though, is if your strategy is trying to make sure you can maybe get towards a longer stints or be able to short fuel towards the end of the race or something along those lines, there's the trouble of you might not never see the leaders again. These cars have already lost a second this lap or what, for example. The group for P3 has already lost four tenths this lap. And that can be part pace, but also if you feel your pass faster, I'm one of those types of drivers where this may be a bit against some cases. I just push the issue for the first couple laps and then try and get to the lead group and then start saving and think about it from there. Because with there being so many hours and so many pit stops for these competitors, you have a lot of time to work with to get back inside your window. 
Indeed, it's a long, long race, and you can't let the short-term judgments literally mess up your race so early on. You've got to think in the long run. And speaking of things happening in the long run, this is a battle that we shall be seeing for a long, long time. Should things remain rather serious? Number eight, Ring Cross at Sim Racing LMP2 car defending from D3 Esports. We'll go to the outside line and nice and easy get the jump for P number three. And I'm kind of having a feeling that it's actually going to benefit the Ring Cross at Sim Racing LMP2 team far more than the D3 Esports team because now they can stay behind and save up fuel while in the draft. Nevertheless, the low grip racing team does not bother about any fuel saving right now because they are trying to attack their competitors up on top, which are the WS Racing Esports Magenta team. And Nicholas Nagele has to defend like an absolute maniac in that LMP2 car, has to block off all the traffic from behind. This little train is coming up and they are soon closing up to the ring wizard and the D3 Esports car up ahead. Had to give one of these drivers credit, some of them with some experience in the real world, some of them well, veteran sim racers. This has been one of the cleanest starts to an endurance race we've seen on the iRacing Esports Network in 2020. A heck of a start for these drivers to say the very least. But the main thing is though, I think again, part of the reason they're pushing so much is as talked about, they're losing tons of time. And I think one of the main reasons we've seen the 71 T3 Esports push that issue early in this lap is they were losing a second a lap nearly. I wouldn't be surprised at this rate that we may see these cars reel in that group, that machine, and in turn, once that happens, though, that's where the floodgates, I think, open up, and some of these drivers have to be thinking here, yes, I want to save gas. This is going to really help me by having a lift off. If I get a chance to make a move, though, I think I take it if I'm one of these drivers right now on the street. Exactly. Track position is critical at this stage. You want to be up ahead, you want to be in touch with leaders and the same can be said for all these drivers in the GT3 category because while the Familiar Bomber team with Fabio Busu has pulled up a bit of a gap here at the very top, everyone, literally everyone is closing up to the back of the Mule Motorsport Sim Racing black car and now we see the Sims Esports GT3 machine, not the BMW for that matter, close up and just stay behind in this train trying to get something on Kevin Hilgen Hovland Scar, the Mulder Motorsport Machine. This battle in GT3 also incredibly clean. But take a look at what's happening at the very top, Justin. It's the familiar bomber car, Fabio Busu. We saw him be incredibly strong in qualifying, but he's just translating that in the race as well. And already, only with 10 minutes into the bag, he's got a gap of 2.7 seconds in the interval. Is it a surprise? We've seen him quick throughout preparation. He's been seen quick throughout 2020 in various organizations, including at some of the Nürburgring races. So that's not a shock. The main thing that's helping him, though, is you see that right front? It's a little crumpled in. You may notice in some cases in La Rouge, if you take the curbing too hard or you bump the track, you can damage part of the fenders. And guess what? That is so hurting the 285. They're going to have to deal with a bit of aero damage for the rest of this run at the minimum now. And that, I think, in part, is also slowing down this entire group down the straights. That's an excellent observation that you made right there. And the damage vendor will greatly, greatly impact their straight line speed. We saw that last week when we had the, the Neo Endurance 6 hours of Imola with a couple of cars having fender damage in the GT3 category and they were just not able to close up in the straight line. That is going to be a major factor and when you consider just the amount of straight lines that we have here at Spa, it's going to be a major problem and already 10 minutes in, look at this, LMP2s are already lapping the GT3 cars. Talk about the pace difference that we are getting right here and now traffic will become a factor. Perfect example, P2 of the own P2s. Phoenix Racing Esports lost three seconds just now in Sector 1 because they got stuck behind a whole crowd of GT3s. They just passed them now, but they were right there. Sims have timed it up perfectly to get by them, and some of these other machines are going to lose tons of time if they are stuck in Sector 2, especially here. It's going to be critical to clear by, and that's not oh going to no. help them. Big contact in the GT3 category. And that just slows down the LMP2s behind as well. Thankfully, nobody's in the barriers. But an Audi and a BMW crashing. How many times have we seen that in the real world motorsport? We've seen that yet again at the start. 
and the perfect start has just seen a slight chink in its armor but the crash between the gt3 cars and now look at the lmp2s swarming around like buzzards trying to swallow up these gt3 cars much slower machines remember a big big pace advantage they'll be thinking of only one thing in their mind move aside peasant look at this car losing so much time that has to be the number 11 machine isn't it that's the number 11 machine of progressive sim racing alpha losing so much time and this just means that the cars behind can close up and they just lose touch with the leaders everything is kicking off here justin not sure if i use the exact phrasing here but this isn't shouldn't be surprised with how tricky this is and there's several cases where if you're in a faster car you need to be aware of what's going on obviously but the main thing also in a lot of cases it's a mix of being able to follow the blue flags if you're in a slower car but also being predictable you run an unpredictable line say you swerve back and forth you say stick on the right side then move to the left thinking they're going to go to the left side and go into the opposite direction because they're trying to pull some draft behind you that's where you get into a wreck and that's where you also get a lot of enemies some of these cars they've been fairly predictable that's the main thing that's been helping a lot of them some of them though they've been in the middle of the racetrack and they're piling up in the middle of the corner action at la source drama in the lmp2 category it's the low grip racing team who remember were fighting in the middle of the midfield and they have spun around and it seems like they are involved in a bit of drama with a couple of other cars too we take a look at the replay. Luca Becker comes across the start finish line. Ah, goodness me, I sense that something's gone wrong with the GD3 car. It has. Perhaps a bit too aggressive, a bit too ambitious, Justin. Yeah, that's to say the very least here in the source. That caused a lot of trouble, to say the very least. And some of these cars, I'm surprised, didn't get into it. It's a blind corner. And especially with the dip, you're trying to get as low as you can into the corner. Several of those cars, thankfully aware, several of them having some help to know what was going on. And now, so most of these drivers are through the main first wave of the GT3s. The GTs are also going to be very difficult, though. They're, they are a bit more spread out, though, compared to some of the air class, some of these air cars right now. And some of these drivers capitalized a lot. The top five separated by 13 seconds, at least three seconds on average because of all this traffic. Exactly, that's what happens, right? That's what happens when you've got such a big gulf in classes. Traffic will be one of the major factors to deal with. And look at this, the GT3 leader also getting swallowed up so early on. Everyone, look at this, and they've lost time. Look at this, is the tricky part. When you encounter traffic in the wrong part of the circuit, that is where you end up losing so much time. And it's quite clear right there that the LMP2, I think that was Mueller Motorsport Sim Racing Pro Team, clearly losing so much time when trying to lap that gt3 machine so yeah major major issues going on everywhere but you speak about consistency justin you speak about being predictable that is exactly what we did not see the last time out that we were right here when the lmp car lunged on the inside and man the low group racing team now they find themselves in p number 14 in class and overall so that's a big big loss for them as they made that mistake and spun around at La Source. La Source, that is not La Source. <laughs> I'm going to get my pronunciations right someday, hopefully. But let's take a look at this battle then. It's the Bentley Gods, not the Bentley, it's the Bentley Gods chasing the Prism Sim Racing Alpha. And it's a battle of a Porsche and a Corvette. Now, this is where two different driving philosophies come into perspective. And now, this should be a fun one, shouldn't it? I think so. Already, some of these groupings have broken up, yes, but this is one of the closer groupings in the class. You also have Austrian sim racers within reach by about a second or so. This is all well. Rasmus Busk, well, he's on a leisurely stroll. For those who watch some of the Nordic-based sim racing organization competition 2019 and 2020, he was one of the best drivers on that side of the sim. He was one of the best endurance racers on that side of the sim. And we were talking about this recently switched over to HM Engineering, which was one of the biggest up and coming organizations in all of 2020, especially with their performances in the prototypes. Now they're looking to expand upon the performance. This is a team he raced against, mind you, in some cases in some of those series this year. And guess what? Now brings that talent over there, brings that expertise, brings them to the next level, potentially to put them in a great spot to contend for some major wins in 2021.
It's something that we've seen happen so much in the world of sports where teams and competitors can beat against each other and initially when they see the team growing they often merge forces, they often come together to form something even bigger and the same can be said for Rasmus Busk and HM Engineering as they are putting in a commanding job at the very top but now then Drama in the LMP2s never seems to stop and so it's the number 41 car that's closing up, that's the Bullard Racing 2 machine attacking the Mortal Racing Esports LMP2 car. So that the Mortal Racing Esports car are lubricated well enough and the Bullard Racing team have spun at La Source. It's the second prototype that's facing the wrong way right here and all of a sudden things are getting horribly wrong now Justin. Yeah and you'll see Phoenix Racing was one of the cars involved in this, and this is the oh. previous corner. They had another situation there, too, with the contact. Then at the other end of the straightaway, you have this, where they leave the bottom open, they try and take advantage of the car below them, and boom, the 41 gets spun around for their efforts. And that's one of the risks, right, when you take the wider arc, that someone may try and take advantage and then force you to take the wider line and force you to slow up time they didn't expect them to go up the inside expect the unexpected in 24 hour races and when something quite like that happens well you see a spin just of the same sort as the Bentley Gods racing team is closing up to Prism Sin Racing Alpha the number 222 Phoenix Racing Esports orange machine of Jan Hocek was also making a trip to the pit lane they're now back out in GT3 category they're two laps down already when the rest of the GT3 cars are only one lap down, so it's clearly something's going wrong for them. But the same can't be said for the Bentley Gods Racing Team, who are quite eager and quite keen to get that position from Prism Sin Racing Alpha. Now then, this should be fun. This should be fun. Prism Sin Racing run wide on the exit of La Source. They're going side by side. Oh yes, warm yourself up. Who's going to get the edge? It's the Bentley Gods Racing Team. After a long, long time of trying, the Corvette moves up the order. But the Porsche is going to fight back just and the draft will be being, he will be used right here. Might take him a little bit of a while to get back sorted. The main thing that set this up though, just took the corner exit too wide out of the source. And it's something you can do with the time of the gas and how much you can shove up. But now, they get to try and save a little bit. This was a battle that was forming up for a good few laps. And already the Bentley Gods machine looking quicker down some of the straights compared to the Porsche. But that Porsche is just able to send it a little bit more deeper as we talked about into the corners to really gain back some of the time. Yep, seemed like a bit of divine intervention for the Bentley Gods team. As the, as the Porsche made a mistake in La Source that just allowed them to get the position in. And look at this! Some exciting prototype racing. Who doesn't love that? It's a Durand Motorsport Club EV with Nick Saluski in the number 77 car. It's not been the best of seasons if, for the number 77 car in a different form of motorsport, if you know what I mean. But for now, the Durand Motorsport team are doing a decent enough job protecting their position in P number 8 from the Progressive Sim Racing Alpha. Meanwhile, just a quick update on the cars that had a bit of a iffy start in the LMP2 category. The Bullout Racing team that spun around in the last lap now find themselves in P number 14 in category. So they are now trying to close up to the Phoenix Racing Esports yellow car as we head towards Puhon. And then the Low Group Racing team of Luca Becker who is behind the wheel of that car, they are in P number 12. So clearly, well we expected a very clean start, we certainly got that early on but some drama coming across in the form of the prototypes rather soon. Yeah, that's something called the commentator's curse, right? It can <laughs> happen, but in all seriousness, I think some of the drivers just seen some opportunities and some of them were misjudged opportunities, I think, with impatience. And one of the main things you have to consider is you damage this car. Your teammates are going to have to deal with the damage whenever you're not in the car as well for the rest of the 24 hour event. Near contact there, what a move. What a move indeed. Wow, so the number 41 all of a sudden getting very racy and you spoke about damage Justin, they just seem to be flying past without any, so this is some some revelation for the 41 car, are we seeing the start of a comeback? I think they're trying it at the very least, they have at least some decent pace compared to the cars back here who 
just seem to be struggling down off the corners compared to the pace. Just maybe driver preference and comfortability just might not be there for the start of this one. And in turn, it's still going to be a long, long drive. Seven seconds to the next positions up the track. And Justin, you mentioned about carrying the damage, about being very conservative. So what was that all about? Can you just tell us more about that? What I mean by that is like just trying to be careful on your marks, may not have the confidence to set it on in. But because one of the main things I've heard from some drivers is you need to have confidence as a competitor to be able to know and feel like you can make a move or a line or a breaking point or a throttle point stick. You don't have that confidence, you're going to be off the pace. Personally, I'm someone who races more so on the oval side. But a good example is when I feel like there's no shot or I'm kind of over relaxed or not confident in my marks, I can be upwards of two seconds of lap off the pace, depending on the track. No joke. That's how much that confidence comes into play. If you feel like you have the preparation, you feel motivated, you feel confident about how your car will run and how you will run, you can take yourself pretty far. Now, overconfidence is an error story, though. Because you put overconfidence in, that leads to some mistakes. Bit of a confident move there, but backing it down. Smart move by the 23 to go for the switch back here. Great insights right there by Justin about how much confidence can impact you. Do the Prism Swim Racing Beta team have the confidence to make that move? And seemingly they do not, at least for now. Of course, it would be smarter to use the draft on the exit of Eau Rouge and perhaps get something done at Le Com, I beg your pardon. That would be a rather good place to make your moves. And speaking of confidence, Justin, there's often one thing that a lot of people say about knowing where your nose is. We'll get back to that in a second as the 23 is attacking right now. Going side by side to the outside line, the crowd are on their feet and they should be cutting across. And that was a bit naughty, but certainly getting the position in towards the end. I think they're just trying to make sure they get the defensive line so there isn't a lunge back. It's not a popular move, maybe, but it's also a move where I think they just wanted to be careful here with the pace. The main thing's going to be, are they going to be quick enough to break away? The thing that I think could be telling is you see how much that 11 is struggling in Sector 2. You struggle in this part of the racetrack, especially, say, if you're Finn Marks here. You're going to not be in within drafting range or be close enough to take advantage. Guess what? The Prism Sim Racing Beta Machine, they're much quicker in the corners, and that's what's helping them. Yep, Spa, a circuit dominated by corners. It may have the long Kemmel Street, it may have a bit of a decent run towards La Source in the early running, in the early part of the circuit, but nevertheless, you have to encounter all these beautiful corners in the middle sector, and if you've got the advantage there, quite possibly, you're going to have a brilliant run heading towards a deep overtaking slot. Now, coming back to the point of knowing where your nose is, Justin, and I've heard this from quite a few drivers, at least friends of mine who do quite a bit of road course racing, is that sometimes on a simulator, and even in real world racing, it can be hard to know exactly where the nose of your car is. And that just comes back to the whole incident of being how confident you are with the machine. And I think the incident that we saw right there with the Bullout Racing team early on, as they spun it on at the very first corner, was just a case of the car behind not knowing where the nose was and they just went for a move that seemed fine but eventually wasn't and you're hitting a little bit on a decent mark there where race awareness as well as race management are crucial whether it's oval whether it's dirt whether it's pavement whether it's road course racing whether it's a go-kart race whether it's a lawnmower race being able to manage your race to be able to hit your strategy and also have it to where you know the limitations of say moves like this they're gonna be in a happy spot oh that's not the limits of the trap though yep the world's fastest lawnmower in action we saw the progressive sim the, the angry bull racing team in fact the number 10 machine losing out of position and all of a sudden they said, hey, you know what? The grass at the bar is pretty nice. Let me have a taste of all that. So we take a look at what's gone in. In fact, they didn't lose a position. Behind the trees, they actually ended up gaining one, went to the inside line, and just, I guess, in the excitement of the heat of the moment, ended up missing their breaking point and 
good on them. They didn't get on the grass too much to just use the escape road and were able to rejoin with nothing mentioned, nothing gained, I guess. Did lose some time, however. I think the main thing is, though, not so much the breaking mark, but just snap of oversteer, kick them to the left, as you've seen there in the middle of that replay. And kick of oversteer is coming into play a little bit here nearly. They're starting to lose a bit of grip, in fact, after some of the sliding. And here's one of the things to think about. Right now, we're at about 12.30 in sim time. The track temp is starting to get higher and higher as the cars are turning laps. The main thing about that, though, at the same time is many of these teams know that much of the race likely will be in cold conditions, as in potentially as low as, say, 65 or lower degrees Fahrenheit track temperature. You set your car up for the cooler temperatures that you're likely going to be racing in, especially for the nighttime. Some yeah. of these teams may struggle at this part of the race, but then thrive at the night. Exactly. Just one of the nuances of endurance racing. When you are racing against the clock and not just the drivers on the track. Those 23 minutes and 30... Uh, 23 hours and 30 minutes, I beg your pardon, still left for this race to end. And so there's a long time still left to go. Look at this one. Oh my goodness me. Big drama out of Rouge, which we shall come back to later on because there's a bit of battling going on in the prototype category. The 40 and the 21 battling against each other for P number 6. That's the Mule Motorsport team moving across and getting the position at Lake Com at the top of the hill against the Mortal Racing Esports team. But what I'm curious of is what happened at Eau Rouge. Because we saw one of the prototypes get past one of the Porsche cars, the lapped Porsches, okay, and they just, they just get pushed off. That's the number 10 machine, the Angry Bull car, and they lose so much of time that they're just a sitting duck for the car behind, which is the Bullard Racing team, isn't it? No, that's not the Bullard Racing team. That's no grip racing team. Yeah, you can just cruise past and get the position. Terrible timing to reach some of the traffic. Terrible timing. They are lapping some of the GTs of you, and as you can tell. And guess what? You reach that slower traffic there, you're not going to be a good spot. That's not a <sighs> spot where you let people go. That's the thing. <laughs> and I think they were nervous about that in the first place. At least the GT thought about it and tried to move to the right, but there's no way that was going to stick. There's no way. There's no way. Absolutely. It's a tight entry towards Eau Rouge. Again, you've got to be more certain with what you do. You can't just go for those 50-50 decisions. Should I? Should I not? May I? May I not? And those kind of things actually lead up to major mistakes. And speaking of making strong decisions, seems like the motor racing car has yet again passed the Mule Motorsport Sim Racing Pro machine as we see this battle continue in the background. Tell you what, Justin, as we see the 23 and the 11 fight, that's the Progressive Sim Racing Alpha and the Prism Sim Racing Beta team scrap it off against each other. These prototypes are just putting up quite the show early on and while it's fun to watch, eventually they are making a whole lot of mistakes. It makes me nervous as a driver, right? <laughs> because, especially even some of the slower classes, they make a mistake in the LMP machines especially, you're likely going to be demolished. Already hearing at least one team may be out of this contention for this. So we'll have to see how things play out. Now, we've already seen those incidents before. We've already seen drivers significantly damaged with the bad moves. Now, it's about trying to work smart. If you're a team manager, you're reminding your drivers, think big picture, be careful. These are drivers that are racing their own race that you're trying to lap around still. Absolutely, I mean... In a way, John's racing is much like investing in a long-term stock, right? It's not like the day-to-day -day trading. You can't keep on monitoring all the time. And yes, there will be days when certain traders who work alongside with you are getting better gains, better returns. But you've got to be focused on your program, on your stock, on how it's growing. And the rewards will be reaped eventually. Not now, but at the end of the 24 hours. That is when you get everything into perspective. Meanwhile... We see this with the 23 car. Look at this, Justin. That's what you spotted early on. They just went on the grass at Blanchimont to lap one of the cars. And we saw this in the WEC race, the six hours of Spa, a couple of months ago. And the results were not very pretty. Thankfully for them, they just keep it on track. How in the world did they get involved in trouble there? Exactly. I mean, most times, you're drifting to the right, door checking that GTE, and you are both demolished. How they stuck it, I don't know. That is not a smart move, though, whatsoever. They've been fairly aggressive. I give them that much. 
But they're starting to lap the overall GT race class leader here, and this could be used as a pick here for some of these cars. Okie dokie then, prototype racing once again, 41 says I want to make a move, number 10 says no I won't let you make the move, as we come across to La Source, yet again the advantage is to the chasing car in a situation like this, because you can use the draft on the exit of Eau Rouge, of course they're not going to be ambitious enough to get something done at Eau Rouge are they, yes they're not, thankfully because if they went side by side, they'll probably end up with somebody having some broken bones and broken carbon fibre as well. Here comes the number 41 machine. This is, of course, the Bell, the Bull Out Racing machine looking to the inside line. And for the first time, at least today, I see a car making move on the inside line stick at Lecom here. So it's an interesting corner with both lines working right there and a big snap moment of oversteer for the angry bull racing at the back too. So clearly the intensity level is pumping up right now, Justin. Indeed here. Now keep in mind, you may notice on the front noses of these LMP2s as well, with the Dolora P217, you have the ability to add these little flaps along that front end. Just about every single team has just used one dive plane, which the amount of dive points you add increases your downforce, it shifts the balance to the front of the car, and increases your drag essentially. One team, just one, put on two. Guess what? That's one of the slowest cars on the track, the 68 of Phoenix Racing Esport Yellow. They are the only team who did that, and they are paying the price. They, that's why they're struggling so much down the straights, as we've seen earlier. And that may be a costume mistake for this group. And remember, they have to keep this mistake with them for the next 24 hours. So it's not like they can change much on the go as well. Meanwhile, this battle continues, and the number 10 outbreaks himself. In an attempt to get back the position for the Bullard Racing League. Hold on a minute. Here comes the pit window, just like that, I believe. They're taking an early pit stop. This is a little yeah. earlier than we thought, maybe by five minutes. Yeah, that, that's a bit of an early one by the Bullard Racing team. I genuinely had a bit of a shocking moment. I blinked my eyes a couple of times. Oh, what just happened? Weren't they supposed to go a bit longer than that? I have to see how the strategy now works out for them. I'm curious about this decision. They only ran about 16 laps. They're talking about the timing could go up to as high as 45 to 50 minutes. Some maybe, maybe it'll stretch it a little bit further. Ah. But maybe just trying to go undercut, try and get some space, try and gain some time that way. And perhaps the pull-off racing team also remember they've got damage too. So that's going to be something to watch out for, Justin. Are they going to be held back by the iRacing doers which tell them, who tell them that you've got to stay back here, you've got to repair your damage. Until you don't do that, you can't head out. Is that going to happen right here? Let's keep an eye on it. That's the main thing, though. But I wouldn't be too, too concerned unless you're actually in the box and you see the meatball flag or see, say, two minutes of optional or something. Because the main thing is, some of it you can get repaired as you fuel up or get your tires. Some of it, though, you have to get them done separately. It depends really on class to class on how the pit procedures go for each and every class. Some are sequential. Some fuel first, then you pick the car up onto the jacks and put up the tires, etc. Those are some of the differences that you'll see as some of the battles. They're starting to pick up between different makes. Oh, yeah. Lap traffic coming into perspective. Oh no, don't do that, son. Don't you dare do something like that at Puvon. The GT3 car just got bullied away from the side by the Corvette. Had they touched, I kind of expect something rather dramatic to happen right there. But nevertheless, that is the Valkyrie e-racing green machine trying to catch one of the Porsches in the form of Prisms and Racing Alpha. Meanwhile, there is another guest in the pit lane, so all of a sudden the pit cycle is turning out to be quite early on. It's the WS Racing Esports Magenta, Nicholas Nagele in the number 64 machine, who has made his way into the pit lane. So, normally, Justin, we do expect the LMP2s to go around 50-55 minutes there or thereabout, but what's yeah. the approach behind coming early? Is that just because rising temperatures so their tyres get chewed out a bit early on? Well, as mentioned, more so around maybe 45 at the longer, around that longest range or so. But here's the thing, 64 ran on their own much of this run. So guess what? You burn more fuel when you run on your own. Mostly everybody else 
has been in a drafting pack except for really your top five. So this is the chance now, or the situation now, where you're going to have to try and save it as the run goes on in some of the lap traffic. And the thing is, some of these cars have just been able to get through it quickly. Some of them haven't really had to check up too much to pull off on the gas. So in other words, we're right up towards that window for the minutes on the mileage. And Lorenzo Bondi, one of our commentators at Race Sport TV, very promptly pointing out that the Dallara P217, a new addition to the iRacing service that quite a few drivers have tried out, can only last 34 to 38 odd minutes in terms of running on a few full stint. And those two teams were running full hard. They were, they were pressing all the time. And speaking of their stint length, it's the leader who has also made his way into the pit lane. It's a Simza Esports LMP2 machine. The number six car also in the pit. So thanks so much for that quick stat, Lorenzo. It's certainly going to help us out quite a bit as the race goes on right now. And all of a sudden, the LMP2s are rushing in the pit lane. Simza, Phoenix, T3, Ringfizer, Mortal Racing, everyone's in the pit lane. And the key part is, Justin, here that the pit lane is not the usual Formula 1 one. It's much longer than that. Yeah, this is the endurance pit lane. So you have to come out, or come in rather, with the final chicane. And with the Formula 1 one, you come out of La Source for specificness. But you have to make your way down the lawn straight and make sure you don't smack the pit wall in the source that has happened with the right side of cars before then you make your way down in the slow section here 37 miles an hour is that speed limit for comparison's sake and for some they find the little finances were and little finesse moves of being able to find time where you can at times maybe blip the pit limiter some teams do that others keep it stuck right up that few at that pit limit the whole way through 60 kilometers up to the lane tell you what uh, the one time i was commentating on the joint space here at spa one of the gt3 machines actually clobbered their way to that barrier that you were talking about right at the turning at la source inside the pit lane and they ended up being stuck right there for around 10 odd minutes so that that can really happen if you are not careful enough but as we say that all the prototype machines are heading out right now let's keep an eye out for any changes in positions if there were any undercuts or overcuts per se but nothing rather too serious right now as the Simpson esports machine is still in the lead phoenix racing still in second t3 still in third ring for zone in fourth and all the other cars are making their way out onto track so that's fuel done then. Yeah, the main thing is so for the GTEs and the GT3s, their pin stints are nearly identical around the 55 minute mark for their stints at the earliest. So those cars eventually will all be having to cycle in forward. And the main thing is we were talking about a bit during qualifying where the speeds down the straights are nearly identical. It's the corner speed that's the difference. They only had about between the slowest GTE and the fastest GT3, three seconds of difference in terms of lap time so keep that in mind when those cars have to start trying to work through one another some of them are in fact having to work through one another mind you with all this excessive traffic and some of the lmp2s are lapping them again yep they're all coming across very quickly we know that there is a distinct pace advantage but of course these cars can just lap each other and it's so impressive to see how cleanly they can often run in traffic but that said some days things can go wrong and when they go horribly wrong in traffic oh boy prepare for some drama so the progressive sim racing alpha team is closing up to low grip racing there's a gap of around a second between both of them as they have cycled out of the pit lane no major winners or losers per se as we come out of this first stint for the p2 cars and i'm feeling that they'll, they'll be getting on the aggressive right now as the gt3 car gets lapped very clean and now look at this aggressive sim racing using the traffic to their advantage coming up to Bloshimo they'll have to lift it's not a place where you can pass another car unless of course you're out of your mind which they are not thankfully the chicane is where they are going to make a move is it not quite just him and it's just going to be that classic run down at Lecomte now this is where the long game comes into play we're discussing with it being up to 38 minutes, as mentioned, we've seen for the runs, 18 laps the longest stint, 16 laps the earliest for these cars. If you were one of the earlier stinters, 
you're likely just going to fall on behind and try and save that one lap of gas by going 90% throttle maybe at the end of the straight or break a little bit early by 30 or 40 feet or so to be able to save up. Or if you want to try and gain track position, if you feel like you're comfortable on your fuel marks, you try and get the run for right here and then use lap traffic like right here as the pick. Wow, that was a good move right there. Using the lap traffic to their advantage as you have to do in an endurance race quite like this one. And Finn Marx just doing a very, very good job using the GT3 car. And that's what you have to do in a case like this, haven't you? Exactly. Tough part is now they're reaching some of these lap cars in the worst possible places. We're talking about in the middle of the corner where you're forced to check apart and that loses any time to the rest of the class. Now, as you'll see here, going through Puan, for example, though, if you have clean space here, you're fine. You're stuck behind somebody you're hoping that they move up to the side of the racetrack. Not likely, though, with the grip of this corner. Also, one of the places you don't want to reach them, here and towards Davalon and Campus. This section as well can absolutely kill your run and momentum for Blanchimon even. I think that was also the major factor from there. They're going to have the same issue again in Blanchimon that's going to force a checkup possibly here. And the Corvette will duly give the position away to both the prototype cars. Not being a bit of a nuisance, you can see them running on the outside line. Yes, it will chew the Corvette's tires out just a little bit more. Because then you're not going to the optimal line. But nevertheless, that's what they've got to do as the slower car in this case. And now, Justin, very quickly, let's have a brief chat about the psychology of a GTE driver. Because now, as you see, one of the prototypes make their way into the pit lane. That, oh. Oh yeah, so it's a low grip racing team. Have, are they in for a scheduled stop? That's the bizarre question. This is only yeah. two laps on the stint. Something exactly. has gone horribly wrong for low grip racing team and Luca Becker. Something must have gone wrong with the fuel. And it's not a scheduled stop because exactly as Justin mentioned, they were just in the pit lane right here a couple of minutes ago. So what's gone wrong for Luca Becker? That is going to be the critical question that we have in mind. And it must just feel so excruciating for him. It's long, long pit lane. And that extra pit stop ends up losing you so much of time. Oh, Luca, what's gone wrong, buddy? Here's what's happening here and how long they sit in the box. It's going to be a telling sign if something happened with the fuel or if they got, say, under tray damage. Because if it's under tray damage, that may be game over for their contention here. No, they're just going to serve a drive-thru. This is a drive-thru. Interesting. So that is a drive-thru penalty for the low grip racing team. And if my memory serves me correctly, that just might be because of the incident that they had with the bull out racing team. Remember, they touched them at the back. And that's why they spun out early on. Oh, goodness me. Tell you what, though, folks, we will come back to you very, very shortly with full confirmation on the same. But indeed, a drive-through penalty for them. And now the Mueller Motorsport Sim Racing team are chasing the Mortal Racing Esports car. This is for position, remember, P number six. Coming across, being nice and easy. Very patient at this stage of the race because we're only 45 minutes in through. And now there's drama going on everywhere. I mean, welcome to Circuit of Spa Franco Shop, I guess, but things calm down a little bit as this run happens. Now the matter of fact is going to be how this these drivers get into the rhythm. Because I think as competitors, you just start trying to focus on the task at hand. Focus on completing your stints. Focus on your marks. As well, if you get a good run such as right here with the draft, take advantage of it. Hope you don't get stuck behind as you tee. They're going side by side, getting ever so close to each other. Classic endurance racing. You've got to intimidate your competitors. You've got to make them feel the pressure. And the number 21 machine gets the position in for themselves. That is the Mueller Motorsport Sim Racing Pro, Alexander Dehako, taking in the sixth position for himself. And Justin, I, I guess you have something with the penalties then. The they're in again, aren't they? The low grip racing team. Something's wrong with the low grip racing team. Something has to be going on with that car for them to come in and pit again. 
It can't be something as simple as the fuel now. Something has to be damaged or something. Or something's going on for this to have to come down several times. And as far as I can see, there isn't any announcement as well on the series Discord about any penalty for them. So what's going on here? I wish we could tell you more about that, but we are just learning everything as it comes. So the low grip racing team not only losing grip, but also losing their stronghold on this race. Protracted drama everywhere. And now, while they serve the drive to penalty, Justin, this is where the fun begins. Because the mortal racing team say, hey, while all the drama may be going on in the pit lane, we're here to bring you some entertainment on the track. And so, they swoop in, get the position, in and out, jump down. Local racing team just served another drive through by the way. Something, something weird's going on with that car. But they have to come down twice or something with that team. But in regards to that fight, the frustrating part of it is, yes, you got the speed to make the move, but at the same time, at what cost? You're lo they lost a second, just about, to the next car up the road. They are three seconds behind P5, and all this shuffling, going back and forth, especially if they time it up wrong, can lose them more and more time. This is going to potentially hurt them a little bit again, going through Lake Home. The 21 swoops back up. It's a battle that's been going on time and time again. They're trading places like boxers would trade punches in a rather good match. And the thing is, there's still 23 hours and 12 minutes to land that sucker punch. So what they're doing right now, it's just, just a fun activity, just a fun exercise to trade positions and have a bit of drama and keep themselves entertained as we go on for a very, very long stint in this endurance race. And Tell you what, Justin, uh, from the looks of things, even in terms of the penalties, I doubt they yeah. must have got something yeah. in terms of... Yes, I think they did. I think they did. Just got confirmation just now. It was two drive through penalties had to be served within three laps of one another for the same car. For two separate collisions with the 222 and the 68. That's why we've seen them come down twice, and that has just killed Low Grip Racing Team's race. With little attrition so far today, that takes them out of the chances for a good run. The other penalties today, drive through for the 670s, for some of the air cars, believe, in the 677 may have been with a drive through. Also, there's a drive through listed up for the 11 car. Progressive Sim Racing also has a possible penalty after contact with the 41 to keep an eye on. Ah, oh, dearie me, this is just so. just the last thing you could want. In such a stage of your race, this is where you build things up. This is where you start building the entire race, start to build your foundation blocks and hope for a good one towards the end. Crikey, it's going to be wrong. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on this here. Again, it was 41 and 11 that had this situation. This is P9, mind you, and remember, Bull Out Racing is still in 12 spot from that. And they've entered a grouping of cars that features Angry Bull Racing, Rears Nowhere Sport in the 77, as well as themselves. So they're getting some time back, but the amount of time lost is still killer from them. Remember as well, they pit the earliest out of anybody by a lap. But remember folks, it's still a long race. It may not be like the real world, you may not have rain like here, but I remember distinctly at least in the 27, 2017, 24 hours in Le Mans, the way Porsche fought back and got the positions in, even after spending, what, 50, 60 odd minutes in the garage fixing their car. Just shows you that in endurance racing, even if you're back down, even if you're put against the wall, you can still fight back, but you've got to feel for them. It just looks ever so bleak right now, doesn't it? Just a little bit here. And for some of these competitors, it's just about racing your own bubble. Prism Sim Racing Alpha, good example of that. Open space. Just need to focus on the task at hand. Not making a mistake, because if you make a mistake or have a spin, you're losing spots to those cars five seconds behind. It's, again, big picture as a group of drivers where you want to get yourself to the fuel marks at this point. Oh, 
Well then, 23 hours, 9 minutes and 11 seconds on the clock. Just as we spoke about drivers working together in a group, trying to make sure that they meet their fuel numbers and keep things clean. There's a battle raging on in the LMP2 category. And I'm going to say this as always, because they've been fighting out since the very beginning of this race. The number 77, which is the Dur Durena Motorsport Club EV car, Nick Sabiuski, behind the wheel of that machine. Closing up at the back. And the progressive sim racing alpha machine of Finn Marks has made his way in the pit lane from P number 9. That's for that drive through we just referred to a moment ago. So exactly. now this is a fight for P9 instead. But again, you have collision. You have to be penalized. This is a risky move, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Get on the edge of your seat. Side by side, the Rouge ends up with one driver backing out smartly. The 77 has the edge. That's only for now, Justin. Good run, though, for Bull Racing. They've got the double toe, and that it's going to help them as well as the confidence. And the 77 somehow still keeps it. Smart move to back it off, though. They didn't have it completely square to be able to get that move to completely stick. I do, don't think. I think they said, you know what, let's regroup. Take it out of Blanchemont instead of risking contact. And that, I'll have to admit, is a very smart thing to do. And it may sound like the dullest thing in the world, a commentator coming up and saying, guys, there's a lot of time left in the clock. But no, genuinely, it does not make sense at this stage of the race. You can take it easy, just chill, sip your soda right now, relax, have a, have a bit of crisps if you can. I mean, not while driving, nevertheless, but still, just have a good time, enjoy a little bit. And then make your moves later on. But I don't think that memo has reached the Bullard Racing team from the looks of things because they're still going aggressive. And watch out, folks! Not when the lap traffic is involved. Goodness me, it could have gone horribly wrong for Durena Motorsport while lapping that Porsche. And if they meet the driver of that 137 Porsche, who is Julian Kesselhold, I'm pretty sure that Nick Silewski will have a few aggressive words to say. Pass Blanchimont. Here we come then. I doubt that Bullard are going to make a move. You know what? I have to eat my words right now because they have gone for the lunch and they have made the position for themselves. The surprising part is Angry Bull said, you know what? I'm going to try and make the move too because of the compromised line. But I don't think they have the momentum to do it. They may get it here once again down the Kemmel straight. There's still plenty of time to go though. We're only about 55 minutes in coming up in just a few moments. You have a lot of time for these types of scraps. But with the fuel mileage being so quick and how small the fuel tanks are and how quick you burn the gas, in turn, I think that just pushed some of the aggression that much higher up if you're close to someone. The difficult part is, once you break away, trying to close up to somebody. For example, these cars now are about more than 15 seconds behind the next car up the track. Yikes. Yikes. But it's quite clear, isn't it? Whenever you fight against each other, you do end up putting up quite a show. You do end up entertaining all the people watching, and thank goodness for that one. But the amount of time that you lose, ooh, dearie me, that's going to be something for them to watch out for. Meanwhile, as, as everything happens back in the midfield, let's shift our focus to the leader of the prototype category and then he has pulled up quite a gap for himself, hasn't he? It's the Simza Esports LMP2. Gustas Vinbergas in this car. Simza Esports, of course, a team from Abu Dhabi. Lots of racing growing in the Middle East these days. So, certainly full of enthusiasm. And they are channeling that enthusiasm into a very, very good position right now in the Dallara LMP2 machine. And the gap behind Justin. 13 seconds to the Phoenix Racing Esports screen machine. Do you think it can close up sometime soon? Well, here's the thing. If they have a bit of luck come in, maybe. But the thing, Sims has just been the fastest car on the track. And once they got the draft broken up with the traffic, they just took off. That three seconds lost when they hit the first wave of GT3s just completely hurt the 66's chances. You can strategize your way in, though, I think. That's the main thing. There are two seconds a lap off the pace on average, though. That's the tough part for them. They've lost time with the traffic. 
They're going to need some luck to bring it back. And you never know how it plays out with luck in Jones Racing. It's a big, big word in the way things play out. No, it's not going to rain here. We don't have rain on the iRacing service. Don't you worry about that one. But nevertheless, things can change. And I kind of get a feeling that traffic will be the major defining factor in all of that as we see them head past a couple of GT cars. One of them a GT3 machine and a GTE car as well with the Porsche. And actually, Let's chat a little bit about GTEs, Justin, while we have a bit of time to reach the R mark. That's usually when the pit windows open for all these guys. Uh, what's it like for them? Because now the GTE machines, just like we have in the IMSA races as well, yeah, they're sort of the middleman. Middlemen, sorry. And now we see what? the GT3s come in the pit lane. Speaking of, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is usually around that time we start seeing them come on in. Some teams I've seen stretch to as long as a minute and 10 seconds, and it's crucial for some of those groups to do that because in the past, for 24 hours, there have been teams who have been close, if not completely cut off for pit stops. The main thing is, though, about what car you have, about the fuel consumption, about having those calculations in. If you are, as a group, get all those in, and have them chart it on down and then get yourself to your preferable mark to win a race, you're likely going to be able to stick it in. Speaking of drivers not sticking the grooves. Yep, it's the Mortal Racing Team in LMP2 at the center of problems yet again. So, coming across on the home stretch with the Formula 1 cars, nice and easy for the car number 40 who was in P number 8 and then what happens right here goes in a bit too hot just so easy hey. to do right with that dip where you just lose grip coming out of the corner it can happen a few to the best of people even that time it hurts them and I don't cue to ease coming into pit is it a bit of a worrying thing for them that they've not been able to meet the R mark because usually when we saw in the big uh, I racing special events at Spa most of the teams were just keeping it to the R mark at around, say, an hour, perhaps sometimes even with 59 minutes or 58 minutes on the clock. Is this going to be just a little bit too worrying for the teams that haven't been able to meet, meet that logic that day? Yeah, you are right. Some of the teams stretched it to 27 in, in the McLaren. They were able to stretch it about an extra lap. Yeah. Or, or that was a talking point back in the day. Thank goodness there's no McLaren here. But in all seriousness, I don't, not quite sure it's a worry because everybody has come in at 26. In other words, you add up that time, you're likely having a top off towards the end of the race if it keeps up with the pace. And that's one of the things, no one's been able to save gas in this class. They've spread themselves apart that much where everyone's not been able to have that lift and coast method to save. Unless your name is online simracing.de and Stanislav Lennart is behind that car and he's still hasn't made a pit stop in that Ferrari so head over to racepot.tv slash endurance for lifetime and keep a very keen eye on what the online sim racing DE car does because they've been able to extend their strategy in the GTE class by one more lap and now they're on cycle on for the GTEs and the GT3s. That was so, that's only one year cup of Ferraris correct me if I'm wrong right it was talked about they could get to 27 back in the spring and back in the summertime. I think that's where that's coming in now for that. And we're seeing for everyone else, they can only make it the 26 in clean space. So I don't know if that's going to help for our, the Ferrari in the end because the pace hasn't been quite there today, but they might be able to try and pull something. Maybe yeah. if they pick it up during the nighttime. Exactly. They've just got a bit of an ace up their sleeves. This is not what other teams have. The Ferrari being the only one having that advantage, and even the GTE category, GT3, I beg your pardon, it's the Ring Facility Sim Racing GT3 Pro team that hasn't made a pit stop, whereas the leader, the Familiar Bomber team, they were able to do so. So clearly, a bit of tinkering going on in each category. Some people rolling the dice and seeing what they can make of all this thing. So now other cars to also come in the pit lane right now. German performance sim racing team, the Audi, are in. They've dropped down a couple of positions. Absolute Motorsport are in the pit lane as right now as well. AMC Birkenfield.ev, Wolf Motorsport, 
everyone's coming in for their first stop. And in the GT3s, there's only a handful of cars that haven't made something. And now look at this. By not making the pit stop, the 11.9 Simsport team, the, the second Ferrari Justin, the other one hasn't made a pit stop. They're just able to fight for track position with Race Union. And the Race Union team will be furious because they have made the pit stop. They have got the fresher rubber. And they're just losing time sitting behind a car that's not supposed to be fighting them. Yeah, that's going to hurt them a little bit and cause a little bit of temper since that puts them a bit out of touch now to Austrian sim racers by two seconds or more. They were closing in before that. So, that as a driver and as a crew member, especially for Rochelon, you have to keep remind them big picture. They're coming in this lap. Don't panic if you lose too, too much time. Just like that, coming in. And don't be surprised as well with some of the pit stop times with the tire wear and the track being so cool that you'll see some of the teams elect to try and double stint. Guess what? Just about all of them have done exactly that, and that shouldn't be a shock to you, Samil, with the tire wear being so little with the cooler track. If you get up to, say, the 80s in Fahrenheit temps, though, that's where you don't see that being feasible. With these conditions today, don't be surprised to see it several times for the GT3s and GTs, possibly. Indeed, it's a brilliant piece of insight right there by Justin Prince pointing out that double stints are, are still possible. And I remember when we had the 24 hours of spa early on in this year, it, it was in the summertime, right? That's when it was probably a bit tricky to do things like that. So only a couple of teams who were actually able to stretch things out were able to do that. Meanwhile, the Ringfizzard Esports team, the sim racing team, I beg your pardon, has made their way into the pit lanes. Keep an eye on where they cycle out. And now, of course, that's one of the gems of iRacing, isn't it? That it's all very closely matched to real-world motorsports. So it records the present temperatures at Spa right now and it adjusts according to season. So while we're just entering winter right now, the air and track temperatures will be cooler. That's why they are able to double stint with a lot more ease. So in comes the Ferrari then. So what do you expect, Justin, with them? Do you think they'll, they may have gained a major edge or do you just think that, yeah, they'll, they'll be where they were, not, not gaining a major advantage? I think they might be where they were, of course, for the cycle. It's just a matter of once everything equalizes out by the end of the race. It's way early, yes, to project. It, they can have trouble. They can have a driver who burns an extra lap of fuel, puts them right behind where they were expecting to be towards the end of the race. There's so many miscalculations that can happen or bad luck moments that can happen as a driver or as a team. Right now, you have to keep in mind, they gained at least 13, 14 seconds. They're probably going to cycle still at the end of the top 10, give or take, in the class. At the very minimum. So, at the very least, we know if they get to where they can put in less fuel towards the end, they may be able to get, say, towards the middle of the field. Maybe around top 5 at the minimum. Yeah. yeah exactly. At least they have the advantage of being able to roll the dice in such a case. To tell you what, the same can be said for motor racing esports. Even after an accident, they've carved their way past all the traffic to make an outrageous move around the outside, which sadly for them hasn't been able to be nailed down because they were just, just a little too far off. But goodness me, they got our hopes just pretty high, didn't they, Justin? That was superb traffic driving. Very optimistic, I think is the better <laughs> phrasing for it. And those are some of the moves I've seen from some of the competitors with the traffic, with the quick flick of the wrist. To try and carve your way through a hole, try and take advantage of the hole, and hope you, the hole doesn't crunch you. That time, the hole didn't quite work out for the move, but they are in a spot where they can just ride behind, draft, maybe work on the, the pass in about a lap or two if they choose. The main thing is, they lost time. Yeah. Some of these cars to bullet racing in the pit cycle. Bull pulled three seconds for the cars they passed before. These cars are only nine seconds of the road after they were up to about 15 seconds up the road before the cycle. And, and the model racing car, remember, of course, they also had that incident before the pit lane cycle. And that's where they also lost a lot of time. So they're just here trying to gain back what they lost in that accident that they had early on. Heading to the outside line then. Trying to make something happen for themselves at the chicane, which hasn't quite been an action zone of sorts in terms of overtaking moves right here today. Nevertheless, there is a chance there can be something happening later on. There's still a lot of time for this race to end. 
the till then we head across at Le Source closing in is the number 40 car see right here is where you know if you're you've got a good run you're either going to be able to have a shot at the end of the straightaway or if you're the driver in front you're going to have to be very aggressive and try and outbreak that time smart move just let him go then you don't get the pull you can try and draft on back the next straightaway yep there's still a bit of time left for them to do something here in this case remember of course that the LMP2s can also be coming into the pit lane sometime rather soon because they can only last 33 or 34 minutes in a full tank. As pointed out by quite a few people on the YouTube chat, and thank you so much for that, they've got a very small fuel tank. And that's something that I was, uh, I'm afraid, not very aware of because I wasn't getting the chance to drive this car early on. And so, with that in mind, we should be seeing the LMP2s also make their way into the pit lane sometime very, very soon. So that's where the disputes and the squabbles can be sorted out as we approach the mid part of the race but yep. as we have seen everyone make their first pit stop i think it's a good time to go for a race roundup isn't it just to take a look at where everyone is just let you know about how the race has been so far with one hour on the clock so then lmb2 simser esports lmb2 have been leading at the very top pulling out the stops everywhere and putting out a 14 second gap against phoenix racing esports green they are in second p3 esports are third ws racing esports magenta in fourth and all the other cars fighting on and remember uh, mule motorsports sim racing pro and b number six had a few straps mortal racing esports had an accident they were battling along with quite a few people yeah, quite a bit of drama. And of course, Simpson Esports, your leader overall, not just in LMP2, because remember, they are your fastest category right here. That's our top eight for LMP2. What's been going on in GTEs then, Justin? Well, it's so far been the Rasmus Bucks show so far. He is up in front by 11 seconds over the Austrian Sim Racers ROT so far on the racetrack. Race Union, though, has been closing in. They're under two seconds away from the second step of the podium for now. Bentley Gods in four spot. Prism Sim Racing Alpha. Then you have Valkyrie East Racing Green. Currently in sixth spot. Online Sim Racing.de in seventh. And Rig and Shirt Sim Racing currently rounding out the top eight. 41 seconds of difference so far as well for the GTEs. The GT3s as well has been a similar story up towards the front because so far... That 257 has been gone. Quickest driver in the field all day so far. 19 seconds the gap between them and your and more motorsports. Sim Racing Black. Sims Esports' GT3 car has recovered from a very rough qualifying session at times. To move up to third spot. Absolute Motorsport has recovered from crashing and qualifying. Up to fourth spot right now with Team RaceGitter.de, German Performance Sim Racing, Wolf Motorsport. And once again, for the second class in a row is the ring Richard sim racing gt e3 now rounding out your top eight on the board a minute and 22 seconds the separation only one dnf in the race so far the 222 of phoenix racing esport orange yeah phoenix racing esport orange having a bit of a torrid day early on being involved in incidents and then heading into the pit lane as the very first team been a bad day for them but it can be a good day for either of these guys too as the Prism Sim Racing beta team with Marcel Rupak still behind the wheel of that number 23 car. Remember, there are multiple drivers competing in each team. Of course, a 24 hour race, you cannot do it all by yourself. So, the rule right here for driver changes and driver swaps is that each driver, let's say they must not be doing over 25% of the race. It's, it's like a fair share kind of thing. So, what, what's that rule all about, Justin, for all our audience and all our viewers? Well, to explain it simply, the fair share is 25% for drivers in the iRacing racing service, where as the move goes on to the outside line for Prism and not able to stick it right there, oh. other competitors who are watching along such as this and their teammates are going to have to eventually jump in, where there is a calculation formula where you divide the number of laps for end of the race by your drivers by four. That total is how many laps as a competitor at minimum you will have to have run for one of your drivers. 
you uh, don't make that fair share, you're not going to be able to fin to rate finish the race officially. It has been in people in the past, Samil. Something has happened to the GT3 machine that we saw right there. Uh, that GT3 was incredibly battered and bruised at the very top. Now that just that may just be my eyes deceiving me. Could be potentially. Yeah, you're not wrong. Could you're not wrong. I think that's the 289 that's been damaged for a little while. I something is going wrong with that car to say the least no hood front bumpers crushed in bit of back end damage obviously someone's gotten into that car about a few minutes or so ago they've been struggling i've noticed on pace for a few laps or so they were around the bottom of the pylon now they're basically last on in the class and already about a lap or so behind the rest of their respective classmates so what's going on for this gt3 machine the number 289 noah deets the car, as you mentioned, Justin, badly bruised. They've got no hood. The fender is essentially damaged. The rear wing seems to be fine, but it's just a sorry-looking machine, isn't it? For Rainfus at Sim Racing, and just to take our mind away from what has happened with this car initially, there are LMP2 spitting right now. So WS Racing Esports Magenta coming in the pit lane. The Bullard Racing 2 car also in the pits. So the window has officially begun right here. And Dean, just like that, 16 to 18 laps the stint distance, we talked about it. It's coming back to fruition. Once again, speak it back to existence. Now, it's a matter of how long the drivers keep going. Some of these drivers may go on for a while, others will do that. They'll swap drivers just like that. Lucas Lane, for example, now in the 64. Clearly teams are opting to get new drivers in chopping and changing constantly getting new people in now th there is a there is a school of thought that says you can't put your drivers in for a very very long period and let them be in there and they can consistently develop and consistently get a hang of the car and start advancing but there's other school of thought that says keep on chopping and changing let new drivers in keep them fresh see what goes on for each of these teams and justin i is uh, I, I guess you have some news for the GT3 machine, the 289, that had the incident. Yes, after the camera pits delaying, that was about six laps or so ago, and from now, of course, but you'll see it right here. Snap him over, steer coming out of launch him up way too quick, smashes hard oh. into the concrete wall, and guess what? Noah, his reward for that, him and his team being upset, that again is the M call. Rick Richard Sim Racing GT3 today. A rough turn of events for them, as you see. Yeah, that was a big, big smash into Blanchiment. Definitely does not work any way around. And that, that will put them on the back foot right now. Let's see where they are in category. I'm assuming they are last. That is, yeah, P number 12 in class for them in P39 overall. But meanwhile, Bit of a battle going on at GTEs. It's the Mueller Motorsports Sim Racing Blue Porsche on the outside line, fighting with a Stage One Racing Black Corvette. Matthew Malinas behind the wheel of that number 179 car, but the Audi GT3 splitting them up initially. This battle will go on for quite a while. They are fighting for P number nine in position. If there's if there's one thing that I've learned from racing, I racing myself on the simulator, it's that no battle is small because while it may just seem like yeah, it's only P number 9. They're not fighting for the lead, but the intensity of it when you're fighting for it yourself, it just feels larger than life. I mean, put this into perspective as well. There are some drivers, not going to name names, who may not be happy with those positions, say, you know what, what's the point? The thing is, for a lot of these organizations, that is a huge accomplishment to be able to get a good finish and get, say, a top 10 or a top 5, or just be shy, save even the prize pool even, for an event such as this. It's something to build upon. It's something drivers take pride in, and it's something for some of them, they do for fun, and some of them for the chance to come away with a victory. For the drivers who look to have fun, it's the matter of finishing the 24 hours as a group of friends or as a group of teammates. That is the big thing that in turn sets them all up. Because here's a lot, the thing with a lot of these groups, depending on some of the organization structures, a lot of them are set up to where you want to be friends with one another. You want to gain knowledge, yes. You want to be competitive, yes. But you also want to be able to like one another and not be fighting, say, in your respective team discord or team speak. 
you want to have that chemistry and having that ability to be able to run with an event such as this is one of those main things where some of those teams may drive with one another and some of them will just drive into the pit lane like this <laughs> quite a smooth transition that was <laughs> into speaking about what's happening in the pit lane so obviously lmp2 cars running out of fuel right now actually they will be coming in to take more fuel on i wonder what's the thing for tires because uh, they, they won't necessarily need to considering that the temperatures are well, cooler but they chew them faster don't they well to, to correct you there on that they are have been going up on jacks of note because you fuel the car oh. first then you take the tire so there isn't hmm. the true point for some of the drivers that's been talked about of not taking tires because the times you can lose the risk there is of that of course etc some of these teams are already changing drivers of no <laughs> your race leaders for simsa esports have been dominant to say the very least the driver behind the wheel mind you just competed in the four hours of monza earlier this month about a week ago finished decent there they just put in julian, julian reinhardt now in their car guess what reinhardt's got the cushion all the air drivers in their second competitors, or in some cases, maybe their goal drivers, if they feel they need to catch up on the pace, they're going to have a long way ahead to catch up to the real-world driver that put notes with the cushion for the sim racing veteran. Absolutely, and you can keep track of everything that goes on as it happens on Racepot TV slash Endurance. The link is in the chat. You can maybe have a look and track all your favorite drivers. You know, Julian Reinhardt for Simsa Esports has that cushion that Justin just mentioned. 14.150 seconds, the gap at the last interval. And Phoenix Racing Esports Green, the car you see on your screen right now, having to navigate through traffic. So they'll certainly not be helping them out at this stage. But yes, other cars are also in the pit lane. Newell the Motorsport just got out. Durand the Motorsport just got out. Mortal Sim Racing too. And quite a few of them are changing drivers. But... Not everyone from the looks of things. So this just yeah. brings me on to the whole debate, Justin. Uh, where, where do you stand in terms of this? Do you believe that teams should change drivers very quickly or should they just keep them in for a longer time? Well, the theory on that is some teams like to change it every two hours to be able to, in some cases, say if you're in a certain class, you can double stint, then change the tires, drive the time, change the driver, not minimize the time loss. But in the case of the lmp 2s that time difference is my fine noon or my noon in a lot of the cases and that's what some of these competitors have done is they feel like keeping the drivers fresh give them a chance to rest get a little snack be able to help spot the driver and then jump into the car and after a couple hours is more comfortable other teams though go for the philosophy of three hours some though i've heard in some cases stints the last of eight hours plus until the next driver can come into play and we're talking about some of the big events, too, that we've had that happen. Some of the frustration, though, for some of these drivers has to be building because this traffic, they came out at the wrong time for them. P6, for example. Guess who's already back? It's Bullout Racing. Yep, Bullout Racing. It's been a tough day for them, but that doesn't discourage them, does it? An angry bull will always get the jump in no matter what. He may have had a bad day. But the best is yet to come, and so they make the move down the inside and Mule the Motorsport lock up at the chicane right there while trying to defend their position. And that essentially just puts them back into the clutches of another car. That's a Durian yep. Motorsport Club's EV machine at the back. Here's an interesting decision. We talked about the theory of double stinting and how in the LMP2s most people don't do them. Uh -huh. Some people just tried them. They saved 20 seconds by doing that. The thing is, how will the tires fare once everyone's up to speed now for the 41 and the 77? Because I think they did that to gain a lot of the time back. Again, Bolt Racing and that 77 were as far back as a minute. About as far back as 30 minutes ago in this race. So I think it's just a time play. Hope they can gain the time back. If, they, if it works, though, don't be surprised to see our teams maybe take note. Hmm. That's a very interesting point in terms of how things can play out towards the end. Certainly having to keep an eye on, on exactly how things play out for all of them. But the gaps, yes, are opening up a little bit. But I see something rather unusual happening here because Phoenix Racing Esport Yellow, all of the speeds, the new driver in the car, is in the pit lane. And that's happened even though 
He's had his second stop, the scheduled stop that all the LMP2 categories, category cars have made. So what's going on there for Phoenix Racing? We quickly have a look at the race control document and there doesn't quite seem to be anything no. special for them. Now over speeds with a bit of a problem. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. And one of the main things is you get a speeding penalty on iRacing. Especially coming out of the lane, for example, that is a 40 second stop and hold, oh. usually. So, have to keep an eye on that on the timing pylons to see what happens. Some of these are cars, though, are within about a second or so of one they're on. Yep, things are calming down right here. As the penalties ramp up and everything just seems to be working on in the pit lane, and the battles on the track have been. Let's say a little bit calmer, so to say. The drivers are realizing that there is no need to be upset. There is no need to fight extra hard at this stage of the race. Cost still 22 hours and 38 minutes left until the race ends. And that's the one thing with the Johns Racing. You've got to be patient more than anything else. And the stress on the word endurance. You have to enjoy the tough hours. You're fighting against the clock, the tougher moments. When the grip runs out, when it gets into the dark, still a long time to go until it gets dark, but nevertheless, still a long way to go. But now, thankfully, the battles are here, and it is a BMW, isn't it? Yes, P2, yes indeed. In the class that's starting to heat up, these BMWs have been very quick today. But, Simsy Esports, they've been on the prowl for at least the few past 20 minutes or so to close back in, gain momentum, and now, they're one of the faster cars on the racetrack right now. 219s, this grouping of cars. They do have to let by traffic. That's going to hurt this battle for now. But I think for Burkhard Maureen, it's a chance for him to lift off the gas and save for a few laps, then make the move if he's got the shot, or he can keep his eyes open because they're nearly hitting each other. Oh boy, it's getting a bit risky right here between both these BMWs in this case. Riding on board with the Simsa car as a prototype machine comes past. Look at him waving past. Trying to get away from them. Coming towards Blanchima, closing up. Oh no, no Burkhardt. Not the place to make a move. Just got to keep it clean, keep it ready for the chicane that's coming up right now. I personally hit bus stop, but it certainly does make for some great racing. And it seems like at least until we get to Le Com, Burkhardt will have to see the back of that BMW Z4 GT3, which, frankly, is quite beautiful, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Very beautiful indeed so far, and again, Maureen, I think, is playing this very well. Just right behind, into the marks. Then, he can jump in the pits, have a smile. The main thing is, though, the traffic is going to be hurting them even more so on the Delta for the race fleet because they lost about up to three seconds from where that traffic reached them and where they had to let them go. This draft for now is going to really help them possibly big defensive line. Here they come then, the Simsa car going on the outside line but still unable to get that position back from the Mueller Motorsport machine. Having to concede, of course, to the LMP2s. And it's something that, as drivers in traffic, it can be it can be pretty easy because, of course, the LMP2 machines are way, way back. They, they're not fighting in the same league, of course. But sometimes it so happens that your animal instincts take over as a racing driver. And you just so have a lapse of concentration, you forget who's coming across through. And there's this natural instinct to block the line, block the position, and... We've seen it time and time again in multiple endurance racing series, be it the WEC, be it IMSA, be it the Neo Creventix series, whatever it may be. It just often happens that the faster cars and the slow ones just fight for the same piece of real estate and doesn't work out together. And we speak about that. LMP2s are back here and look at them having to concede. And the Mueller Motorsport car having to lose so much time. And this could be a place where the Simsa car gains. But again, it's the same thing, Justin. What traffic give it, you take it back. Or you go off the entire racetrack if you're the case of the BMW in front and minimize the time lost and take one of your incident points, apparently. Uh, that's a call. But in all seriousness, eventually, though, the time bounces back. 
whether it's from raw pace or whether it's because the traffic then hurts the car in front of you. Hmm. It's just how the race ebbs and flows, right? And it's just a matter of finding the way to take advantage of the mistakes. For example, there's already three cards in the backdrop you just seen there coming. There's a chance that could then help you. They're also going to have a decent amount of potential pull for the next couple laps to close back, depending on when the timing of those cards comes in. Now, Justin, usually we often speak about the faster cars, the faster categories, using the slower traffic to make positions, to make moves like themselves. I mean, we, one, one move that comes to mind is Mika Hakkinen at this very circuit in 1998, was it? Trying to go around the outside of Michael Schumacher and also of a slower car. Now that's something we've seen time and time again in endurance racing too, but can can we flip the switch? Can a slower car take advantage of a faster coming machine? And in fact, just make a move on the other one, just like Simsa Esports need right now. Well, you can, especially say if someone moves over to the side, you can follow the hole, make the pass right back if it's them giving up the preferred line as well. You could also hope they make the said mistake and you take advantage there. There's a couple ways you can do it. There might be a switch back here possibly, especially with the overall race leader having to come through. This may help the car behind to catch back up. So the Wolf Motorsport machine having to defend in the GT3 category, of course. One of the very few Audis competing in this race right now. They're behind the Ring Fizzard Sim Racing GT3 machine. So. We are seeing quite a few supporters of that very team in the chat. So hello and welcome to all of you. We hope that the race goes well for them and we hope that we're having a rather good time. Live timing, of course, on racepod.tv slash endurance. That's where you can track all your favorite teams and drivers and exactly what they're doing to get a good idea of what exactly is happening. And speaking of what's happening, Something rather fun is happening. All the drama is bubbling up at the very top because Simza Esports are on the tail of the Mule Motorsport car as we approach the bus stop chicane. Are they going to make a block pass? Are they going to honk their way past the bus stop chicane and say, Hong Kong, that's my position for P number two, or are they just going to stay back for a longer period? That's the question that we must answer. Well, Nevertheless, a long time ago. There's still a few cars in a better spot right there. Great corner exit. Here we go. Here comes the dive. Is it a successful one then? It is from the looks of things. Lunging down into La Source. The Simza car does get the position in. But now, Justin, the draft is going to be big, isn't it? Yeah, and the main thing is, too, you have a couple GTs, as mentioned, coming. You have an LMP2 coming as well. That may be the one difference where they may not be able to make a move. That might have been a smart decision. Just use a wider arc to get a bit of a ramp, so to speak, with some of the elevation change. Here comes that trap, though, and this is going to be dangerous. Rewind as we go across multi-class racing at its finest. And it is still the Simza car that holds on to the position, but only just. And as I say that, all of a sudden the things have changed because the Simza car loses the position. And the Mule Motorsport machine, the team that organized this very event, have been able to seize that position and move back up into P number two in this GT3 class. So, very smart driving here. Proper games with you. Where as things are different in the LMP2 category and the low grip machine are in the most low grip position on the entire track in the grass. Why is that so? Could Paul Frey. That's the corner in question. So they're approaching Blanchimo, Justin, and internal issues for the GT machine. Oh, no. Oh. And on top of that, that second ricochet right there, and then the third just broke the suspension. You see it with the right front tire. It's not on the ground. It's not turning well. That car likely done as a result. By the way, P2 swap spots in the middle of Sector 2 in Puhon. And now, you see that front damage? They added some left damage for good measure, and that's going to now hurt them now that the car behind possibly. They have a good driver, though, as we've seen, who is optimistic with the draft to make the moves back, and they're making contact. Oh, again at Blanchimont. For a second lap in a row, there is major, major contact at this quick left-hander. We know it's ferocious. We know it's fast. But when you go multi-class racing right here, be it GT3s or prototypes or GTEs and GT3s, 
crashes can happen and the JMS Racing Porsche are bruised, battered and destroyed. Oh boy. I, I think they tried to come a little bit across the front nose a little bit too early. Didn't expect to make a slight touch and that just made them unstable, clipped that grass and everything else. You just have no time to react with that bump. You'll see, well, it's behind the trees. Right there, that move, you see the juke? There's no way that car is going to be able to avoid it unless they stomp on the brakes and then everyone else risk climbing behind. JMS Racing, they're likely to lose a ton of time at the very minimum as a result of this, you can see, because of that little graze. And Justin, do you think that the GD3 machine should have just been a little more cautious or was that just the racer's instinct that because they're in the heat of a very big fight they just have to fight for everything and that's it's a little it's a little bit of both maybe i'm thinking because i think you have to be more cautious absolutely and try and make sure you give space for the faster car because you gonna have the shot to try and make the move after that but at the same time the faster car also has to make sure they give respect to this battle right they try to basically come up and take the racing line away at the very last moment and both cars, I think, can at least have the argument of potential fault there when you think about it if you're a race control. Yeah, there will be protests flying across all the way through very, very quickly. You will see incidents like this be reported. Nobody is going to let this go through that much easier. And now, of course, the Austrian sim racers, Rot, are fighting against this union. Both Porsches, mind you. And now speaking of another Porsche, the low grip racing team that had the previous incident at Bloshimo, they find themselves last in class P15 and 23rd overall behind quite a field of GTE cars. So when they come back, they will not be getting any blue flags. They will have to fight their way past because overall they're behind them. And right now, of course, the low grip racing team in the pit lane because of all the damage that they've accumulated. But when they come back, it's just going to be a tough fight for them to get back over all the GTE cars. And the same can be said for JMS Racing because now that they've crashed at Blanchimont, they are falling behind so many GT3 machines as they make their way in the pit lane. So the things could change for them. But nevertheless, Austrian same racers, Rotten Race Union, getting close to each other. Let's call it that way. Now let's focus more so on the battle, the task at hand, so to speak. Because yeah. Race Union, they've been on the prowl for this spot for a long, long while, in my opinion. Because they've had a good car. They've had a good unit of drivers. They're a unit of drivers known for being competitive in the German sim racing scene. I think they've got the raw pace to even pass Australian sim racers. Austrian, rather. It's just where they reach and how they reach right now this time gap is just staying equal now and I, they're right where they need to be just lay behind just keep it within draft range and you'll be in a good spot then you can save the gas you can see though they are not as good in the corners though compared to austrian sim racers and that could hurt them yeah small small things like this could compromise them so much in the long run and even though there are 22 hours left in this race you want to get that track position and this kind of thing never ever helps you out in a case like this one does it no it doesn't and this is where as a driver where you have the comfortability comes in that really helps you right yeah. and the raw pace that comes in i know it's kind of repeating over and over but it comes into play over and over, right? You don't feel comfortable in a certain section or even miss your mark by a few inches. Say on this curve, you're likely snapping it around and losing control. Guess what? Hit the mark right, they're not losing too much time as a result of it. So that's where the, all that bounces back and forth, back and forth like a pendulum swing throughout these types of races. It's just a matter of mitigating the mistakes and minimizing the mistakes and being able to recover from said mistakes to be able to go back and forth on the timesheet and or continue to plow forward up for track position. Keep in mind, by the way, these cars are still about up to nine tenths of a second slower than your race leader. Yep, losing big time as things go on. 
fighting of course both the Porsches against each other and it's a common phenomenon in motorsport when you race against each other you can end up losing time to the leaders or the cars behind nevertheless it's a fun battle that's going on right now amongst many others meanwhile in the prototypes as well Mulder Motorsport Sim Racing Pro not getting past the Durna Motorsport car at least for the last couple of laps now they do get past going down the inside and the organizers of the race are having quite a strong one right here moving up into P number seven as it stands the number 21 car piloted right now by Michael Fingborner doing a very yep. very decent job that wasn't for position by the way that was lap traffic and yes that's how slow the 68 has been today again you mess up the strong the setup of this car in any way especially say adding extra drag at a speed track you're going to pay for it guess what the 68 of phoenix racing esport yellow they're paying for it massively where they're a good few miles an hour slower down each and every one of the straightaways and at this type of track that's not good let's put it that way because you do not want to have drag as a driver drag makes things slower down the straights reducing drag or increasing horsepower is how you get faster as a competitor in some of the various types of classes of racing and now if you're over speeds and the rest of your group you're learning that the hard way tonight especially for this car especially with the different philosophy used by the other car is Pit window seems to be open. This is about 50 minutes or so for the 137. Well, the Austrian Sim Racers Rot GTE car has made its way up in the pit lane. And Justin, there's often, uh, there's often this belief popularly in motorsport that drag, more drag is also equal to more downforce. And that's at a circuit like Spa when we've got so many tricky left right corners when you need all that downforce. I mean, that should ideally help them in some places, but yeah. it's seemingly not been that way, is it? Oh my goodness me, drama in the back with the LMP2s, oh boy. They were getting a bit frisky at La Source. Yeah, with some of the traffic, yes, to see that right here, but back to the task at hand. Yes, the downforce means more corner speed, and that can help you in Sector 2, but the problem is the main way drivers have been gaining time are in sections right here of some of the traffic and off the pole of others throughout the race today, especially in some of the back and forth in the LMP2s. And the problem with that is, you, if you're not able to keep up in the straight line speed, especially say in Rochamont, which is not as easy of a section to keep the speed in, you're likely not going to keep up and they haven't kept up from the get-go today. They meanwhile, the number 66 Phoenix Racing Car have been able to keep up quite a fair bit they are in second place right now they would like a phoenix they can actually soar through from the ashes and come back to take a great result because well for them they have closed up the gap in this stint mind you they have clawed down that gap that simza esports lmp2 had before the start of this one so uh, before the pit window the gap was around 30 not seconds now it's say 11. so although it's only two seconds being cut down it's still something it's a beginning for them so clearly Daniel Longrick has done a good job in that machine trying to cloud on that gap. But nevertheless, he's not alone. He is being chased behind by the Ring Fizzer Sim Racing LMP2 machine. Here's the intriguing thing with all this. Uh -huh. The double stint. Some of these cars have been the quickest cars on the track. Shockingly enough. We're talking even with the traffic. Bullet racing just ran a 2025 that wow. was faster than the leader by six tenths the eight car that's in p3 double stinted they were quicker by at least about a second or so with the cleaner space they lost some time in the traffic i'm surprised how quick some of these cars are going the fall off in pace difference is already up to seven tenths for some of the cars today from the start of the race with the track going up up and already all the teams using that to their advantage trying to make moves trying to get this done and in cases where temperatures rise I mean you often tend to conserve and all that as we head to the afternoon but no for these guys they're just pushing hard the lap times are certainly coming up to their advantage but nevertheless it could be a bit of a bit of a bad thing for them when it comes to saving up tires eventually but still 
Let's look at this one. WS Racing Esports Magenta closing the gap up on Bull Racing 2. Only a tenth now. Look at the weaving, trying to make sure that the WS Racing Esports Magenta car is not in the draft. And the Bull, Bull Out Racing team was somewhat successful in that because the WS car couldn't quite make the move as of yet. You kind of get a feeling that something will be on the cards rather soon. Look like at least they thought about it. But again, with that bigger defensive move, you probably say, you know what? I'm just going to back off and save. Because yeah. here's how quick these runs have gone for these cars. They're already up two to three laps away from the pit window. Yes, you heard that right. In other words, may as well save, especially with this now. Lots of drama going on in the middle sector. You pointed that out early on, Justin. That's not where you want to catch any sort of traffic. And now that they have, ooh boy, this could be a bit of a spicy moment right here. Pull out racing team pulling out a bit of a gap against the WS Racing Cup. They've had to fight out against them. And look at this from having a gap of around one tenth of a second, it's become one second and one tenth of a second. All that can happen while the traffic gets you up in the middle. So it, it, it's something very very interesting in terms of how you manage traffic it, it essentially is your make or break thing as we see a lock Whoa. up at the bus stop chicane there was a car off at the bus stop that one specifically that is stage one racing who had to take a stage left after I believe they just locked up and went straight off the track wowza why have they done that Clearly, everything seems to be fine right here. Matthew saying, yeah, what a lovely day at Spa. Oh, oh, no. Loses the back end. And was that a wheel on the grass, Justin? That's why they lost their footing right there. Have to take an air lock there, but basically as they locked it up, that went straight. I mean, straight full lock. Yep, right there. Yeah. You hit the grass, the grass, you're gone. And what's, what's the damage like on the grass? Yeah. Now, most of the times in modern day racing circuits, the grass and gravel has been replaced with runoff, astroturf, in, in certain degrees, even at Spa, let's say La Source as well. But how risky is the grass on iRacing, Justin? Uh, just how tricky is it to manage your car there? How do I put this? The grass is hot lava on iRacing. Let's put it that way. You touch a blade of grass, uh, you're likely spinning the car up in a lot of sections and a lot of different tracks. And you've seen it just about there. You lose a ton of grip. It's going from full grip to none at all. Back to full, and it just that difference in transition just snaps you around at the snap of a finger. The main thing as a driver is it's not so much the damage from hitting the grass, it's the damage of if you hit something after you hit the grass. Yeah. It's what you have to try and recover from or try and avoid. Because whenever your car is on the grass, you've got as much control on it as NASA on that space rover that just went off the surface of the solar system that is floating in the sky. You, you have no control at all, to put it that way. When the car is on the grass, it's like it's like putting a band on an ice skating rink with normal shoes. Can't do much about it, can you? Just go by your instinct, try to do whatever you can, hamper and scamper about and just hope for the very best. And thankfully for the Corvette, they didn't end up too bad again. They did lose a fair bit of time, but still, could be worse. Oh, oh Jeremy Clarkson, I've just quoted him right there, haven't I? I mean, Tector could use regular shoes as skates. I mean, not, but not if you were very smart. I mean, if you don't have skates, you have to use something, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the next thing you know, you would have a bruised chin. I mean, you're probably right. You're probably right. By the way, this 60, some of these cards are going to be really mad in this grouping of cards, such as <laughs> right here, because some of them have just absolutely had to slam on the brakes and have flicked their lights up in anger. The 68 had to do so. Some of these cards are now in the risk of doing so as well now in this sector. So are they going to tangle with each other? Or are they just going to put in a beautiful performance much like a figure skater would put good shoes on ice well if you're figure skating you need skates you can't jump <laughs> up in the air and do a pirouette and then land without the skates right <laughs> yeah but. 
in all seriousness, you have to be able to skate your way through some of the holes out the, around this racetrack <laughs> and finesse your way through them and just dive your way on through them and lunge your way on through them. <laughs> some of the drivers have been more daring than others, and that's why some of them have broken drafts from one another. Some of them, they've been more timid, and that's where they lose two seconds a lap. But at the same time, you be over aggressive as we talked about. The drivers who are not expecting that are the ones who are probably using running shoes on the ice and end up getting sent off to the ground as a result. And if you're a beginner, you can't quite grab onto the poles and keep on keep on holding onto them just to begin with. You've got to go in the deep end and at Spa, the deep end, well that's where the grip is. If you go to the edges, to the boundaries, quite possibly just like Mortal Racing Esports did early on, could be facing the wrong way with a big, big bruise on your car. Meanwhile, Mortal Racing Esports say, hey, Duna Motorsport, look at me. I'm the captain now. I want that position from you. And so during a half an instant reply saying you've got to fight for it, buddy. And so they are going to fight for it. Three tenths the gap between them as we come up to Eau Rouge. It's a classic sight. Seeing cars go left, right. Wow, it's an amazing corner. Never gets sold. What also never gets sold is a move around the outside of Lecombe. But seems to be coming now, so. Yep, just again. Better run coming out through Eau Rouge and Rainy on sets it up get the good corner exit boom you've got it with the pull it's been the common passing method all day today in the omp 2s for a good reason the main tough part is just keeping the spot because you know they're going to be able to draft back if you get held up here guess what they're getting held up here yep hella big time by a bmw z4 gt3 and it's been a source of conversation recently, Justin, at least in the YouTube chat, about why iRacing is still using BMW Z4s. It's still a pretty old car, yes, but it works pretty well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, and you have to keep in mind, it's not as like in some platforms where it's a rendering, say, or interpretation of the car. It's a full-on scan, and for some teams and for some manufacturers, as a organization, do you feel comfortable with a company or someone, even your competitors, being able to have the scan to try out and know the exact raw power of the car? And that's where some of the concern, honestly, can come into play, right? It's some of the timidness that can come in for that. That's why the Corvette was such a surprise to see that come into play on iRacing this year in it was a surprise that people cheer for is it's still a competitive car in real life some of the cars like the lmp2 here for the dolara p217 to be quite frank entering towards the final stages of its chassis life but that's just how this sometimes works in some cases some information you'd be protective of and for others you come to pit lane like right now for 40 the 41 and the 64. very smooth indeed that's the 41 car back in the pit lane yet again. That's the Bull Out Racing team. And yes, they've been in there for quite a while. And they've had a few incidents. They've had a few good battles early on. But now they are in to make their third stop. Of course, fuel and pit windows will be starting off for all the teams. Tobias Grunkotter, the driver behind the wheel of that one. And I think ideally, Justin, we should be seeing even the GTEs and the GT3s coming into pit lane. What, five, seven odd minutes from now? Around that point, yes. Based on the markings, we've seen them go up to 27, 28, some of the classes, right? They're around 23 laps this time, most of those cars. So these competitors probably around that mark, give or take, but still. If you're a competitor and feel like you can go for an overcut, that's where the saving comes into play, right? Yeah. There hasn't been that many chances to do so today compared to some other events we've seen this year. Because everyone's gone so spread out in some cases, in other times, it's just been about who's got the better marks and better consistency throughout the run. Hmm. Actually, speaking of saving right here, uh, I, I have to get the attention back to the couple of Ferraris that we had early on, who did go a lap longer. So, online simracing.de, Stanislav Lenartz, and 11.9 Sim Sports, Sven Hartman, these were the two cars that did go a lap longer in the first stint because 
they can with Ferrari. And the gains from the looks of things, Justin, are, are, are not very huge because they are essentially where they were. P number six in category, P number 11 in category, respectively. Yeah. So quite clearly, it's not the biggest of gains, but yeah, it's just there for the sake of it. It's not so much, I think, the gains of it, it's just the, the long con, as we talked about again. It will take at least the full 24 hours to see how it exactly will work. Surprisingly enough, though, they're making some moves here. That's a Corvette that just passed by they're fairly easily there. Yeah, I, I don't think that was a position because they still yeah. were in P number six. But Yeah, that was traffic, I believe. Yeah. That's the stage one racing black car, Matthew Molinar, who had the incident early on at the bus stop chicane of overshooting the track. Yes, indeed. So they have some, they just, I think, have a good car, at very least. Yeah. But the main thing is here, it's going to need to hit that mark every single time if you want a chance to win this race. And that's the big mark. Because if you can put in less fuel, if it comes to a top off at the end, I think that may get them some time and get them a few positions and might be where it gets some potential podium because keep in mind, the podium spot is only about 20 plus seconds far. up the track. Yes. Exactly. It's not too far off for them. But speaking of things that are not too far off, if you're AMC Birkenfield EV Pre Alpha, someone who's not too far off is Mike Stinlicker in the BMW, this other BMW of Albrecht Motorsports. The gap only around a couple of tenths of a second and they are well, well away from the lead of the category. So Fabio Busu, he, Fabio Busu, I beg your pardon, the 257, he's dominating in the BMW at the top, but these guys are easily around a minute behind the same cars in the category, but that does not discourage them from putting in a good fight. As we discussed early on, it is a big, big achievement for each of these teams just to finish. So even if it may be a lowly position, it still means a lot. So they are fighting right now. Both the BMWs for position on the track. Of course, a couple of other lap traffic cars also coming in from behind to chase them through. But still should be an interesting battle. But while we have a few minutes on the clock until we see most of the cars heading in the pit lane, uh, how, how do you be very consistent, Justin, in terms of your driving? Because that's something that is very critical in an endurance race in relation to a sprint run. Because now you've got to make sure that you don't make any mistakes, keep on driving on the track. And lots of drivers, to have their marking points, to have their references, where to brake, where to turn. But inevitably, you just end up diverting from them left and right. And that's what that's just a place where you can make a mistake, aren't you? Yeah, and that's where... As this day's going to go on, and as things drivers go from afternoon conditions to nighttime conditions, especially, fatigue settles in. Because, in turn, the more tired you are, the likely you'll make some mistakes. Hmm. Now, right now, these drivers are in prime condition. They're fresh. They're wide awake. They're pumped up. They're only a couple hours into the event. That can't be said same, say, after five stints, or even six stints, or even ten stints into a race, even when you think about it. Yeah. So that, that can settle in. There's also the matter of how you are as a team philosophy, for example, on how you try and think as a driver and what you prefer. Some drivers, they prefer pure, si pure silence. As in, they want just the information when it's invaluable. They want to race on their own in, a, in their own little world. And they race better in that. I'm one of those people where, uh, if you say, have a lot of noise or a lot of craziness going around like right there, you're not gonna be the best, in the best situation. And you're going to struggle. If you're in some other cases where, say, you're the type who likes to have people in your ear all the time, like to have fun on the radio, that can pump you up as well. Good back and forth though for these drivers because guess what? drivers who handle the calmness to be able to then settle in and take advantage of the craziness is back up the spot. Yep, AMC Birkenfield moving up a position while as we speak about all those battles we are seeing the LM LMP2 pit window also restart so all the cars are in the pit lane but you might be wondering 
What is that Porsche doing there? Why is the Mule Motorsport Sim Racing Blue Machine the number one, two, three in the pit lane that we just saw exit the lane right now? That's because our producer Hugo Luis has come up with a great piece of information. It's that the number one, two, three had a connection issue with the previous driver. So what they had to do is get the car back in the pit lane and swap drivers. So that's what they did. And not, not a completely unscheduled stop for the 123 Porsche in the GTE category, but nevertheless, it does put them off cycle just that little bit. So, yeah, that's why the Mueller Racing, Mueller Motorsport Sim Racing blue car will now be found in P number 11 in category while the lmp 2s are cycling back out of the pits. That could have been much, much more worse. But you have to think about yeah. this. They only lost 56 seconds, give or take, including the toe. There are other teams who lose entire laps from that situation. They were able to spawn quickly. They were able to get out of the box quickly. I think they may be on the old tires, though, which will hurt the driver who had to jump in. But outside of that, they'll be in an okay spot. It could have been much worse, where they could have been an extra 20, 30 seconds could have been two three minutes more off the pace and now they might be say within range of fights such as these pretty soon who are up the road a little bit yep ferrari versus corvette stage one black versus 11.9 sim sport i would love to say something good about 11.9 sim sport but sadly it's just not been their day so far lacking in pace all the way through and i'm not quite sure if it's something to do with the car because the ferrari I mean, when the BOP favors it, it's a proper monster. But in this race right here, there is no BOP, so there is no favoritism. The cars are as they are, essentially. So that's what it is for them. So pretty, pretty basic. And sadly, it's not been working out for them. But nevertheless, it's a long race. Attrition could come into perspective. And they could end up getting a very good position. So they're right there, closing up as the LMP2 cycle ends. But something big's happening in GTE. Because the race union car, the second place GTE machine, also in the pit lane right now. So that's their cycle to open up now. 26 laps on the cycle now for Florian. Kevin in, looking like scheduled. And that window is open. Just about everybody, remember, made it to this mark before. They're on it again. And it seems like it's a little bit further before by a minute. So I think as a team, you're not concerned. You're not concerned about only going 26 because just about everyone's gone 26 except for one or two cars as we talked about and driver exactly. swap to boot with new tires chopping and changing for all these teams getting new tires new drivers in that's when the double stint ends i wonder whether they'll be able to do something similar in this one too so uh, Justin, what, what are the conditions like right there uh, at spa right now I sadly don't have the access to the data right with me. Is it cold enough to do another set of double stints? Because of course, we are getting into the afternoons at this stage, aren't we? I mean, looking at the data for some of the drivers, it might be feasible. It's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's, it's going to get cooler from here. That's the key thing. If you take the gamble of you're hoping it doesn't cross that 80 degree Fahrenheit threshold, you're okay. The Celsius thing is around give or take that conversion part of me around the low 20s or high teens to say the very least it looks like some of the teams though again if they're making a driver swap and already finished the double stint now they're going to take the driver swap and have to take the tires because you don't want to put your new driver on old tires unless you really have to risk wise and that's what their teams are doing they know they have to take a swap they know they have to eventually take the tires to do it at that, and some of them are running their boxes. Crikey, so they'll have to get back to their boxes to actually make sure that the tires are changed. And this will mean that they, that they lose a lot of time in the pit lane. And this certainly does not help them, does it? Because in the long run, you can lose far more time in the pit lane that you, than you can actually gain on the track. So, definitely, the tide is turning against them who have ended up missing their boxes oh something just happened to race union they just went off the track going through sector two believe it was a massive mistake on old tires where they have lost at least a couple seconds they are in clean space now but a couple corners ago t 
take a look at this. This is going to be on corner exit right out of the next com or complex here. This is coming out of Bruxelles where they just take it too wide and nearly smack the Armco. Oh, dearie me. What's just... That seems to be a rather strange one that they stopped early on on the corner. Slowed down. I wonder what's happening right there for them. Okay, so we get the onboard view for perspective from that. And, ah, boy. The, Something the must have... That is weird. That is weird because they lifted off the gas. Oh, what's going to slow down then? I don't think you sort of slow down on the grass though. That's the thing. I don't think you would slow down in the middle of the grass to serve it. So Marvin Otterbach having a bit of a moment maybe there. It has to be something hardware or something. Or, I don't know, someone saying hello and getting distracted for that to happen. <laughs> or perhaps the ghost of the goes to the mountains nearby coming to help them and saying he who oh no jokes aside serious serious problem for them they end up losing a fair bit of time and remember they were fighting for the top positions in their category yeah that was your car in p2 mind you for much of this end of the runner keeping up with that said run now that's going to potentially lose them their partner so to speak for the next little bit or so in fact while they're currently second on track, or net P2 on track, I don't know how this is all going to fare out for them as a result. Austrian Great Sim Racers, remember the Austrian Sim Racers lost a lot of time before. They've had three total stops, so they might be an okay spot, but the thing is I don't know if they have the pace to get to HM yeah. Engineering. Yeah, HM Engineering are well and truly by far and away up ahead and you can take a look at that Porsche at the side too that has to be uh, yeah that's the GMS racing dominant bomb at the wheel of that broken Porsche that had the incident at Blanchimont a few minutes ago but the hour mark has been reached 21 hours and 57 minutes left to go until we end this race and something special is here we have an interview lined up so it's rasmus busk of the hm engineering team right here with us so why don't we pull him in and let's have a good chat with him yes indeed i believe he's standing by with you indeed rasmus mate firstly can you hear us yeah man what a first thing it was for hm engineering at the very top dominant in the way you drove What's it been like out there for you? Uh, it's been a bit chaotic with the LMP2 sending it um, when I didn't think they were going to, but I think I managed it quite well, so... And Erasmus, in terms of double stinting, obviously the temperatures are not as hot right there. So, well, is it fairly easy to do something like that? Are you not facing major lapses in terms of grip? And how has traffic been today so far? I think you can um, maybe triple stand at night. Our tires were fine after the double stand. Triple stand, well. Uh, and the traffic has been okay. Uh, GT3 is like all around good. Uh, no major problems with film, but we did have one in some of the good intervals. Well, interesting enough, just as you said, there was a spinning GT3 car, spinning BMW right in front of the HM engineering machine. So oh, that got a bit risky for there, over there for a couple of seconds. I don't actually remember that. <laughs> oh, it's just happening on track right now as the live pictures roll on. Oh, okay. Yeah, thankfully all safe. Yeah. Now, one thing to ask as well, as a competitor now, as your second driver's rolling along here with the class league at the moment, what's kind of some of the things you're trying to help along and tell them and try and work with, especially since this is a group that you've been with for a few weeks now? Yeah, I mean, it's mostly uh, spotting with LMP2, spotting with, like, possible cars coming close to you, saying, yeah, you have a group coming up, be careful, they're fighting, or whatever. Uh, also helping him with fuel calculation, or he's helping us. How would you say things are coming along with you and HM Engineering now with the partnership? 
now that you're part of this group? Uh, I think it's actually a really good team I joined. Um, really happy where I am. Uh, nice guys. Nice work we've done so far. What are some of the things that you feel you've helped them with, or some of the things they've helped you with, or taught when they're, or vice versa? Uh, I mean, maybe a bit of setup work I've helped them with, but they also taught me a lot of stuff. Um, like, they helped me find some time spent in the Cup Cup because I started racing that for the Danish series, which is coming up soon. Um, yeah, not really anything else. Now, of course, your team in a good spot right now. What are some of the things that your team is keeping in mind still? With the class lead and being, well, or should I say the net class lead? Because the Ferraris have been extending it up to 28 laps the furthest so far. What are some of the things that you guys are keeping in mind strategy-wise or feel the fans should know strategy-wise as this race progresses for your organization? I mean, we're make it, mainly focusing on the fuel, making sure we can make it to the end and not having extra shots. Also, the incident limit. Um, and we're just focusing on finishing, driving our own pace, not pushing. Just cruising around. 10-4 on that one. And just for clarification's sake and curiousness sakes, how many incident points would you say your team has at the moment? Uh, we have five, I believe. Wow, oh, just five. five. Why do you feel that is that there's so little? Because it seems like that's been the case for a lot of drivers, while others are in the projected 20s and 30s. Oh, well, that's a lot. I had zero in my first tint. <laughs> 10, okay. Anything else you'd like to add, I guess, before we let you go? Yeah, well, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Tech in Asia, Logitech, uh, BenQ and so on and of course you guys for the amazing broadcast and the organizers of the event for hosting a nice event thank you very much for your time yeah thank you for your time very entertaining chap have to say samil yeah rasmus very entertaining at least on the track he can really put on a show when things go on and yes Driver swap for online simracing.de. The car disappeared for a second. Snap of the finger, they're back again because then they have changed drivers. So, pit cycles have essentially finished. They are the only car that were left to pit, and now they have, along with the second Ferrari, the 11.9 Simsport, they are well and truly behind. So, they'll take a couple of moments. And the Mortal Racing Esports team are back on the chase with WS Racing Magenta. That is for P number 5 in the LMP2 category and let's say how long has it been Justin since we have seen Mortal Racing Esports in the middle of a fight? Let's say 10 minutes? 15? They always seem to be in the middle of it. Especially it seems with the 6 to 4 lately, right? And that's one of the things yeah. with endurance racing is normally once things settle in, you're likely hooked up with an error driver for much of the rest of the race. This is the type of situation here, and this is not pretty because they've reached that destroyed BMW we talked about before, and that set up craziness. That is craziness indeed. The mortal car has to look for an opportunity within all this drama and mess that's going on, and so he does. Goes to the inside line and forces Linkfist that car outside, and look at the frustration that he's got at the back, flashing his headlights. And that's the best way of an endurance race to saying, you, I'm going to settle the scores with you rather soon. Yeah, I wasn't liking that at first because that slow BMW has been trouble for them, unfortunately. But just took advantage of it proper, right? Able to squeeze it yeah. in, able to stick it without going off into the grass. And now they're paying the spoilers, to so say the least. Indeed they are. And finally, of course, the Mortal team have got the position in for themselves. So this battle has calmed down a bit too. And they were just there trying to fight, getting on the back of them. And now they've realized that they can use the traffic to their advantage and get things done up and easy. 
Why don't we take a look at how things are sh shaping out, though, here, Samuel, in terms of the top eight rundown so far, because for this class, yes, Simsy Esports, the gap has gone down to only six seconds of note, be but that's because, well, partly traffic, but partly several teams have picked up on the double stint that was tried by some of the teams earlier and now we're trying it themselves the top three did that it's 15 seconds the gap on the podium spot p4 is rainford shirt sim racing lp2 in the eight card they had to use their tires after they used the double stint the last run then you have this battle for fifth that's on screen 48 seconds back and then all the way back in P8 still is Bullet Racing. They're still trying to close up five seconds on that Muir Motorsport Sim Racing Pro Machine. To try and claw their way up the pod on here, Samil, in this in this grouping. It's here we go again. <laughs> nice. Good racing going on in LMP2s. The Mortal Racing team still keeping up the WS Racing Esports Magenta Machine, pushing them out. And then as this goes on, the GTE field has seen a fair share of drama themselves. HM Engineering, of course, leading as we just had a chat to their driver, Rasmus Busk. Then Race Union, having a bit of drama, some hardware issues, that's what we suspect. They still are 30 seconds behind with Bendley Gods in third. Prism Racing Sim, Prism Sim Racing Alpha, my apologies, are in fourth. But Valkyrie e Racing Green, having a bit of a, a bit of a quiet race, let's call it that way, in fifth. With all nine simracing.de just making their pit stop in the Ferrari. And then the Ring Fizzer team, and Austrian sim races vote. A 257 machine once again, the Premier Bomber went well. My goodness, 44 seconds already is the gap. You heard that right, 44 seconds over Simsy Esports GT3, who have finally moved up a spot and ran away with said spot. Some of the trouble for some of the cars around them. Hormate Motorsport Sim Racing Black rounds out the top three with Absolute Motorsport currently trying to scrap along for that position you see here for the final step of the podium. Again, this is a 70 euro worth position at the end of the 24 hours. Keep that in mind. German Performance Sim Racing fifth with Rank for Search Sim Racing GT3's Pro Call lap down in six. Then you have Hurtal Motorsport Sim Racing with that repair sponsorship in seventh. The AMC Orkenfeld EV Pre Alpha rounding up the top eight so far. Interesting events so far, to say the very least. Some clean race for the most part. A couple of cars with some attrition here and there. Overall, though, just still one DNF because JMS Racing and Low Grip Racing Team, after their earlier incidents we've seen on screen and having to get significant repairs, are both back on track. Double laps down. Good news then. They can at least come back and keep on fighting. That's a good thing. It's a long race. Anything can happen. Anything can change. And while we see this battle for position in the GT3 category, you know what? I think it's a good time for Race Spot TV fan immersion. It's right on board with the number 299 machine as we ride through Spa Francochamps from their perspective and see what it's like. Could be fun. Have a listen, it's Andrea Salvi, Absolute Motorsport is the design. It's time for Race Sport TV.
back then after a race spot TV fan immersion with the absolute motorsport ace in design it was quite a fun one but Justin I'm hearing that you have some penalty news here for us yes drive to just served by one of the drivers that were on the recovery drive Boa racing just seems to just not find any luck today that 41 just had to serve a penalty for ignoring blue flags yes you heard that right was the penalty from race control the 41 was forced to serve a penalty remember they're one of the drivers who were fairly aggressive in some of their moves on some of this traffic to gain some time and build a buffer and they were penalized as a result for some of the moves remember they went three wide into some sections of the track yep far from ideal for them that's clearly they're going to compromise their race as they are in p number 11 right now I've been saying time and again, it's a long race, there's a long, long time for things to change, but this just puts you on the back foot in a very, very bad manner. Shame that the race has to go down this particular route. And also, folks, if you're watching, don't forget to send in your questions on the YouTube chat. We'll be right here answering as many as we possibly can. And there already seems to be a first one from Nicholas Mars about why the teams have such long names. It's why do they have names? that are so long in nature there says and he's quoted something like something by something something sim racing team that's just because all the partnerships and the commercial dealings that the teams have for them of course it's a big deal to compete in an event like this one that is broadcasted in front of hundreds of people so that's why it's i think the right place to have a little bit of brand exposure and thank all the parties involved in making all this possible but meanwhile bmws are fighting amongst each other Repair expert also on motorsport sim racing are chasing AMC Bergenfield EV Pre Alpha. Now that's a long name, I agree. But what are they gonna do here? Natalie Com? Nope, they're just gonna keep the combs aside, not gonna polish everything right now. They are gonna look for a move sometime rather soon. I mean you have to think with the way the race has gone for Daniel Helmy and his respective organization, right? But to get Touching back on that sponsorship point, they're crucial as an organization these days, especially with this year, because the whole climate of sim racing changed from the start of the year to now, where before you get a sponsorship, a lot of people would be happy with that, and for others now, it's vital as an organization and there's been people buying in. We've talked about Roman Grandjean, for example. There have been many on the oval side buying their way in. There are organizations and drivers wanting to get an opportunity to represent a pro team or have a pro team. There's so much importance in that this year and as well being able to maintain a brand, maintain social media postings. There are several teams who have been increasing the roles of social media throughout 2020 compared to say last year where they may have had a Facebook post a month or something or a tweet every month. Now they have dedicated people for some of these teams. It's just the way things have been going and that's where you start to see that bridged gap starting to close up between the real world and the virtual world where you start to see many real world brands wanting representation from respectable organizations and we've seen that even with the real world organizations in their sim racing counterparts to show what they can do on the track such as this exactly Milna Motorsport are racing in real life also got Phoenix Racing who I know for sure racing DTM with quite top names so this is an extension of their brand activities of their profile it's again I this is one quote from Radio Le Mans uh, that resonates in my mind quite a lot they said that the racing is real. Well, the cars may not be, the tracks may not be, but the racing is just so real. And during the motorsports are right there trying to prove just that by going down the inside at Lecom and getting that position in from Moulin Motorsport for P number seven. And that's the thing, right? The tracks may be virtual, the cars may be virtual. A lot of us may be sitting in different corners of the world. I mean, Justin's in Canada, I'm in India. Hugo's in Brazil. He's producing the race right here. All the drivers in different corners of the world it may all be virtual but the competition that goes in the effort the preparation everything is all just real and one team that comes to mind that have ramped up their social media that like joseph mentioned bs competition in the endurance scheme of things they have just transformed the way 
social media is wrong for a team to have in their insights, social media and everything. So it's just become essentially another vertical of motorsport. And frankly, Justin, it's just the way it should be because the kind of effort that goes into this and the number of views that we have, it's just become a different parallel of the sport now. I know there are some in some of the organizations who may not like that trend, but it's just how things are going to go because you mentioned it. It's real world, you have real people driving with real emotions, racing for a chance to fight for wins. And all of that, yes, these may be virtual cars, but the emotions all play into a factor that you would have in real life. You race like it would in real life as well, essentially. What I'm trying to get at is that just is a natural transition, especially with iRacing, with its ability for drivers to train on the tracks. I was talking with uh, someone, William Hale, for example, from the Verge for Nashville, for the Nashville Fairground Speedway Rounder for the All-American 400 on the oval side, for example. They had the All-American Esports 400 a couple weeks in, in ago. And one of the things he hit upon is because they can't go to the real world track to practice, guess what? There's a virtual scan of it on iRacing that's brand new, right? They get to do their practice laps on there and learn their marks and feel what they may be able to use, utilize in real life for when they go there or are currently there even for this weekend. The same goes for road course racing. And there's a reason so many drivers from the virtual side have also started that transition to the real world side of racing as well. And those connections matter so many times, not just because you might race against your competitors that you may be battling with here in the virtual world, but also because those connections may open up the door for you to race in the real world. Absolutely, it may not be iRacing, but we've seen so many cases of drivers from a different simulator just translating from their academy program into real world motorsport. I mean, Jan Martinborough is one name that comes to mind quite clearly about transitioning from sim racing into real world motorsport, as are so many other drivers. I can't quite seem to recollect, but there's one rather young driver who transitioned from playing motorsport games right here, and uh, not games, simulators rather, different one, nevertheless to racing in Formula 2 and Formula 3 these days. And that's something rather special, isn't it? The way you can still change and transition from going there to here. It's something fabulous. The gap is being closed up. And speaking of gaps being closed up, the Repair X by Ultra Motorsport Sim Racing Team is closing up to the Birkenfield AMC car yet again. And while all that has happened, uh, the WS Sim Racing Esports Magenta car was recently in the pits for their fourth stop. So some various strategies coming to play. We'll have to see what happens with some of these air cars then as this run continues on. But to get to the specific point of what you're, I think, trying to get towards that is it definitely is a chance for you to get some opportunities where it's also a chance to build up a railroad racing career and some potential funding depending on some of the events you build up, in, especially at the biggest stages with some of the big because the money adds up and it allows you the opportunity to buy seat time and get seat time rather. For one of the best examples, Zach Novak is one that we may have to keep an eye on, try to see if he runs in real world cars in the near future. Last year's NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series champion. There's just those opportunities. A lot of times though, you do have the real world drivers as well come to the virtual world because they want to have fun, they love these types of events too. That's one of the main things. There are so many drivers and even fellow, fellow broadcasters that you see and listen to, pardon me, who have lists that enjoy these types of races. It also gives them chances for seat time against other competitors and to show what they can do to help teach other people. There have been so many times I can think of as well that there have been chances from the virtual world some cases that have helped them build sponsorship and grow their brand. Eric Smithley, for example, Anthony Alfredo, for example, on the oval side. You have Lando Norris on the road course side. There's so many names you can think of who have built their brand up from the virtual platform and taken it to their real world careers. 
and in turn bring that real world career to bring exposure and expertise to the virtual world. Exactly. And it just extends all the way from brand building to practicing as well because Ai Chen Goon is one name that comes to mind on the road course side of things. As we see the ring wizard sim racing GTE car fighting against the Austrian sim racers rot. Now, Ayn Chen Guven is a Turkish driver who's competed quite a fair bit in the actual Porsche yeah. Super Cup in the real world side of things. And on the sim, he, he blatantly admits that yes, it helps me practice, it helps me get a lot of track time. And as a driver, I can grow with this. It's fantastic. Exactly. Exactly. Some of the teams, yes, have their own simulation equipment, but you're, you can only get into the simulator so many times at your race shop or your team or your manufacturer's headquarters because there's so many people and so many seats that can have the space. So, next option. Go and jump on iRacing in your own personal rig and be able to compete from home, run as many laps as you want for as long as you want, and as well, be able to race against other people if you want to have some fun. There are so many drivers that won the official races too from the real world. Some of these drivers, as we talked about, raced in the real world. Simsa Esports. The part of the reason it was such a big gap for the MP2 lead at one point, you had one of the top drivers in that car in the world in LMP2s for in the past couple of years driving that machine, who, as we talked about, ran the four when recently at Monza for endurance racing but is also a contender for the Rookie of the Year for the Asian Le Mans Series. Those types of connections and those types of, of practice times end up paying off in most cases in the real world, more so, I'd argue, on the road course side than any other discipline. Absolutely, 100%. Well, just to get back on the same point very quickly after that, uh, I'll just mention that Sims or Esports having a bit of a torrid stint, so they've lost a bit of time, three seconds to be precise, and the gap between them and Phoenix Racing only around, say, 8.3 seconds, and we saw them going wide at Wuhan today, easily must have lost another second back there, so clearly this stint for them is, let's say, becoming a little bit rocky, still they've got a big gap between them and the rest, but just to come back to the same discussion that we were having, and it's not just the drivers, it's not just the teams or the viewers. It's actual real-world manufacturers that are pumping money into this. Um, case in point, yeah. Porsche. Porsche have the Porsche Esports Super Cup. That is, let's say, the biggest pedestal for most sim racing drivers as we see. The Simza car coming to the pits because, of course, the pit window for the MP2s will be beginning right about now. And Porsche are pumping millions and millions of dollars into this. I mean, the cash prizes for the Virtual Esports Super Cup are huge. And you've got big names competing in that. BMW have started the BMW 120 Sim Cup. They're very actively involved in making sure that their cars are very smartly mapped out. They're just the same. The M4 is a very good example of just that. So it's quite clear brands want to be involved in this too. It's not just us fans of racing or drivers who want to practice. The, man, the manufacturers recognize that a market does exist and the fact that they are willing to go up and tie up, let's say, in the uh, virtual Le Mans 24 that we had a few months ago when uh, they did this on a completely different simulator with WEC, Vera Square and the Sims would had to had, had tied up with the actual factory Porsche team to know more about the sim. Uh, yeah. th that kind of thing just baffles me. It's amazing to see the way things have grown. Take a step towards the iRacing Sim 2, you think of the IMSA Pro Series. There were BMW drivers, mind you, working and preparing like it's a real race. And for some of the competitors, they treat it as such. And guess what? That's just, again, the importance the manufacturers, especially in some of the organizations, are starting to see with things factoring in. It's been something that's been on the rise for a few years now. It's been something iRacing's been wanting to push in recent years, absolutely. And now it's finally starting to build and gain momentum. There's a reason esports is one of the grow biggest growing markets and biggest growing industries in the entire globe in the 20, in that was in the 2010s. Because of the excitement, because the ability to connect with fans, because the accessibility for the common person. It's not as simple as say that main argument i can think of is and i've heard a few times that makes a bit of sense of this is it's not as simple as say you can take a basketball to a basketball court and play basketball 
You can't take a race car and run a race in the middle of the street. Exactly. You know, you can in the virtual world, though. And just the cost of it. I mean, racing, it, it's fair to say that most of us will never even get to sit in a real race car. I mean, the vast majority of people who are fans of racing, it's just so niche, it sucks, it's just so inaccessible in the real world. And the same has just breached the gap. I mean, even in esports, in a broader perspective, Counter Strike, when are you actually going to go take a gun and fight with someone else? Unless, of course, you are in certain countries where gun laws are not very well managed. But nevertheless, you're not going to go and actually have a fight with four of your friends against each other. But you can't do it in the virtual world. And just the whole thing of esports, the way it's grown, it's fascinating. And I don't know whether it's true or not, but I read that one of the big esports events, I think ESL, their prize pool was just about the same, if not bigger, than the FIFA World Cup. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. And that's something in sim racing, it's been growing. And I wouldn't be surprised if it gets to some of those major levels we've seen a couple of years from now. Because here's the thing. Some of the parts of the esports, to be frank, are further, yes. But there's a chance a lot of these catch up and these teams will be some of the ones who will be looking to ride the tides and get a shot in them. That's why so many real world groups want to get invested and they want to see themselves compete, not just in the real world for victories, but in the virtual world and be able to have a, a way to connect to real world fans and sim racing fans and bridge that gap as well as have that pipeline that comes in with the ability to learn about. I have to wonder though with that mirror we just seen on that last onboard, how that person's going to be able to see because that mirror is angled up towards the roof. By the way, the OMP2 lead has also shrunk. What in the world has happened to Simza? They have switched drivers again. It's down to five tenths. What in the world has gone on with the group? They were up by 13 plus seconds. No, oh, dearie me, for Simza Esports, it's all come crumbling down. The gap has been shot down right here by Phoenix Racing Esports Green. I wonder what's happened. We saw them systematically lose a lot of time, Simza Esports, but just in a matter of minutes, that gap of eight seconds has been cut down to only four tenths of a second. Now, we said this at the very start, Justin, it's a long race. No lead is unassailable. No position is completely secured until the very end. This is where it all comes true. I don't know if something's been going on with the drivers or their main driver was that good. But if their main driver is that good, you start panicking now. Because you mentioned Phoenix Racing and their experience. They're going to have to try and hold on. Roberto Eduardo is going to have a handful. Of it. It's the third driver they've now used this race alone after only one stint for the previous driver, mind you. I don't know if this is going to play out like it was because... Obviously, the setup's good, but the drivers need to figure out what their main driver was doing and catch up and quick because the traffic has been killing them. And when they started off the race, the traffic is where they gain time, like here. Isn't that just insurance racing being insurance racing? Because even in the real world, we have three different classes of drivers platinum yeah. gold silver bronze and all that no. okay you know for a fact that a platinum or a gold driver is going to do what they're going to do they're going to be consistent they're going to be doing the same lap times silver yeah more or less there are going to be a few variances left and right but the bronze drivers is where you win or lose your race i'm not saying robert edward is a bad driver but it certainly seems like he's lost a fair bit of time to phoenix racing i'm sure he'll be able to catch things up later on it's looking a bit bleak right now for him. But I, this is where you win or lose, essentially. I wouldn't necessarily say he's a bad driver either. He's a fairly solid driver based on the experience I've seen from him. The main thing is, Gustav's when Burgess just pulled that car that much further and put that pressure on him and Reinhardt when you're thinking about this. Now, guess what? It's tight. Really tight. And now it's not as easy as it was before. That whole cushion they work for is gone. And the main difference all I can think of at the same time here, Samil, is just traffic management isn't as good hmm. for some of the drivers. They haven't reached the traffic as well as they they started with. And guess what? It's cost them. 
some cases. Well, if you want for numbers, folks, oh, man, the I one second. Pardon me to cut in. No Apparently, worries. the eight car is having to serve a penalty, and guess what? They've been warned over the radio that they need to serve a penalty this lap, or else they will be done. Ring visit sim racing LMP2 with drama. The monkey on the back has to be shaken off in this very lap. But what's it all about, Justin? Oh my dear me, we'll cut to that later on because the battle for the lead is going on right now. Phoenix Racing Esports 3 in Athlon Shimon taking risks and getting the blunge in. Christopher Monser takes the lead for Phoenix Racing Green. Is this the defining moment of the race? It's the first lead change that we've had all day. Who knows? Could be the defining one. I think they actually clipped the grass in Blanchemont. They were trying to take a run so big. But now, Simsa Esports will have the chance to draft back. They just need to nail the run up through the, soul, out, up through, up the hillside, rather. This time, through El Rouge and Upradion, they are not close enough to be able to pounce back here. And this is pivotal for Phoenix Racing Esports screen. This is where they stretch their legs and maintain that gap. Because although Sims Racing Esports have come back, they're not so close to make a move. And if they can do something in the middle part of the circuit, if they can bring their gap up in the corners, essentially, they've got all the things locked in for at least quite a while. Now, coming back to the number eight, why have they got the penalty then? That's something that really puts Un Unsafe me. rejoin and oh. it's gone to where the, the race control, the way it works is they verbalize through to the specific team managers the penalty out of the sim and they have to serve it within three laps. Because the eight car hasn't come in to serve it, they've been black flagged now in the sim what? to mandate they have to come down. Wow. That's understandable because they were told several times, Samil, to come in, that number eight. Now, they're going to have to come in. And that's going to be a bit more of a heftier penalty from ignoring the initial calls. And that happened in an incident with Valkyrie E-Racing Green. Reinhard Heibel behind the wheel of that car. That is where the unsafe rejoin took place. And now, as Justin mentioned, that penalty will definitely have to be served by them as they come up. A couple of drivers locking up at the background, as I say, at the bus stop chicane. But nevertheless, all safe and easy, all safe and clean. And we are seeing a couple of LMP2 cars also in the pit lane in the form of the Progressive Sim Racing Alpha and the Fit Fuel Racing Team. But how does this change things then, you ask? Ring Wizard Sim Racing Team, LMP2, they were in P4 in the category. Now that they take the penalty, they are going to be dropping back way, way down because that pit lane is a properly long one. Full pit stop behind, right? And that's going to really hurt him. And the main thing is, though, we'll tell you a word, he is still within range two on screen here. The problem is, he's now feeling exactly what Phoenix Racing Esport Green had at the start of the race where they lost four seconds in the full draft from traffic like this early on. They're getting it right back. And now, if you're Simza, you have to start calculating and planning things about here. Wouldn't be surprised to see some strategy come into play when these cars have to duck down in about 30 minutes or so to be able to try and swing this back and hope for the best. Yup, they've got to swing and swing hard in this one. See if it works out in their favor. They will be losing time, yes, definitely. But there's still a long way to go in this race and yeah, it's become a bit of a staple. You can take a shot every time I say this one thing, but absolutely something very significant still to consider. So we have a new leader then. Phoenix Racing Esport Green Team seizing control at the very top and yes, not letting it go. That's the critical bit because Sims Esports had a couple of opportunities to fight back. Not quite happening then. Oh dear me, they're looking for something risky at Blanchemont by trying to pass the other car. And actually, we can come back to the whole debate that we had about sim racing on the broader perspective, Justin. And I, I know you very keenly follow other esports as well. And one of the esports have grown to a much more broader perspective into 
the mainstream and to the mass scale. Now, what do you think we can do in esports, in sim racing rather, to bring it to that level? Say, like games like Dota or Counter Strike have done. I think, first of all, just the momentum of it. And I'm not just talking about, say, battles for P7 where you're looking for momentum as a driver. I'm talking about momentum of the investment, momentum of the engagement, hmm. of the fan investment. All of that has to keep on getting better and better, to say the very least. Also, you have to keep in mind the amount of respect and how do I phrase this? Integrity, as well as credibility, is the key word, has to come into play. You can't have tons of mistakes, stuff you could, you could have happen in some events, to be quite frank, five years ago, or two years ago even, or last year, or even earlier this year, you can't have happen as a brand. Yeah. All of that has to be mitigated and fixed and i don't mean just put in a band-aid i mean full-on invested in improving it and listening to your fans and growing your fan base if you are a platform especially in sim racing in general i'm talking about in general in the sim race community the main thing as well is the drivers you have to be able to build your own brands and for some that's one of the difficult parts some of them have that difficultness of where they want to stay silent because they may, or that's probably not the best term, more so want to be more background or quiet, so to speak, in terms of social media presence and branding. That's something that a lot of the teams at the pro level now require you to do, where some have to stream, some have to tweet X amount of times a day. It's been talked about for real world drivers. That's what they have to do, right? They have three yeah. tweets a day, etc. I think all of that is part of the crucialness of giving credibility to sim racing in general, especially on the iRacing platform, to be able to keep the momentum going. Speaking of momentum, Absolute Motorsport Ace Lib Design closing up on the Albrecht Motorsports BMW Z4. That's a very good point that you mentioned right there about having that big social media presence because so many of the top esports gamers, uh, let's say, let's call it that, but athletes, they do maintain a strong presence online. Oh, let's get back to that later on because Albrecht Motorsport had a bit of a Larry moment on the exit. Not something that you would expect from BMW Z4 GT3, but nevertheless, it opened the door for the Absolute Motorsport car. They could have gone for something, but again, that would have been far too risky. Part of Dicey can't send 50-50 moves at La Source, especially when you're that close to each other and especially when you're at this crucial juncture of the race. Oh, Absolute Motorsport are going to look for something around the outside, which they do. That Audi is a beast at Spa Francorchamps. We saw that the last time out at the iRacing Spa 24 hours. We saw that at Petit Le, Petit Le Mans a couple of weeks ago as well. But with no BOP, everything is levelling out. and. Just causing a bit of trouble to the faster cars coming in from behind. The Audi is trying to seize the opportunity from this one. He had the nose up ahead briefly as we come to its no-name corner. And the BMW is forcing him to go the long way around, which is what he should be doing. So, top level, top tier defensive driving that's going on right here, Justin. But the third sector is where things can really materialize right here. This made a three-car battle, in fact, that is for position with a 235 of the backdrop. But it's exactly what I talked about a little bit earlier. You have a faster car go, takes the preferred racing line, just try and follow the hole and be able to dive down and get side by side. That's what he done. The problem is, is with the switchbacks. There's, some of these cars are going through the marbles right now. That just kicked the BMW into the oh. marbles and off the track. An absolute travesty for the BMW. They lose up a huge amount of time. And critically, momentum heading off from Bloshimo. This is where the Audi should pounce and capitalize. And guess what? They have done just that. Just completely hit the marbles on the left side of the racetrack right there. That's why Mateus Kraus went that wide out of that section. Just sailed him off to the sand with the left side tires. And guess what? 
because that Audi was right in that spot. That's the preferred line instead. Give it a pounce, and now he's got the spot, and guess what? The BMW is busy now with Michael Jones to try and fight for P8 as a result. Yep, everything is busy right here. If you make a mistake, you get thrown on to the car behind. The gaps are just that good. Team race kidder Dot E Michael Yost behind the wheel. We are riding on board with him right now. Seeing him close up to that number eight car. Of course, lots of time on the clock. Six tenths of a second the gap between the race kidder car and they are closing up to the P8 machine of Albrecht Motorsport. Matthias Krauss is behind the wheel of that BMW, the one that just made the mistake early on. They'll be wanting for some salvation as the swings goes on. It's been a quiet race, I have to say, for the race getter machine, as that's not going to help them into the marbles. What in the world was that move? That was a half a lane off the bottom line, at least, for Daniel Schnorr. In the 123, that was, that was the car with the technical issues before. And we are also hearing that there was a blackout for one of the Absolute Motorsport cars, one of their other machines. Ah, uh, well, that is something that just comes to haunt you in a situation like this one. Yeah, it's iRacing. They're not going to be nuts and bolts failing. There are not going to be pistons that start misfiring. Yes, if you misdrive the car, the gearbox yeah. could fail, the engine could drop off. But these sort of things do come back to haunt you, do they? These are our yeah. technical issues. That would maybe explain why they dropped from P3, right? Yeah. If they had a blackout, you kind of can't drive if you have no power as a competitor. <laughs> well, that I don't think they're laughing, but absolutely just heartbreaking for them. And now it's like we've seen before, recovery drive. That puts an arrow layer to this fight we're talking about and see. Because now they're just needing to break away and I hope they can get to the next cars up in front. They were in one of the prize positions before. Yep, that's what happens. Technical issues on this side of things. There's not much you can do in a case like this one, except for scamper about, come back to the track very quickly. Try to make sure that the things are correct. In fact, uh, from, this is what I remember from last year as well, because it just happened at this very circuit. Uh, in the actual Spa 24 hours, Team Redline, Max Verstappen was driving, and his pedals failed while he was leading. And that's just the kind of thing that happens, right? Technical issues while you're sim racing. So he quickly had to phone up his other team members, had to quickly swap around, get a driver change in, in an emergency. It, it's not the same as a blackout. Yes, a blackout is a lot more scary, for sure. But that's what you can do in this case. You just have to be very close as a team unit to get situations like these solved in a matter of minutes. And easier said than done, for sure. But that's what happens in our racing. Some things can go wrong. Well, let's hope that this battle is uninterrupted, very clean, very precise. Valkyrie Racing Green in the Corvette, closing up to Prism Sim Racing Alpha in the Porsche. And how many times have we seen a Corvette fight against Porsche here today? It's been a fair few, let's call it that way. Say the real ladies. Porsches have been very competitive today. Some of the Corvettes have done pretty well. I think the Porsche, though, has gotten some of the upper hands outside of HM Engineering today in terms of the culinary. It's been a constant threat for some of the top runners, but there's also been good parity, really, actually, because it's kind of gone a checkerboard of positioning. It just seems like it's down to team preference because the differences in straight line speed and corner speed balance it out. Ooh. Exactly. Uh, exactly, it just, just depends on what you like more as a driver, what you feel more comfortable with. I mean, personally, if I was racing, I would take the BMW Z4 because it's a lot more stable, right? That's what suits my style. But some drivers say, you know what, I can take the risk. I can go for the much twitchy Audi because why not? I can make it work. It purely depends on that perspective. But you don't sadly have that choice in LMP2s yet. Yes, of course, you want to go for the HPD, which is an old machine in comparison to this one. But yes, the Delara, a popular choice. It's growing in popularity as time goes on. And 
of course it's come at the right time because i racing lots of people are taking interest into endurance racing with the whole lockdown thing coming into perspective globally people are diverting to watching these kind of endurance races and so naturally people want to compete in this they want to drive so this one yep. has been a very popular machine hasn't it it's part of iRacing's growth too to be quite frank but as well though that's also been the growth of this year is the viewership has gone up for these types of races the fan engagement has gone up in a lot of these races I think back last year some of the pro events average say towards the 100s it's, they picked up 50 to 100 percent double if not tripled in some cases lots of the fans have kept very entertaining and very engaged for this race alone yeah. this is about to get in a very engaging fight though because these two have been attached to the hip all day the 77 and the 40. we talked about it's hard to break away they just can't seem to break away period there was a seven second longer pit stop by the way for the 40 in their stints compared to the 77 and hello and bye bye it's the pass yep, we won't mind them being very close to each other but what the 40 would mind is being attacked from behind again not for position the number 11 car is way far behind that is the progressive sim racing alpha machine but nevertheless it does hamper your momentum to a certain degree uh, meanwhile race union we've had a bit of a tricky race so far they had that bizarre incident they are in the pit lane yet again so uh, i wouldn't be very surprised because we're reaching the top of the hour and there's only three minutes left but uh, what's rather bad justin is because that the last time out they were in the pit lane at an hour and one minute 50 seconds to go this time it's an hour and four minutes so it's certainly been a bit of bad fuel saving going on for them that they've had to come a bit too early on curious decision to go one lap earlier and we've seen some of the difficulties for marvin at the start of his last stint he's double stinted the tires as well so that's something I think now the drivers that he works with will have to take into account is that extra lap and it because if it happens again is the main king thing Samil that's where you start worrying as a team because then the next driver will have to save a little bit harder to be able to get them back on track for the yeah. end of the race but there are certain drivers and certain teams that are pretty good at saving uh, it may sound a bit odd the racing drivers here how are they saving fuel but no, it's pretty significant and there are some drivers who just know the art of lifting and coasting at the right time saving the right amount of fuel just being very gentle and caressing the tires as they go past not exploiting and assaulting them and those sort of drivers are often the ones that win you endurance races if you are going for an alternate strategy but of course these days endurance racing has changed in real life it's become more of a 24-hour sprint but nevertheless you do have to do things like that when you're off the guard aren't, aren't, i mean when you're away from it when you're not doing the base strategy that everyone is that's when these drivers show their worth absolutely see that strategy coming to play for some of these groups and that's where the calculations come in you calculate the amount of time you can go see how long you can go as a group but as also it also in some groups goes even further than that you're calculating the exact fuel burn you're as talked about trying every single type of car you're trying different setups you're trying different strategy stints you're seeing if a triple stint works you're seeing if a quadruple stint works you're seeing how tire strats work you're timing out how you're going to get the driver swaps to work all it down to the minute in some cases some of the big teams have their own strategists sitting with them and we're calculating all of this and feeding that information to the drivers so they keep that in mind for some teams there's also the importance though for groups such as this maybe or the up-and-comers where you need to have not just the driving knowledge but the setup knowledge and the strategy knowledge to actually be quick because it's on i racing not as simple as you sit in a steering you sit with the wheel and you're quick if you're in yeah. an open competition you have to be not just quick to be able to be at the best of the, at your level but also know how to build your car and utilize it to the best of your ability it's pretty interesting we are what 
three hours into this race and we haven't spoken about setups yet. So that, that's the first in any endurance racing, and any endurance race that I've done at least, because we often tend to come to that very early on, but that just shows how good the action has been right here. So pit stops are essentially happening in GTEs. So HM Engineering have changed the driver. Anton S. Gulick is behind the wheel. Prism Sim Racing Alpha is on your screens. They've come back out where they were. Again, the Ferraris will go a lot longer in this case as well, yet again. So, things are working out that way. But there's Bentley Golds, online simracing.de, Ring Fizzard. These guys haven't bid it yet, while all of the others have. So watch out for them as they cycle out rather soon eventually. And Bentley Golds, as it stands, are your leaders. So, who knows, they might end up registering a lap as the leader of this race. So, that'll be first in the GTE category. Possibly here. Car looks a little bit worse for wear, should know, with the bit of that damage I believe we just seen in, might have been an illusion. But, yes, actually it is significant There is damage. damage, yeah. Yeah, that was an illusion. I thought I seen that at first glance. Something's been going on with some of these cars. There are pit stop stints I'm looking at here that are up to two minutes for some of these drivers all of a sudden. Now that's very interesting. Damage on the fenders of the Corvette. Now they do have a straight line advantage, mind you, but nevertheless, this will be hindering them down. I wonder where it's come from. But even if it's come from some mysterious place that we don't know, it will still be hurting them just that bit. So Bentley, Bentley Gauze, I beg your pardon, were in a pretty decent position before the pit window too, and they shall be cycling out, say around P3, P4. Yeah. So not too bad, but still better from an issue. I think it's been there for a while at the very minimum. Just looking back, yeah, it's been there for a bit. I think it was because, though, when looking back at the tape, Stage 1 Racing Black was the trigger point. Hmm. And I believe that may have triggered an earlier penalty. So that's where now the frustration is going to settle in a little bit. But now you have to let yourself calm down. Your team members have to calm you down and help you focus. Because if you think back to that moment now, since we're about two stints in, you have to just keep on pressing forward and fix what you can during your pit stop stints, if you can. They're in a good spot. That's the thing, With the, despite the damage. It's going to hurt their pace. It has been hurting their pace a little. But I don't know if, as a group, you can afford to panic about it for the next few hours, if you already panicked about it even more so, especially or keep on panicking about it or harping upon it because yeah. guess what you harp on upon it you're basically going to be stuck running in place so to speak pit stop for the number 64 lmp2 machine it's a bit of out of schedule this one they've come in either a bit too early for me a bit too late so that's what's happening on the lifetime in ws racing esports magenta are the ones we are chatting about right here as the Valtteri e-racing green machine closes up to the prism sim racing alpha so everyone virtually everyone on the lmp2 field has taken four stops but for some reason the ws team are coming in yet again they are in p number eight pitted from p number six at the beginning let's see how they cycle out towards the end and why did they come in the pit lane but nevertheless this is what we should keep our eyes on this battle in the GTE category between Valtteri E Racing Green and Prism Sim Racing Alpha. And, and while we focus on GTEs, Justin, I think we can just put out this very good piece of conversation about what's happening later on because now factory teams are withdrawing their efforts in GTEs in real life. Porsche have pulled out of Windsor, BMW have done the same, Ford have let's say he said that we're not going to continue for far longer than this one as well and Corvette are also not competing in WEC now so uh, with the whole pandemic striking and with car companies not selling as many cars essentially it's hurting them big time and even DTM right now Audi and BMW have essentially said bye-bye we're going to pull out and they are going to have a GT3 hybrid sort of category GT3 plus but when you see things going for GTEs essentially because now factory support is becoming ever so lower and the grid sizes in most of these championships are diminishing, depleting most of the time. I'll be quite honest, it's a little bit above my pay grade for some of that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it's 
just part evolution of the sport and you need to adapt and that's one of the main things is the costs yeah or just continue to skyrocket i think it's just 2020 accelerated to be quite frank but yeah. everything else when you think about it this is one of the ways to help with the cost and is simulations such as i racing if you're a team because it can cost a lot to go to a real world track and test and test and test there when you can just test from your home yeah like we talked about to be quite simply frank the race environment has changed a lot over the past few years especially especially with the rise in sims but Things are getting interesting on this racetrack are hearing there the 210 apparently. Something to keep an eye on there, Samil. What's going on with him? Yep, 210, uh, Max Dunhurt has made his way into the pit lane. So that is for another stop. I'm not quite sure if it's very late or something because most of the GT3s have done three stops. One of them have done two. That is the Rain Fizzard Sim Racing GT3 Pro car. So, surely something that have that I've lapsed in concentration on. But no, uh, Wolf Motorsport Sim Racing making a stop at this stage of the race. Why nobody else is making a stop for GT3. So that's something to keep a keen eye I, on for them. I mean to kind of react that. I mean, they have been pinning for a couple laps. And we talked yeah. about this. There is the overlap with the GTEs that comes in. So there is the chance they can blend on in like that, absolutely. It's just the stint totals have varied for some of the teams, it seems. Some have gone 25, some have been able to go 24, some have gone 26, some are just the GTEs. But it's been more spread out apart with some of that. And in turn, it's bunched up, the strategies. Take, for example, these two. This is the battle going on for curling 9th and 10. Two lap difference on the strats. By the way, the car that made the pass is the one that is currently on the longer strap or the older tires or older or older fuel rather in the strap yep so we've been made albrecht motorsports into p number nine matthias cross behind the wheel of that car nice and clean keeping it all easy making sure that at this stage of the race they don't crash they don't collide they have to do everything with great precision at this stage of course a lot going on across the circuit in each of these categories three categories racing here of course if you're just joining us lmp2s gtes and gt3s big difference between both of these final ones they may look similar in nature but the gap per lap is quite huge and speaking of the GT gtes here they are on screen right now prism sim racing alpha still Still defending from Valkyrie E-Racing Green. And the last time I remember, this same battle had been going on for, what, an hour or something? Welcome to I-Racing once again. But just part of the ups and flows of the race. The main thing I'm more thinking about is, with them still being bumper to bumper, yes, and all this, with some of the traffic breaking this up a little bit by a few tenths, is keep in mind your overall race lead was only a few tests a little while ago. The part that's making me pull my hairs out is, if you're Simza, how do you lose 13 seconds in a stint even with the traffic? That yeah. is absurd. That is absurd in the LMP tubes right now. With some of this thick traffic, yes, it's been thick. But you don't lose 14 seconds even. Now it is. In a stint, it doesn't add up to lose that much time in 12 laps. If there's anything I can say for that, it's just that we've seen this before. Because Simza, they had a 13 second gap early on, and they lost that gap, and here they are losing 13 seconds again in a stint. That's the thing that drives me crazy, is well, we still follow along with the battle, still with these cars here on screen with the pull too far back to make the lunge shooter. If you are right now, Valkyrie. That was over the course of two or three stints before. This is in one stint. Yeah. That's where it's so crazy to see that in some of these cars just have been that held up to where Phoenix Racing has just been able to time it up much better than what. Roberto Edward has been able to do this entire stint, which is crazy. 
Yeah. That, and that's the bizarre thing. And when we were seeing Simza, I mean, I remember in the early stages of the race, we were singing praises and saying, yeah, that they've pulled out a huge gap. It's, it's going to be very difficult to close that up. But something's changed so quickly and I don't know what that is. Uh, it's hard to say that. And even the fans in the grandstand right here seem to be a bit puzzled about that. But, oh, it's a bit bizarre. Is it just Simza losing time yeah. unusually or Phoenix being just too good? See the differences here on the side by sides. I the pace when they're in clean space has been near even, I've noticed. I think it's again, as I talked about, traffic management has been crucial. And for Phoenix Racing, they have the weaker spot early on compared to Sims's driver at the time. Now Christoph Montz has the upper hand in that regard, and it's now given Phoenix Racing Esport Green a massive, massive bump. And from what I can remember, I don't even remember Simza Esports making any major mistakes in traffic. Yes, there was one at Puhon where they ran slightly wide and a couple of GT3 cars involved. But no, how can you lose 30 seconds in a matter of a couple of stints without making any significant errors? Is something that baffles me. And uh, they, they must be double stinting, surely, because everyone is in the LMP2 category too. But it's just something very, very strange. We, so it's hard to even pick out any differences between the drivers because, I mean, if the numbers are to be looked at in this particular case, Christoph Monser in the Phoenix Racing Esports car, the leading one, has an I rating of 4,403. Whereas. Hold on. Pardon me to break up the conversation here. Some of the cars, I think, are starting to have uh -huh. some problems here. The 77, I believe, just lost a bit of time with the bit of an off track. And pit stops are underway as well. So that's also to think about here is wow, they now point the strategy in grouping such as this. By the way, that eight car is closing in with a couple seconds here. Let's take a look, and yes, indeed, that's exactly what I thought I seen. Oh, oh man, Wolf Motorsport Sim Racing Loopers just being caught up in the whole protracted drama that's going on between the LMP2s. And look at this, Dirna Motorsport also blocking the other car behind him. And naturally, of course, you have to defend your position after coming from something like that. And yeah, look at this. So everything finally come until this happens. So, yes, the GT3 car has to concede the position. Yes, they have to give space, but I'm not sure they can do something like that at this corner. But no, there's a flip argument that says that they'll be getting blue flags constantly being waved around and there'll be a symbol on their high racing screen saying blue flag, move side, faster car is coming, but I guess they just caught them in the wrong place. And then you have the 11 car from Progressive Sim Racing Alpha just saying, come on, I'm going to the room, trying to check up, not run into the back of them and get damage to his car and can't take advantage of that quite yet. And this is all well, mind you, they have to pit this lap. This is the worst yes. timing possible for all this. Well, in a way, it's pretty fine because they don't have to carry the damage around for a long, long time. But yes, the damage gap has been neutralized effectively. And the 77 has come back, uh, come in rather, in P number 5. And uh, even with the penalty for the Rangers at Sim Racing Team, Justin, they are still fourth. I remember the number 8 had a bit of penalty early on. Indeed. And... They only went 13 laps after the penalty, believe, as well. So that's impressive, I guess, to say the least. But double stinting on the tires, it looks like still. That still is in a real reasonable situation because, as I said, track temp is dropping. It's dropped four degrees Fahrenheit for reference sake since the past hour and a half. So the window to do it is still open. And everyone's taking that chance. They aren't even going on the jacks and taking the extra 20 seconds, some of these cars. Yeah. Yeah, they're quite clear in terms of what they want to do in this particular case. They have been practicing all this in the leading up. East to know what works, know what doesn't. In all the conditions right now, it's just about trying to bring aside any variances. Just trying to make sure that you're as certain as possible. And whatever you do, just keep it a very standard race. A very dull and boring one. Because that's what gives you. But, oh! There is someone going on the jacks. They're the only one going on the jacks, it looks like. 
outside of the 64 in the entire top six. So that's an interesting decision here. A lot of the others just decided to double stint. I think maybe the part of the reason is, yes, they switched the driver. Yes. Dominic Spicker, Spicker rather, is now in the car. So that explains that. Everyone else, though, in turn, will have to take it, and they'll be able to double stint the next time. Okay, so... Have they changed tires or have they not? I think they would they have, right? They changed because, tires. They changed yeah. tires if they're on the jacks. Yeah, so it just fits in with the driver swap time as well. So now, this should be a fun one. Keep an eye on the trip no, number 77 during the Motorsport Club EV car. Race Sport TV slash Endurance is where you get the live timing so you can keep a keen eye on them. Right now, they are in P number 8. I'll be keeping a keen eye on what their lap times are going to be because they've got fresh rubber. Now, closely, they can close everything up. And now, Valkyrie e Racing Green. Ah, oh, here we go again. Still fighting with Prism Sim Racing Alpha. What's yep. it like? Round 7, 8, 9? Give or take, and hearing as well that Prism had also tried a triple stint for comparison's sake of the OMV2. So, the strategy card. Something we haven't really seen too, too much from that car quite yet in its short history on the service is coming into play. But still, for Valkyrie, what a try for them to claw their way right up to the 113 here. To be able to close on in and get up to where they are in this race. Plus four, one of the biggest movers in their class today. Yep, they've been gaining, they've been working hard, they've been trying to make something work and make something happen for them and thankfully. It has been that way. It's a tough race, this one. It's long, it's arduous, challenges you mentally, physically, just sitting in the same place for a long, long time. And yeah, you might say, have the comfort and luxury of your home. You can have some drinks, not alcoholic ones, but just refreshments. You can't take long on a long straight or something quite like that. But still, sitting in one place, which is such a long time for a long stint, does tie you out beyond the point and so for these drivers it is as much of a race of endurance as it would be in the real life yes no g-forces for sure but it's still pretty pretty darn tiring but justin i want to know your take on the very same thing as we see the wolf motorsport sim racing lupus car that got caught up in all the drama and the mess early on limping back to the pit lane oh they've been caught up in more drama then again they just can't again. catch a break with these they just turn across an LMP2's nose. Oh, it's not the same one, thankfully. <laughs> That's T3 Esports there. I don't know what they were thinking there, to be quite frank. They were thick in traffic, yes, but there was no way they were going to have space here. Take a look at this. T3 Esports is probably thinking they're going to give get given the bottom line because they're already on the top. They've already had oh. the checkup once. Then they just oh. turn down. No. Just turn down. Just complete brain fade. This is... Oh, I don't know. This is what happened. This is just the dark side of multi-class racing. It, it happens all the time, right? Uh, multi-class racing is all fun and games. It's all beautiful until there's a great degree of mutual respect. And I'm sure there is mutual respect between those drivers. But sometimes there's just a lapse of concentration and you can't quite know where the car is. I think they maybe thought they were going to be checking up and letting them regroup for the corner. That's the only thing I can think of. But even then, that doesn't make sense with an LMP2 right there. So, okay, the consequence, I guess. Still, though, for Valkyrie e Racing, nice and comfortable. Yep. They're all settled in. They'll be getting their hot chocolate ready. They'll be having a bit of fun then. Now, I wonder how good the hot chocolate is at Spa Francorchamps in real life. I'll have to ask the folks at Mulder Motorsport because that's where their office is in Spa. Literally, right there at the circuit. Nevertheless, these guys are feeling nice and cozy, nice and warm. Just being next to each other. Of course, maintaining oh, there's social distancing. There's a crash going on in the middle of Puhan right now. The 182 just got doored by somebody trying to let people go. I believe he got doored by the Austrian Sim Racers. Yes, Thomas Pebor ended up hitting him. Remember, JMS Racing was that car demolished about two hours ago. And right here, take a look. They stay on the right side. They're all the way towards the top, and they still get hit. 
And it's the same class. It's not multi-class racing. JMS racing. Goodness me. Talk of having a bad day. That That's the not, second major incident. That's not for position, remember, with them being multiple laps down, but they're all the way at the very edge of the race limits. I'm not sure where the 137 expected them to go. I don't know if they expect them to go off the track, but they just took way too much speed like they weren't even going to be there. Time does its thing, and quite often moments like this just end up being more and more frequent. What? How many times have we seen an incident quite like that at Puhon Hill? How many times have we seen just such a lapse in concentration? Just, in, just a lack of awareness. And no, it's not easy by any means whatsoever, knowing where everyone is when you're trying to lap as fast as you possibly can. But still, hard stuff. And it's not working out in anyone's favor this way. It's just becoming a race of attrition. Everyone being wrecked out, everyone having damage in the long run. It just literally, literally ruins the race for so many people. Number 277, though, not so much for them. They had their students there back on track right now. P number 8 for them. And Justin, their gap. Look at that. 23 seconds for Simsa. That gap has increased by 10 seconds again. And now, a long break for the number 23 car says it's primarily traffic. Why that's happened? Yeah, I, I understand that a lot of it probably was and is definitely traffic, but they lost three seconds of the pits. They haven't had to deal with traffic much this stint. This is unbelievable. Eight tenths slower last time by, for comparison's sake. The average lap times are eight tenths off the pace the past five laps. That includes, mind you, with the pit stop window, etc. Yeah. It's just, wow. Just absolutely wow. On the right side, P6 is close. Yep, P6 is close as it always has been from the very beginning. Again, uh, one of those cars not fighting for position. That's that's the Durana Motorsport Club. EV in P number seven. Closing up to the Mool the Mool Sport Sim Racing Pro Machine. Robert Kunkis is behind the wheel of that one. Oh, he's going to the outside. Oh, oh they touch. Oh my goodness me, he is absolutely livid with the Mulder Motorsport car. They made contact at the exit of Puhon. Could have been far worse. Hell, one car could have been in the barriers. Thankfully, they're all on the track, but the temperatures are rising and the rage is also rising alongside with it. The fury is going up. Now look at this, the 77 wants revenge. It's double stinted. Remember, it has fresher rubbers. It's going four tenths faster than most of its com most of its competitors. Down the inside at Blanchemont, that's a risky move. And I think, Justin, more than just a fight for position, this for the 77 was a move for pride. That was the decision. I mean, I like the move originally from the 77 coming out of Puon. Pin, use the lap car as a pick, get to the outside, and then you make the easy move. You have the preferred racing line in turn and the closer to the bottom line. But I think the reason there was all this incident trouble is that 21 car for more Motorsport Sim Racing Pro didn't expect them to try and cut out for the pass and just doored them trying to get around the lap car, not expecting to have that being used as a pick of the time. And now you have tempers flurry, and now they're going to have to try and regroup here, especially since. They just get an air position on the pylon because the 40 just had to make an unscheduled stop here with some trouble for them yeah. on the penalty pylon, possibly. Yep, Mortal Racing Esports have had a bittersweet day so far, involved in all the battles all the way through. Why, oh why, are they on the pit lane again? So the penalty sheet says, no, it's not because of me. There is a reason why the Mortal is yeah. right there. They actually are coming in to serve, to come in at least to the pit box. So, Pascal Beach sacrificing the spot, but now this 21 car you're on board with, Robert Kunkus, just cannot get a rhythm in. They've actually pulled the driver from the number 40 just now. The number 40 now has made a driver swap out of nowhere. Pascal Freeze having problems. They put in a third driver just now. I wonder why that is happening. We saw a few teams change drivers 
unexpectedly because of connection issues, but I'm sure this has to be something different because the 40 team looked rather fine. They weren't blinking about. They weren't having major issues in that regard. Why have they swapped their drivers? Is it just a lack of confidence? That had to be something equipment issue or something personal for that to be having to come into play after a few laps. That may be enough time to feel if there's something wrong with the car or not, not so much the car, but with your steering wheel. Heck, one of the events I worked on last weekend, actually a couple days ago, I should say, someone's steering wheel caught on fire during the what? race. Yes. Are you kidding me? Their steering wheel caught on fire and they had to park the car. They no longer have a steering wheel. That stuff can happen. It's happened in these 24 hour events before where people have broken their steering wheels off the bars. People have broke their pedals. A couple of years ago, that came into play at this track to say the very least with Max Verstappen. That all can just happen. And you need to be prepared for the unexpected if you were a driver. At the very least, they were able to make it to the pit lane. They remember they let people go before. So something must have been going on for them to have to make this call. Yep, something must be going on, definitely. And with the steering wheel incident, oh, look at this. I'll come to that later on because this is the closest the Valkyrie E Racing Green has been. Reinhard Heibel behind the wheel of that Corvette. He's a good driver. I've watched him race in a fair few TCR races, but this is no front wheel drive race car. This is a mid engine V8 Corvette beast. It's up against quite. A Porsche Porsche as well in the 113 machine. Of course, as Justin mentioned earlier on, you do tag on to a couple of cars here and there and you just stay with them for a long, long time. That's what's happening with these guys and that Ferrari that you see up ahead in the GTE category. Not for position, so nothing to worry about for him. Big lock up as we go into La Source and yes, he's purely moving out of the way, but things can happen, right? Uh, whenever you think about equipment failures, I mean, it'll be one, if you had a recording of that, it'll be one very fun one for the blue career, but the next morning he'll be crying because you have to spend so much money on a wheel yet again, and that's your race gone. It's very tragic when something like that happens. Back racing green, though, they want to capitalize on this. At last, making a move on that Porsche for position, and they're celebrating. Well, hey, flashing of the lights. They finally got past that Porsche yet again. Brilliant. Brilliant indeed. Just timed it up perfectly to use the 11.9 SimSport as the pick as well. And now they just have to try and pull off it away with the LMP2. Blinking their lights in. Please move. Fashion. You blink lights for everything. Let's put it that way on my racing. But to get back to the task at hand. If you have an equipment failure, that's the tough part. Is the financial replacement is, yes, you can get... Go to the store, pick up a new steering wheel from, best, say, Best Buy for a few hundred bucks, and you can pick it up. But you want to, as a driver, have the right mix of comfortability, performance, and cost effectiveness. And for some, it can take months to replace the equipment. Personally, we were talking about this before today. I had a clutch pedal on my main pedals go out. And that may not sound like a big thing, because it's more so on the oval side, but here's the thing. Guess what happens when you're under caution on the oval side? You clutch and coast and turn off the engine, say fuel. You can't do that? Say you're in a fuel mileage race, you're in trouble. Also, the previous pedal set before that, brake issues. Couldn't get consistent brakes, and obviously you can't have, if you don't have consistent brakes, guess what? You're likely sliding into the car in front of you, say if you're in a battle such as this. In other words, Equipment is so crucial to maintain and have functioning properly. And to yeah. be able to replace it can take a lot of stress out of you and take a lot of time to be able to get everything proper. I think equipment in the best of ways is just like a fixed overhead, right? Now, in terms of managing a business, yes, your overheads are always going to be there. You don't, you're going to be paying for it every single month. But when something goes wrong, when your overheads rise, that's when it's a cause for concern. Usually, it's just there. You expect it to be there. You expect your equipment to be by your side to support you all the way through. But when it goes wrong, oh, it's an unexpected cost. 
and not all of us are as fortunate to keep on replacing our equipment very frequently without bearing a great financial brunt on the personal expenses and yeah it just impacts you as a driver too if you can't get the same wheel of course wheels are different we'll come to that later on but german performance sim racing in the alvi battling against the Mulder motorsport sim racing black this is one battle i've been wanting to see for a long long time and finally it's materializing German performance of course starting in P number five they've made their way up one position they are fighting against this BMW the good fight for the top positions in the GT3 category that let's take this to a more lighter route in fact well what's one of the more bizarre things that you've seen happen with drivers Justin in any race that you've commentated on I mean in, in one of in one of the races that I was working on a driver was leading a Formula 3 race and he wanted to just configure something he wanted to I don't even remember he just changed the brake bias or something accidentally pressed the wrong button and had it configured to go back to his Windows home screen and pressed that button and lost the race because then his eye racing shot off I mean shifted the screen and he lost 40 odd seconds and crashed that's actually one of the worst case scenarios here Right now, this colorful car on the inside trying to take the best case scenario of this and might get this job done right here. Perfect maneuver for the most part and really close regardless. It's getting dicey though, really aggressive here with the OMP2 on the outside. The change for position, the Audi has moved past, the BMW was likely frustrated as everyone always is when losing a position so the Audi does move up into P number three that's the first time we've had any car apart from a BMW in the GT3 category up in the top three yeah, impressive impressive drive from that Audi to claw their way into contention for this class but they're gonna have to deal with someone much confident on the brakes and make oh. a mistake just clip the grass, big time mistake. They're trying to push on hard and back on the braking zone. You want to be aggressive, you want to attack the curbs in the middle segment. If you get on the cross, if you get on the curbs just a little bit too aggressively, the rear end will say, No, sir, my job for today is done. Thankfully, BMW is so stable to drive, it's kept it clean that way. Yeah, now I just oh. need to take a breath. Oh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Justin, but there's some news. The 40. Yeah. The 40 machine, that is the Mortal Racing Esports car. They had an unscheduled driver change, remember, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, seems like they had a completely damaged car, but no repair time. Why did that happen? Well, Mark Waite has very thankfully come on to the chat has, and to tell us more about that. He says... It seemed like Pascal ran, 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 ran hard over a curb and they got suspension damage but they didn't get any repair time in the pits. That's what he has to say. About that is weird. That is weird. Here's the thing with the curbing. It can happen. It happened at Le Mans. It's happened with this car today. It's happened for some of the events. You can get some floor damage on that car and you'll have to come in it's in some cases up to 30 seconds i've seen in the past but there'd be no time it had to be something minute or small enough to where by the time you actually looked up it was already done but that's the difference right with this type of car you damage the floor you lose that suspension and performance and it means you are essentially in trouble Yep, losing so much time in comparison to your competitors who will be the first people to bounce on. They see an opportunity, they strike. And Austrian sim racers rot can also strike right now should things work out well for them. Closing the gap, getting ever so closer to the Ferrari. Of course, the Ferrari far from competitive on the grand scheme of things, but nevertheless, the online sim racing.de car has been holding its own right slap bang in the midfield. So they're doing a decent job at the very top, but yeah, they could be could be swallowed up by the Austrian Sim Racers rock team with Thomas Bieber behind the wheel of that Porsche. Of course, a question coming in from Hydra.clan about what happened with Simza. And I think that's the same question that we've 
we were asking to ourselves, Hydra, sadly. Uh, what's just happened with Simza? That's the interesting thing. Because Simza were 13 seconds to the good before the first pit stops. Now the first round of pit stops. They were still fine around 8 odd second at the end of the second stint. But then, as soon as they changed drivers, something happened. And that 13 second gap was lost in a matter of minutes. Phoenix Racing took the lead. And they built up, take a breath, a gap of 26 seconds. What just happened with Simza? Still don't know. But the main thing is, though, for the Austrian sim racers, remember, they are trying to claw their way back from some time. They may have some reviews coming in, of course, with that contact with traffic. And all of this is getting tight still with some of this traffic to work around. Because I think if I'm them, I want to try and get this move done fairly quickly. Yes, strategy comes into play all the time. But you're talking about a car that ran up towards the front, was second much of the race, and then had trouble ensue. You do not want to have more trouble. You want to get as much time as you can before you lose any more of it, to be frank. Bizarre, bizarre things all around going on for Sims there. Now then, let's focus on something a lot more seen, a lot more normal, a lot more usual. Austrian sim racers got having a bit of an up and down race so far, closing on the online sim racing D machine in P number 6. Of course, you can see the draft coming into perspective. They will be getting closer by a couple of tens here and there, but seemingly not close enough. And oh, look at this one, Justin. Something very interesting from the LMP2. So while this GTE battle goes on, which we shall keep on running in the background because they, they can potentially get very close to each other. The number 77, during the Motorsport Club EV, the, the, the guys who double stinted the last time off, not double stinted, but single stinted, got fresher tyres in. So Dominic Spicker is clocking in lap times that are consistently two seconds faster than anyone around him. He fell down to around P number 8 after the pit stop and he's climbed back up to P number 6. Now, I don't quite remember where exactly he was when the pit window opened. But if my memory serves correct, he was somewhere around P number 5. So, the gap is certainly closing up. He's only got 19 odd seconds to make and the fact that he's going 2 seconds faster per lap and we still say, could I have, what, 5-6 odd minutes until the LMP2s get in the pit lanes is Impressive, to say the least, but not completely satisfying. If, of course, if they entered the pit window at P number five, which I'm not, not completely sure about. I should quickly check that out. Yeah. yeah, they also are in clean space too. That's also going to be helpful to them, and they're still having to close up a lot of time. But still, look at that! What in the world is that? Completely missed the breaking mark. The Austrian sim racers rot. Entering the bus stop chicane. Here comes the replay. Trying to, of course, to close into that Ferrari. Oh, oh. Trying to give space for the LMP2. And all of a sudden, they forgot that they had to break. Getting an incident point in. Yeah, it's not a major factor right now, folks. But come towards R20, 21, 22. And those incident points will feel like gold dust. As well as the time lost, right? Yeah. I I mean, I get part of it. He was probably trying to late break a bit, but there's late breaking, and then there's just completely trying to set it in full throttle and hope you stop with the brakes and somehow magically stop. <laughs> like, that wasn't even clipping the grass. That was just straight way, way, way too deep for him to try and even dare stick that. And guess what? It's going to take another few laps for him to have another shot again as a result. And he still, mind you, as our car's in... Oh. The adventures the 289 continue, it seems. Yep. Wicked wild ride in the Belgian forests for the 289. Why is it already bruised? No, no, it was bruised from the last contact, remember, at Blanchiment. Same thing again, Blanchiment, instead, instead of being on its own, a couple of other cars forced him pass through. Got what? jackaled in from both sides. Why were they running in the middle of the track is the bigger question here. That, yeah. that, was going to happen if you're running right there especially that case yeah just stick on one lane and a 
that's already a bruised car, isn't it? It's already got immense damage. So, so for the LMP2, there's always going to be that misjudgment because it's so fast at Blanchiment and that BMW just ends up hopping around like a... Like, like what? I don't even know. It's it's just something bizarre. It's so yeah. brutal. It's battered. It's damaged. It's... Sorry. I, I mean, give them credit. They've been trying to keep on going, getting all the repairs done. This is a good experience for their amateur drivers in that, or who, are, or rather their am drivers in general, I should rather say. But they're not making friends, let's put it that way. <laughs> it was to the yeah. point where you've seen those LMP2s going in the grass trying to pass them. And, and if there was another BMW, right? Another GT3 car that didn't yeah. quite get the best of it. No, the, the BMW. Yeah. Yeah, the second BMW went on the grass. I'm not quite sure who it was. An orange one, certainly. And they were able to stay away from all the damage. Let's call it that way. They kept it clean, thankfully. Could have been worse. A change of underpants, for sure. Had it been in real life, a bit less on the sim. Because the G-forces are not a significant factor. But nevertheless, the racing is real. The competition is real. And the intensity certainly is. Looking back then at your leader of this race. Phoenix Racing Esports screen, getting the green signal, getting the green flag, and they've just been going hammer and tong everywhere. They've chipped into that cap, and like a hard-working laborer working through the night, they've just taken the spin, and they've kept on hammering, and they've kept on hammering, 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 until that 13-second deficit has turned into a 30-second positive cap. And I remember, what, 10 minutes ago we spoke about Simsa, they have increased the gap by six seconds in that very margin. So, Christoph Monzer, what have you had for lunch, my man? <laughs> I have to say that whole team's quick. I yeah. when I first when I first seen them on the registry list, my thir first thought was we have to keep an eye on this organization's cars. You knew from your perspective their their experience. I knew yeah. from my perspective on the sim, they're very competitive when it comes to this type of car. They're showing that exactly today. And now, they've just taken off. There's a reason they've gained so much time when in open space. You can see on that time. They lose time, of course, with the travel. That's a given. But the main thing is, Christoph Maltz has just capitalized on open space much more compared to Simpson's car, who has been stuck in traffic and still has tons of traffic to deal with, including interlap traffic to deal with in the rest of the stint. And that has essentially been the difference between the two of them. Meanwhile, uh, now, this could just be my timing screen. But I still see the WS Racing Esports Magenta team. They just did. The they just did. Yeah, did. yeah. yeah. I, 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 it's a bit strange because the same thing happened, what, a few odd minutes ago, and my timing screen was showing that the last time out it was just my timing screen frozen. This time out, they have been for real. Yeah, that one's scheduled though, but the main thing is it's a difference in cycles because of some of the penalties, because of some of the bad luck for their group. That put that's putting them behind by five laps oh, and the main thing is those five laps can hurt them at the end of the race in my opinion yeah they're already back to p9 at the moment they've been floating around the middle of the team middle of the top 10 for much of this race by the way that p6 gap is already back down to under a second again so quite clearly Austrian sim racers bought just now after becoming a bit of a targetless torpedo at the bus stop chicane. They've certainly found their mojo back and the torpedo. Uh, I mean, they've turned from that into a full-blown guided missile with a target locked and set. No, this does not mean that they're going to hit the other car. Not putting any commentator's curse, mind you. But it just means that they have their eyes set on their target and they are doing a superb job of clawing their way back in. It's been a bit of an up and down race for Austrian sim racers. Rock sometimes in the top five, sometimes outside. This is more of the latter right now for them, but quite clearly the pace is there. But as we have spoken about time and again, just about minimizing those mistakes. Easier said than done. That's what we've got to do. Oh! Yeah, that is a little bit aggressive there. Justin John among the cars fighting for position and all this. 
Well, that's not a great way to come out of the pit lane. Let's put it that way if you're double S racing. Right in the middle of that traffic with a car that's really trying to push hard for position. Just like that and nearly missed the pit lane saying, you know what, I gotta make it on gas. Come on, I gotta come in. <laughs> on the very edge for the 41 machine. The Bullout Racing team almost bailed down to the pit lane until they finally cut in and got right there. So the window is open for LMP2s, but this just this is just on the edge, right? This is just LMP2 cars on the very edge of the cycle. We're not properly into the thick end of it. I'm not quite sure yet, to be quite frank. No, because I think I think they they pit the last time out around yes. with 45, 45, 47, yes. 50 odd minutes left to go. Give or take, yes, yes. It's about 10 minutes or so give or take for some of these cars if that's what you're trying to refer to yes yeah for the on p2s as well though there are about two three laps for some of them till their pit stops too so it's going to be an active pit lane and for many of the drivers they've had the luck of not crashing the pit lane first of all but second having space to enter the pit lane yeah how long that space lasts is going to be something that we'll have to see because a couple have come bumper to bumper there was a collision in qualifying two with interclass traffic in the pit lane when one car was trying to go in, one car was trying to go out. That caused some of the tow. It just reminds me of a classic old Hindi song that we used to have back here. It's called I Am Coming, You Are Going. That, they're very, very simple. That, that was a time where the lyrics weren't quite great, but it's it, just the same thing. Just chaos, all that happens when both parties come together in weird phases all together just it's a tight pit lane let's call it that but it's a long one to the endurance racing one not quite sure if i've heard that song off no offense but i'll take your word for it you, you, you'll find it quite funny it, there's, there's nothing to it's just a funny oh, that's beat not gonna be funny yeah that's not gonna be funny we've seen ferrari struggle in formula one this year Tell you what though, that was a big mistake by the online sim racing DE car and the Porsche can pounce once again. Worst possible spot to happen too because now the Porsche, as long as they nail the run up the hillside, they'll be able to get the tow and then some right at the start of a camel straight. Perfect, right there. An absolutely iconic sight seeing cars go up the Eau Rouge Hill. What's more iconic is being is moves being made right here on the Camel Strait. Right from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, we've seen moves being made right here. And so that happens once again with the Porsche who made a similar mistake at a similar corner only a few laps ago, coming back from the dust to take back this position. Just able to take advantage perfectly of a mistake again with some of the traffic. I think the Ferrari was trying to give some space to the LMP2, but gave too much of it. That time, just trying to keep too far to the left, I think, in the bus stop, and now they paid the price. Now the matter is, can they fight back with the price? I don't know, because you can see the front grip just isn't there. Yep, they're losing it. They're just not having the pace in. Of course, the Ferrari off, always going one lap longer because of their bigger fuel tank and the fact that they can go 27 laps didn't quite seem to be an advantage. But the fuel aside, the tyres are what's chewing them out right now. That's where they're losing the pace. That's where they're losing the time to the Porsche. And that mistake just seemed to be the amalgamation of everything. That's the crazy thing, though. There's a five-lap difference with them having the fresher tires. I wouldn't say, and there's the double stint two cape in mind to factor in. Absolutely. I think it's just how the cars are set up in terms of the preference for the handling as well. I mean, there's a reason there's one Ferrari. This used to be the most popular car in the service. Yeah. And they're still trying to make mistakes and give each other the positions back. You're another lockup of the Porsche. Crikey. And it's the bus stop chicane yet again. What's it with that corner? People are almost always making mistakes. Not people, these drivers, Olaf and Thomas Bieber, both of them just finding it a bit tricky to get their way around that corner. And I don't blame them. It is a tough one to negotiate through, mind you. But it's just those mistakes that are not allowing either of them to capitalize on the mistakes of the other person. 
either of them could well and truly have a five second gap by now had they just hammered on pressed on to those mistakes but no that's not happening each of them are making mistakes at both stages yeah that's unreal i think again the austrian sim racers rlt car is quicker <laughs> but and that's the key word it's just seeming like they just can't get into a rhythm both of them whether it's because of the traffic or whether it's because of the pressure from behind i'm not quite sure by the way lp2 pit window was open phoenix racing just pit from the lead yep phoenix racing coming into the pits right now and a, a question from hydra funny that prism lmp2 is triple stinting tires is it worth it no prism lmp2 are not triple stinting so prism have actually done a single stint they went in for tires uh oh not prism yeah that, that's the number 77 but still they are losing a bit of time so most of the teams right here are double stinting nobody that i can remember have done a triple now i think it's referring to they did it before in the race yes. yeah but and this is the key word again they're only the ones that now with some of the strategy calls some of the driver swaps and there's now in p7 so it can work but it also necessarily isn't the common strategy also a quick word on someone who went a different way during a motorsports club navy number 77 they find themselves in p5 well something's gone on to blow out racing pardon me the 41 is in trouble in brussels right now hmm. that's an interesting place to get into some drama i think they were stuck along the top wall a little bit if we can go back and take a look they just got back going now they were stopped there for a good minute or so for a good few seconds or so i think oh dear me oh dear me and from the looks of things yeah they have lost time now they have lost time the interval gaps but what's just happened here then going past the com gt3 car okay i'm gonna assume that nothing's gonna happen between them because why not and yes nothing did happen between them it's just a case of the 41 out breaking themselves and crunch into the wall they're gonna get back going quickly but that's not gonna help their cause again 12 spot on the track at the moment several penalties one spin around it's been a disaster of a race they've had a top five car today but they've had the luck of a last place car, to be quite frank. It's been that type of a day. Oh, by the way, Simza Esports, they put in their Gold Star driver back in the race car. The problem oh, and the difference yes. is, for Gustas this time, instead of being able to grow his lead early, he's got to claw back 34 seconds. Oh, yes. Should be a fun one. So then, it's a slightly quicker pit stop for Sims in comparison to the likes of Phoenix, Ringfist, T3, Durner. Oh, just by a couple of seconds here and there. So they've got a slight advantage in terms of that. But in terms of tyres, just nothing. We're still starting the second stint, right? Because the last time out, they did start a fresh stint of tyres. So they're just beginning the double stint, right? No, that's the opposite way around. No. Once again, the correct here. Part of me. My they just took tyres for the top three. Did to see the 77 double stint. That was what we talked about for that flip yeah, back. My apologies. Yeah, completely true. But speaking of flip around, these cars have flipped around this lap. Indeed, they have. Team Race get a dot de getting the position in at La Source. Albrecht Motorsports are closing up. Definitely, they will because of the draft. But remember, no advantage for either car because both of them are BMW. So. Had it been an Audi, had it been that sole Mercedes which has disappeared in the Belgian forest, there would have been a bit of an advantage for the BMW, but no, nothing doing here. It's all leveled out, it's all neutralized in that case. Angry Bull Racing, Progressive Sim Racing Alpha, they've come in the pit lane as well for the LMP2 cars. Don't rather, around four, three, two minutes, you should see the GTEs and GT3s in the pits too, so soon things will be beginning out. And ah, just a quick word on fall in lmp2 car uh, the low grip racing team who had a few big big incidents all in a couple of seconds and only a couple of laps rather 11 laps down to the leaders they are 
in the middle of the GT3 field in terms of overall category. And now this just means that when they fight back, they won't get the blue flags. They won't have preferential treatment, so they'll have to pass them, which should be fine. They've got the major base advantage, but not as easy as when you've got blue flags on your side. So they've got to do it the hard way. But yes, take another shot. It's a long race. I've done it again. Yeah, but it also takes some kind of contention for the class win, to say the very least. Yeah. So that's the tough part for them as an organization. I think it's the bigger thing. But look at this once again. Again, that, four, oh, that oh, red oh, and black oh, car is just going backwards this lap. Something's definitely wrong. Look at that right front toe. Crikey. And it's not the first position that they've lost in this lap. Remember, if you look at the top left-hand corner, it says position 07, which means they started this lap in 7th. They obviously find themselves in 10th. And rightfully so, as you can hear, the alarm bells are a bit late in the background. They have come into the pits. Awesome repairs, quite clearly. And also, we, we have to discuss the new updates as well, because now, whenever drivers come into the pit lane, just like in the real world, you have the alarm bells warning people, to all the virtual people in the pit lane, to move aside because there's a car coming. And that just shows you the amount of realism that iRacing focuses on, the attention to detail. And in fact, even a couple of our race spot commentators are featured in the game in terms of public announcer voices on the circuit. It's just that attention to detail that makes iRacing stand out in comparison to others. Yeah, that's something they've definitely been trying to add to, and I think it's something that it's definitely a good base to add in the future because I wouldn't be surprised to see more audio samples, more voices, more different combinations, more uniqueness in some cases for some circuits even, if they get the opportunity to try things out. It just adds that little bit more immersiveness for the spectator side more so, especially to be able to have that little bit more immersion as a sim racer. And keep in mind, that's one main thing where the fans can build up a lot of it or rather as a driver you want to be able to get immersed in the sound and be able to get yourself in tune to it to yeah. say the very least and for some drivers they listen to the exact throttles for some they may listen and wait for the feel through some of the force feedback an exact bump for the throttle having all that immersion to build in comes into play and having the crowd also be able to cheer you on can give you a little bit more of a smile here as a smile move coming right here well the motor sports sim racing black going to the inside line the risky place to make a pass just ask any gt3 car here today but it doesn't matter for them they've got something big and heavy inside their underpants and so they have flexed it not the best sounding thing in the world, mind you, but nevertheless, beautiful move down the inside of Blanchimont. Amazing driving right there by the Mulder Motorsport car, getting and grabbing the position with both arms. And that's what you have to do in a race like this one. When it's that competitive, when it's that close, when you see an opportunity, you grab an opportunity and you do not let go. That said, though, Justin, a couple of cars are locking up here and there. The last I remember, uh, the, 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 what Ferrari was that one? I think the online sim racing.de Ferrari was locking up here and there. This BMW having a lock up too right now. So even though they've got ABS both these machines, they're still slightly on the edge. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they are, to say the least. But, I believe there is an our pit stop here in it is the start of the window for the gtes by the way so some of these cars are going to be starting to duck down now that you're seeing scrap and fight a little bit yeah we saw the online sim racers.de and austrian sim racers drop scrap it out and they are in the pits right now so the ferrari will be coming later and is that a driver change that we just saw in there in the background possibly there and by the way before anyone else jumps in on this Talking about the LMP2, about the triple stints and some of the calls. For classes like this, Prism, they've been comfortably just keeping on going and going and going and going on the older tires, just like this right here. 34 second pit stop again for Prism Sim Racing Alpha. For this class, it can be worth it. 
for the LMP2s was the reference we were talking about earlier on for those jumping in on that conversation. Panos, another pit stop for the Prism Sim Racing Alpha. The window for the GTEs has well and truly begun right here. You should be seeing more pit stops. Even for the GT3s for that matter, the Family Bomber, the leader of that category, is in the pits. The Austrian Sim Racers Rotkar leaves in the back is that BMW, the leader of the GT3 category. Even Repair X by Arthur Motorsport, they've had a quick driver change. They were fourth in class while that happens. Robin Stoll is the new driver in the lead GT3 class. And while we've just it's the R mark, when the pit stops get done we shall be coming up with a quick recap of what's going on where everybody stands what's it been like and that should be rather soon and meanwhile the Valkyrie racing green car is provisionally in P number three they should be cycling out behind and now the GTE leader has also in the pits and interestingly Justin it's it's after the R mark has been crossed. HM Engineering and Valkyrie Racing Green have done something special. They've made sure that they come in the pits, not before the R ends, but after. Fascinating. I think, I think with some of the traffic getting the way it's been, they've been able to just have that lift and coast a little bit more efficient, having to let cars go, right? Because you don't want to just go full throttle and keep it side by side with the LMP2 and then get doored and sent off into the sand track. They're able to get to 27 as a result. Remember, they can only get to 26 before, and now the panic, I think, is a little bit less so. And now if you hit this about a few more times, you're good to go for the rest of the race, potentially, as long as you keep a decent rhythm and don't, say, burn up a 25. Hmm. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll be good for their window now. Yeah. And good for their driver swaps like this. Out to back in again in a flash. Beautify Racing. Even though you're in different corners of the world, you can swap around in that very same car. And Vlad Kimchev is the new driver coming into that HM Engineering Corvette. And boy, how dominant have they been from the very beginning. Yeah, it's a team that I paid a lot of attention to. They've grown the development program team as well. They're fast, to say the least. They've picked up even faster drivers as we talked about. This is a team that's set up for success for the near future. Yep, they've been extremely good, extremely smart in the way have run their operations. Back there, dominating, doing a very good job in the GTE category. You know what? Not that the R mark has been crossed. I think it's a very, very good time just to feel the immersion that Justin was talking about a couple of minutes ago and actually get involved deep down into what it is like from the perspective of the drivers racing right here. It's time for a race spot TV fan immersion and we are going to go with the number 66, the Phoenix Racing Esports green car. Daniel Longrick, your leader overall. Let's do a couple of quick laps around Spa Francorchamps and get fully immersed in the sights and sounds of this amazing circuit. We should be back.
back again here at the Circuit Spa Franco Shops for the HNR Spa 24 hours organized by Mulder Motorsport. And while we did do a couple of really fun laps with the leader of one category in the form of Phoenix Racing Esports Green, there has been some unprecedented drama for the leader of another category. Justin, what's just happened here? Right as we started the race spot fan immersion, we mentioned there was a new driver in that car in Vlad Kimrichev. As this car nearly runs in the back end of traffic to make things even worse here, mind you, their driver ended up having a technical issue and that they disappear from the track. What that means is the car's not on the track. Rasmus Busk had to jump in in relief they lost more than a minute and a half as a result. And guess what? HM Engineering, no longer your race leaders after being the dominant car in the class. They are now way off where they are going to need to be and a bit off cycle too, mind you, as a result. They're going to have a long, long drive to get back to where they are. They are currently net P3. That's the bright side, but still. They are way back of Prism Sim Racing and Race Union because of it. A minute and 25 seconds to be precise. By the way, mind you, some of those cars have ducked down. Others have stretched a couple laps on different cycles. Yep, they have indeed. Bentley Gods are in the pit lane right now. They would have cycled out as leaders. Let's see what happens with them. Online Sim Racing.de, the Olaf Matson Barker car, the Ferrari. Still yet to pit so provisionally they are on p1 and 2 hm engineering will essentially come out around p3 effectively once those guys pit but how painful is that how excruciating is that you've done nothing wrong the whole race no poor traffic management you've been managing your tires well you're fueled well you're racing well you've pulled out the biggest gap that one can imagine and then the perils of sim racing the one thing that could go wrong hardware issues latency network issues they strike the leader and i know for a fact that they will claw back because if they are if they just keep on driving the way they had been driving hm engineering will well and truly stick out later on and will create a big gap but it's just not making their work any easier for them and they get thrown somewhat in the top of the mid pack so th that's where the drama is that's when things could go wrong so although it's yeah. it's not all lost, it's not pure, sm pure smooth sailing for them anymore. Here's the tough part too. Family Gods actually cycled right in front of them too. So it's a yeah. net P4 too. This is just compounding things. In other words, they're going to need to take the next 19 hours and 48 minutes to close up that entire gap likely. The thing is, it's early on, you can recover. The thing is, it might take them until the final four hours to get back there at the clip they were running before. It's not going to be easy. Not even close, to say the least. They're about a few tenths of a second to a second quicker in some cases per lap in cleaner space. HM Engineering is compared to, say, Bentley Gods or Race Union. But they need to get to them. And that yeah. can take a long time. It can take a long time indeed. Of course, they say a fortune can be destroyed in a matter of seconds. But to build it back up, though it can take ages. But if there's one thing that's on at your engineering side, they certainly do have the piece. They certainly do have the drivers because they've done it once. They can definitely do it again. But it just does not make their day or their task much easier. But on the flip side then, on the silver lining for them, if you have to fight for something, it just feels all that more special. So if they are able to win this towards the end, which is a real possibility, they'll feel even better about this. So that's a plus. But nevertheless, not all, it's all not one for them. It's all not lost for them. There's still a long time going on and... Bentley Gods are the cars that we are focusing on right now. Indeed. For Bentley Gods, they've just been quietly running very strong, very well in their Corvette. Not many mistakes outside of, well, getting hit by a Corvette. 
And you can tell by the way their banner is written, they've been having a lot of fun with this race today. <laughs> it's been fun for them, you'd have to say, yeah. outside of the scratches. But it's been pretty enjoyable being the gods to have channeled their holy luck somewhere to get up the order. Of course, having a bit of damage, but nevertheless, good race for them so far. And now, of course, now that we've reached the hour mark, now that the pit stops are done, it's a good time to take a bit of a recap, know where everyone is. And let's begin by speaking about the dominant team. And hey, well, every time you've said someone is a dominant team, something fun has happened, some battles have happened. So let's hope, let's hope that there are more things going on. Phoenix Racing Eastport Green at the top, 22 seconds. Yes, 22 seconds ahead of Simsa Eastport. But if there's a silver lining for Simsa, it's that ever since Kustas Grimbergas has gone back into that car, Justin, that gap has been coming down. So it was around 28 or something. It's been clawed down right now by Simsa. But nothing to worry about as of now for Phoenix Esports. T3 in third. Ring Fizzard in fourth with Durana Motorsport, the 77 with a single stint in P number five, having faster lap times, obviously, in the first half, not now. WS Racing East Coast Magenta in sixth, Bulna Motorsport Sim Racing Pro in seventh, and Prism Sim Racing Beta in P8. Meanwhile, when you look towards some of the other classes, this is among your GTEs. We mentioned the difference in the Ferrari cycles. It's currently that case with the online sim racing, not the A machine. They're expected to come in this lap. That would cycle Race Union to the lead, although it will be tight for where they're positioned, depending on the decision on the tires here. Then it's Bentley Goss 12 seconds back, Prism Sim Racing Alpha, and then the recovery drive to keep an eye on. The 159 of HM Engineering, it will take hours upon hours to get back to where they were before. But it's not impossible. They're in fifth right now on the track. Likely may cycle to that spot by the end of the pit window for this respective Ferrari on screen. Got for E-Racing Green, Austrian Sim Racers, RLT, and with the eighth place position in the 188. Temperature Sim Racing GTE, two minutes and nine seconds behind the 152 at the moment on the racetrack. And while well, that was GTE, in GT3 it's all smooth sailing. The waters are largely calm, nothing to test, no thunderstorms, no lap traffic, no particular competition as such for the family and bomber motorsport team in P number one. 48 second gap to Simpson Esports GT3 who has been quite competitive and there they're about just not close enough. Bulla Motorsports Sim Racing Black the organizers of this event in P number three and the German performance sim racing Audi moving up one position from where they started to be in B4. Absolute Motorsport is the design in fifth, Repair X by Ultron Motorsports Sim Racing in sixth. And Ring Fizzard Sim Racing GT3 Pro in 7th and the AMC Birkenfield EV Pre Alpha in 8th as we see this amazing sight of cars going up the hill at Radion Eau Rouge. Meanwhile, Topper in GTE, Online Sim Racing or DE, the Ferrari who we did expect to come in the pits has finally come in the pits. Of course, being the Ferrari, they can go a couple of laps longer, but they have gone far, far longer here then. And it is a driver change because the car has disappeared, the driver has gone off, snapped the finger, back again with a new one. And it looks like we'll have to see how well they can push this car because obviously it's decent. It's to the point where it's a top five contender. No question about it. But can they push themselves to one of the price levels? Remember, we talked about this. There's a lot of euros at stake for a top five, for a top three run. Being on the podium per your class, they might be able to strategize their way into it. It's all possible. It's all possible. It's a long race and they have, I won't say the upper hand or a disadvantage of any sort, but at least a different tool, a different sword, a different thing to play with. And that is the fact that that Ferrari can go longer. 27 laps. Some GT3 GTE cars, I beg your pardon, are going 24, 25, at best 26. This one can easily do 27. That's an ace up their sleeve. It may or may not work for them, 
It may or may not work against him. But it is something that they can use. It's a tool in their arsenal. Something different. Let's see what they can do from that one. Meanwhile, the battles are calming down. Everything is, I wouldn't say stagnating, but just relaxing. But the same can't be said in GT Space. Because whenever something happens, there are a couple of cars toasting up all the time. They won't let go of each other. Why would they? Why should they? They are here to produce some high quality competition and they do just that. Repair X Bile to almost sports sim racing in P number seven. Second behind the Ring Fizzard Sim Racing GT3 Pro and uh, it's been a bit of an up and down day, hasn't it, for the Ring Fizzard team in both their categories just now. Yeah, it kind of has been so far to say the very least. We've talked about some of their teams showing some great speed in the on P2s, but for these GT3s, the Pro Car's been okay. They've been able to hold on to their own. They've also been able to slowly progress up and also have had this 200 car, for example, lose a ton of time just now winning by traffic. But their M car has been adventurous, we talked about, with those collisions with the inside wall, with the front nose completely sheared off, in some cases, the no hood on that car. It's just been the tale of different parts of the organization. Oh, by the way, that M car is still running 23 uh. laps down overall to your rank to your top of the pylon somehow so are, are they running or are they limping uh the engine's moving or roaring so i guess it's moving well the heart of the beast is life certainly and they are doing quite a good job to just keep it on the track after all that's happened yeah and that's just, and by the way, right behind some of these cards you see on screen. So these cards have already had to deal with them again. It's been sketchy, though. Traffic like that can be helpful, maybe, for, say, if you're a race getter to move up another spot on the pylon. Or you can bow down to the, to the greenish car moving around and, in turn, get closed in by more traffic. You don't come close enough. That's a god. That's... That is a Bentley God right there, so you don't want to get a bit too close to God and make them too upset. But no, jokes aside, Brace Kidder closing up to the AMC Birkenfield car up ahead in the BMW's battle for the 8 in class. Of course, both of these cars, BMW, so both of them not really having any advantage per se in terms of the hardware of the car. But yes, that finally brings us on to a very good talking point then. Setups. We spoke about it briefly a couple of hours ago about how teams set up but just how do you set up a car yeah because at this circuit it's called the long straights yes i remember one of the uh lmp2 cars put an extra drag but it's a perfect combination you've got long straights high downforce corners really slow ones but you need that downforce even more so how do you go apart with things and rather how crucial is it in a case like this one well, if you want me to make your car slower, I can build you a setup, but <laughs> in all seriousness, Same. the main thing is for if you're a driver with a respective team is, we mentioned the various processes you go through and testing different things. It depends on the organization. Some have one, some have three bases, some may have custom made per driver or, or respective organization sets where you're trying to at this track I, and my opinion you want to maybe go more in the lower downforce to make sure you're carrying so much speed down the straights but also have enough downforce to where you don't have necessarily to the point where you have to crawl to the corner hmm. you be able to find that mix you're going to be in a good spot and for a lot of these teams they found that mix for some others they're the ones you've seen lapped a couple times Big mistake, though, in this battle with the LMP2s. There are a bit too much curving, though, in the battle for P6. Yep, this is the Mueller Motorsport Sim Racing Pro Machine. Getting a bit of snap over, Steve, on the exit of the bus stop chicane. I mean, considering how planted, how clean these prototypes look like, it seems like, yeah, they're four-wheel drive cars, right? They've always got grip. They'll never oversteer. They'll just give you what they want. Pinpoint accurate racing machines, but no, it's not that way. They are rear wheel drive by nature, and just being a bit too eager on the throttle will eventually lead to them snapping hard and saying, Hey, you driver, you're supposed to be with the traction control, not the electronic bit. 
you on the traction control. So you've got to be very easy in the way how you throttle out. There's always this temptation to go hard and power out and funnel out all the power, but it just does not work that way with this machine. It's got to be very precise. There's always that urge. We've got to control it. And Mjolnir Motorsport Sim Racing Pro will have to do just that. I've got to get ahead this Prism Sim Racing Beta machine. That's been, let's say, in front of them for quite a while. And so the Prism Sim Racing Beta team, Prism Sim Racing Beta team, I beg your pardon, will have seen quite a fair bit of this car in their mirrors for a long time. Or the screen, perhaps, depending on what they like to use. Well, they de technically do have that little monitor there that, in some cars, is your mirror, yeah. mind you. As your, because there's, in some cars, a back camera that pops out. <laughs> but what in the world? No Motorsport Sim Racing Pro Team, whatever they have done to these tires, it's not looking pretty. They're not have. it doesn't look like they're feeling comfortable with the downforce levels. They are losing tons and tons of time with those oversteers. Yeah, they're snapping. The car literally is snapping on them, on the driver, Robert Kunkis, telling him to be more cautious. Watch out, Robert. Do, do something better. Don't snap so hard. Be a bit more cautious. But again, as a racing driver, it's just your instinct. You've got to power out early on. And in a fight like this one, that's when the adrenaline is flowing through your body. You can feel it through your nerves. You're pumping up. You're quite often your fingers are shaking, you, I mean if you're not driving, your legs are moving about much like a drilling machine, that's when you've got all the excitement, and in that excitement, it's so easy to make mistakes like this one. Exactly. They've lost two seconds, not just because of traffic, but because of those oversteer bits. They don't have that, they're probably keeping up. Now, they're going to need some luck. To catch back up there are several cars behind they might get it though because of that gt machine holding it up a touch but it's going to need to be several cars possibly mm -hmm. to be able to rally back for that position there's still plenty of time obviously to look. that's the bright spot you do yep. those bits of oversteer or hit the curbing way too hard to the point where you're nearly spinning the car out with three hours to go or even with one hour to go i should say that's where you have to be really, really concerned. This is where you can get away with a couple of those mistakes. Not all of them, but a couple of them. Yep. Keep avoiding, keep going straight, keep being on the right track. You've got to make sure that everything is easy, clear, perfect. Easier said than done, definitely. I mean, I mean I, I'm sitting in my bedroom right here with my sim in front of me. I'm not driving. Again, it's easier to speak about not making mistakes rather than it is to actually go and not do them yourself. But hey, is that the race leader lapping a car from his own class? That is. That is the Phoenix Racing Esport Green Machine, Daniel Longrick, lapping up the race organizers, the Mueller Motorsports Sim Racing Pro. That's a bit symbolic, if there was anything. I'm not surprised though. It's just been that quick. There's only six cars on the lead lap, mind you, in the entire field right now. It's just been that lightning quick, brisk pace. And keep in mind, there's a chance they lap up, depending on who's in the car for Simza towards the end of this race, up to second. Or even up to third is when you're realistic with the flip. Speaking of, by the way, that Simza car, since they put Gustav's back in the car, Gustav's Grimberg is back in that machine. They've closed in 13, 14 seconds on the board. Wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. Progress being made by Simza. Meanwhile, this GD3 battle has come up by between Team Racegitter.de and AMC Birkenfield. Of course, they were close enough. They were around two seconds away from each other last we saw them few minutes ago now they're getting ever so closer but yes a question coming in on the YouTube chat by Tom Voss about the HM engineering team they were leading yes they would they had a big big gap but just what happened to them Justin long story short technical issue right out of the pit window for their third driver for the race forced bus back into the machine now they're way far behind for the race lead it's going to take the whole entire day at night potentially to close back up and in you can say for a lot of these drivers it may take them 
six, eight, ten hours to set up these passes in some of these cases. By the way, all of these cars on different various cycles at this point spread throughout the field, not just from the strategy calls, but some of the attrition starting to bubble over for a couple of these competitors as this day has gone on, as the fatigue has settled in, as the frustration settled in, and for drivers, the several mistakes have settled in if you're in the case of the 40. Or bad luck in general when it comes to some of their car handling as hello and goodbye. Yep. And your race leader for the LMP2s is in, by the way, this lap. He's indeed. Phoenix Motorsport Team Green in the pits. But what's happening to the 40 then? It's been a bit of a convoluted race for them so far. Mortal Racing Esports going across to the sh to the Lecom chicane. Yeah, it's been a bit of a bad day. Had a couple of incidents early on. Had a penalty as well, if I, if my memory serves me right. And also had that chassis issue as well, apparently, yeah. where they felt the chassis was potentially damaged or thought it was with the way it was running. Remember, they were off the pace after the pit stop. And didn't have any hoarded optional damage from what they could tell from when they stopped. So it's... The luck's not been on their side. The next car is 21 seconds up the road. It's off cycle, yes. But that's still a lot of time you need to claw back if you are a team still that is a realistic amount but it's the matter of do they have the pace to get back up there because some of the teams they are in front of were some who had been involved in several incidents themselves been dramatic let's call it that way it's been dramatic for many of the people involved many drivers many teams because the mortal racing esports team bearing the brunt of it in person by having all the drama themselves. Meanwhile, here are a couple of cars who have done a good job putting up a spectacle. The RaceGitter.de and the EMC Birkenfeld EM EV Pre Alpha. Yes, it's a long name, I know, but yeah, it's 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 what it is. Oh! Speaking of what is what it is, the Porsche outbreaks himself, locks up at the bus stop chicane, and that's a GTE Porsche losing a whole heap of time. And it's just that corner again, Justin. Just that bus stop chicane always catches people out. Whether it's the grass, whether it's the braking mark, or whether it's just trying to navigate traffic that throws you out of your rhythm, there's so many ways you can mess this section up. And in this case, they just had the pass and then just don't break themselves completely. Like they were let go and they still managed to mess it up. How do you manage that? Things happen in, in a more euphemistic way. I mean, there's obviously the word that will make it sound a lot more dramatic, but I'm not going to use that. But nevertheless, things happen while you're racing. And just a lapse of concentration, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, just they're that's... starting to pile up the mistakes. We was talked about only a couple incidents early on in the race for some of the top teams. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they are much much higher than it was before from the early stints because of the fact that it was the calmest first hour we've seen all year for an endurance race to be quite <laughs> frank on the all racing sports network the second and third hours raced like the first 30 minutes we've seen from some of the other events this year with some of the aggression now it's gone back to the calm period that some of the position now that some of the positions spread out and some of the drivers have mellowed out or in some cases, are being shouted, shouted at, mellow out, mellow out, mellow out, as non-relaxing as that is. <laughs> just being reminded, they must be constantly that, hey, you've only just begun, fella. You've only just begun, my apologies. In 19 hours and 27 minutes on the clock, keep on going, you've got to make less mistakes. Meanwhile, Pit stops have begun in the LMP2 category. So, while we see a uh, go to battle, because these guys have been staying with each other for, well, as long as I can remember, basically, the LMP2s have begun going in the pit lane and the Mueller Motorsports Sim Racing Pro Car 
are in the pits, the number 21. As you can hear in the background, there must be sirens wailing to announce that the car is in the pits. And so is the Angry Bull Racing. Jeremy Moran behind the wheel of that car, P10. Interestingly enough, the Angry Bull Racing car, as it stands, and it's a beautiful coincidence, this, in P number 10, in the overall one, in the category, and also donning car number 10. It's just a it's a very satisfying thing for my OCD on the time it just, just makes me feel very well. And they've been... Oh, what's even more interesting is that Progressive Sim Racing Alpha, P number 11 in category, overall, and they also don P number 11. Beautiful coincidences here. I mean, if you have those numbers, I think you're saying I wish we were higher up on the pylon, <laughs> but... Yes. The thing that threw me off with them when we first started off in looking at some of the cars is they are near identical paints. I don't know if they're affiliate, to be quite frank, but they are near identical in color palette, look of the car, how their mats are set up, how the pile decals are set up in the back of the car. It's uncanny. Hmm. It is indeed. But lots of things to consider, lots of things happening as well. The number 11's in the pits, Fit Fuel Racing, Robert Thiem, also in the pits for the LMP2 category. This GD3 battle has been raging on for a fair bit and let's actually check back up on what's happening to our LMP2 leaders because that was a key talking point that we had early on in the race. And from the looks of things, gap is being closed up now. So 21 seconds it was the last time we checked on them, 19.4 as it stands. So very clearly, Gustav Grinbergas has done something special or he's bought a special charm or whatever it may be. And he's eating up that gap, just nibbling through every single lap and getting closer to the Phoenix Racing Esports green car. Well, that's a positive sign. What could be negative is that they're just going a bit too fast and chewing up their tyres. Hopefully not because that would just put us away from a really good competition, a really good fight between these guys. Still a good fight, though, for the battle for P8 have to save with some of these BMWs, but to quickly touch upon that, they have one of the best drivers I think they can get, obviously. We've seen the pace. Yeah. It's the matter, though, of is it too far to close in is the more thing worrying thing here. But if you're right now this 235 for Team Race Skitter, not DE, it's time to get her done. Spot. I think they're quicker. It's just they are reaching the car in front at the wrong spots to be able to get, to get the move done to the point where they've lost the tow again. And now there's tow from inner clash traffic that's going to help the car in front. Okay, then fact, that's a bit that's of a battle position. between. Yeah, some of that's exactly, for position, yeah. in fact, yes. That one that you were watching on your screen was also in the GT3 category BMW Z4s. P7, P8, AMC, Birkenfeld, EV, Pre, Alpha. And the repair X by Althorn Motorsport Sim Racing. Fighting for position. Oh, oh, dearie me! Making contact, but not making friends. What is Patrick Schmidt doing there? He's got damage on the left front. I think he was trying to let by the car coming in quick go. He knew it was not as quick. I don't think he realized there was a second car trying to send it from 50 five car lanes back there and he nearly got himself turned as a reward far from appropriate far from normal that incident both the z4 gd3 is fighting for the same piece of real estate and just you not know, i mean just about working out fine because yes they lose time but thankfully thankfully none of them are in the wall none of them have to go back to the pit lane or have a extremely damaged car or something quite like that regard it's fine only just any little bit of damage and it would have been not fun let's put it that way if you're a competitor but obviously there's something wrong with that 200 car we're going to be caught back that fast and quickly again though the 235 just cannot seem to catch a break on the traffic, and guess what? This is reeling in some more cars right behind them. Sims Esports' GT3. Yes, there is that car in this field, too. 
He's trying to lap by these cards as well to add insult to injury to all this fighting. It all just compounds up. It all just piles in at certain stages of the races. We just spoke about how it was getting calm a couple of minutes ago, but here we are then. Give it a couple moments. It will get more intense if you think this is just a little bit calm, the start. But what a run off the corner. This is going to get it done. Not even close. Here they come. Door to door action as always. Oh! And the repair X car spun round. Again, someone That's the key word. needs to get in his word, his ear. That was the second place car in class that he just shed the no front nose off there. Repercussions? There will be. The protest sheet will be filled up in a matter of seconds. And the repair X car, so... I mean, the second place car was from six, seven car lanes back, but... One, he left space. Two, he really backed it off. There's going to be a lot of discussion probably on that one, on if that gets a penalty or not. No, it, that it, might be a penalty on the second place car in the class, if anything, possibly, actually. Yeah, but because for the, for on the defense of the repair X car, yes, you don't want to lose your footing in this major battle that's going on. So you definitely don't break as hard. You don't come to full standstill uh, at the S's. So he definitely went to the outside line. But I think just when he got back in, and there's just like blind spots. If you're not playing with a three-screen monitor, there is a certain blind spot that you can't see where the other cars are. And if that is the case, if he is playing with a single-screen monitor, uh, I don't think... I can blame him as much because then you just can't yeah. see who's next to you. He thought that they're already gone, but they haven't. Yeah, you might want to jump to the 235 again, though, because that same car just nearly turned someone again. Oh, boy. Again, oh boy. the same GT3 we just referred to just nearly turned the Team Race Getter .de machine, the Simsa car, going into the bus stop. So there is some frustration boiling over from some of this traffic. Yes, that's that car you just seen in front that nearly turned him again. Take a look at this replay and take a look at how quick it is. They think about going to the right. They nearly, they just about touched and nearly went to the grass before they said, you know what, you want the position, so you want to get by so quickly. Here, I'll just go Ole. Imza Esports GD3 getting in a bit of hot water everywhere. I mean, it's a different case altogether about whether it was their fault or not but certainly being involved in all the scraps and that's not what you need at this stage of the race you're second you don't want to be involved in all that but it just so happens at times that you catch all the cars at the wrong times and it could be brought to bear with a very hefty accident in that case just i don't understand why you're going so aggressive the whole lap there yes frustration can build in but you don't want to give your team an hour penalty. We've seen a lot of them from some of these cars have taken them out of contention or it's taken some time to get back. Some of the cars with penalties are still in the back end of the top 10 in some of the classes today. Yeah. If anything, it just weighs you down. Uh, and going so aggressive, yes, that's the sprint racing nature. But what's not... Oh my goodness me. I have to stop for a second. That was a huge, huge cloud of smoke and thankfully the car is all right there's nobody crashing out there but seriously these cars are running out of grip they're locking up quite badly and they could eventually have flat spots yeah. the size of craters on the surface of the moon eventually who knows by the way that is norbert winholtz who is causing the lock up there that 137 we were talking about earlier so just can happen when you're trying to brake while steering but still the car you see on screen they're about to get through the smoke pretty cleanly, and I believe some standing by for them. Yep. We've got an interview lined up for you. It should be a rather fun one. We've got Mario Sinek, the driver of the number 211 right here with us, the AMC Birkenfield EV Pre Alpha team. And Marco, how's it going for you so far? You, you currently find yourself in P number 7. How, how would you sum the race up to this point? 
Yeah, we started from uh, P9 and uh, then we drive to P6 and then we get a um, uh, penalty because we have crossed the white line outside of the bit. And um, yeah, and then we fight against to P6 and uh, now we have P7, P7, how you say, and um, yeah. Bit of a tough one, isn't it? Just to get a penalty for something like that. But still, there's a lot of time left. There's a lot. Is there a lot of fighting spirit in the team? Do you still feel confident about a good top five result coming up your way? Yes, for sure. Because we, uh, at some times, we were P3. And then uh, when you were one time on that position, you uh, have to you have to fight um, one more and more. Um, how it goes, I can I cannot say um, because we have so much time uh, yet uh, until the uh, end of the race. What will happen, we can say. But we have the um, we want to fight, and then we will see uh, how it goes on. And Marco, we thought early on that penalty points, uh, incident points, in terms of cutting the track, will be a major factor. How are you looking in terms of that? Is everything going good for your team? Yeah, now we have um, exactly 46 uh, incidents and um, sometimes it is because you have to um, drive outside of the track limits because the faster car uh, came and... Um, yeah. But I'm, I think uh, we will do very well and uh, so we don't uh, we'll reach the uh, incident limit. And finally, Marco, just before we let you go, is there anyone who'd like to thank any sponsors, team members as such? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, first, I want to thank my um, teammates, for especially uh, Bernd and Simon and um, Alex, who uh, drive with me uh, on the car. And um, I had a lot of training with uh, these guys and they told me how to drive this track and um, how the car will react because this is my first 24-hour um, race wow. and um, yeah. It should be, should be a lot of fun. All the very best Marco, it's going fine. Hopefully it goes even better towards the end. Thank you very much and um, have fun also with the bro uh, broadcast. Ah. Thank you so much, Marco. Thank you. That, folks, was Marco Sainé, the number 211 driver for the AMC Birkenfield EV3 Alpha team. It'll be interesting to see where they pan out towards the end. Yeah, they've been having a pretty consistent, solid race. They haven't had too much trouble, and well, there's some trouble for well, them. Welcome to, welcome to iRacing. As soon as they someone has their car put up and you're talking about them, they go off the track. Crikey, I guess we shouldn't have interviews then from next time out because the way it's going so far, <laughs> I, it's I mean, so destructive. They're missing some lines here. What is going on? Something's up here all of a sudden. They might be having an issue here, whoever's behind the wheel all of a sudden. That... That would be Burnt Lily behind the wheel of that car. And Burnt Lily has been in this car for let's say a fair bit of time. He's been driving around for quite a while, but that is an unusual set of mistakes from him. Yeah, that was a bad, bad sector too. I think they're back underneath their sea legs, but this max speed 157 miles an hour down the straight. I yeah, think they're going to be heels. okay. They might get reeled in eventually, though. That is comparable about the same speed as the car behind. So, whatever happened in that sector, I think they finally, at the very least, calmed down. Let's make you a make it more anxious again because welcome is the LM key to, to blinking lights. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a GT3 car, it's quite significant when you hear when you see a car flashing their lights from behind you can freeze in your tracks because oh my god there's an lmp2 i've got to move out of the way and knowing these prototype drivers they there's this classic strategy in prototype racing that always goes 
blame it on the slower driver. Very simple. If there's an accident, if there's an incident, which I hope desperately does not happen for any of these teams or drivers, just blame it on the slower driver. But no, there is a certain impatience with these LMP2 prototype drivers and it can be expected. They're traveling at a much faster pace. It's a bit like it's a bit like having a pet with you because your dog is living in quicker cycles. They're having a faster life. You, you're going much slower naturally. So the excitement, the eagerness, the anticipation, it's all different. And that's why sometimes you can see these clashes in traffic. But for the Phoenix Racing Esports Green Team, it's all very clean. They've been navigating traffic just like a precise surgeon doing their job extremely well with such precision. It's been amazing. Nevertheless, the Simza Esports LMP2 team have been closing in and they've closed in two seconds since the last time we spoke about them. Keep going then. Yeah, it's kind of equalized down, I think, with the tire stints here. Yeah. I think that is in now just where the setup starts coming in for Simza Esports because Yes, they compete, have competed in top split of action in the past, and some major series have been very competitive. Usually a top five or top ten competitor in some cases. But it just seems like Gustav has been able to push that car up five, six, seven tiers almost. And when you see their main organized drivers come back into the car, it's almost like it comes back down to earth. Hmm. That's not insulting the talent of the drivers. They're they're good drivers. There's a lot of talent on that organization, but when you put in a pro driver that's outpacing your main drivers by two seconds a lap, it says something. Yeah. There's a gulf. There's, there's a gulf between the drivers and the same team as well. And it's significant, right? It's, it's just like someone has to carry the team through them. And you're very, just you're literally scampering about when the second driver is in that stint then because you're worried that oh how much time are we going to lose so instead of your bronze driver so per se there's no category as such don't get confused here in this particular race but let's say what you would classify as your bronze driver if they do end up losing too much time then it becomes more of a liability in terms of your approach as well so there's more pressure on the goal driver so they're much more likely to make mistakes because drivers they, they like to be relaxed they don't want to be thinking about a lot some do yes but you don't want to have that burden on your shoulders obviously you can lift more you can dance more freely but you've not got anything weighing you down so that's the same thing in this perspective so that sort of a gap i, I don't know it just does not bode well in the long run it can make it work sometimes yes but it's not the most sustainable of things though Kind of agree on that point. Nine tenths, by the way, gained that lap. Previous time by, but had to consider. For some pro drivers, they do it for fun. Yeah, it's a way to escape and have, in just be able to do, to race in your free time and have fun with a group of drivers, and be able to help them out and be able to help them learn. One of the best examples I can think of with some of the real world drivers helping the sim drivers is think about this with the NASCAR Cup Series, William Byron, as you know, yes. has William Byron Esports. One of the main things I talked about with Nick Goninger and have talked about with him a couple times is they actually work together in a specific practice session, not specifically just on setups, but also on helping William Byron prepare for the actual cup race, as in Nick pushes Will. William pushes Nick to be able to make it to essentially show the pressure pardon me, and feel the pressure of what they would feel for these cars in this race or in their cup race in real life for William Byron. And in turn, what may happen for the virtual side. It just is how that can function out. And it's really something that really helps a lot of competitors. By the way, all of a sudden, Race Union has a buddy. It's the Bentley Gods. So now that Etchum Engineering have been pushed down the back, this battle right here has taken forefront. And yes, I completely agree with that thing, Justin. It's, it's just the way it works. And sometimes it can be the opposite too, because I remember 
speaking to Arjuna Gangipati from Race Park TV as well. He's, he's one of our very own. And he is pretty involved in the IndyCar side of iRacing. And when Tony Kanan, the, the legendary IndyCar driver, came to iRacing for the first time, he just started with a blank, blank slate. He didn't consider the fact that, okay, I'm multiple time IndyCar champion or I've won the Indy 500, XYZ. He just simply said, okay, you teach me here. I'm new to this service. I know what I know, but you have to start with a fresh vision. So it can work both ways. Even the pro drivers in the Sims can sometimes teach migrating real world racing drivers coming through. And it's just beautiful, the kind of ecosystem we create where everyone can just benefit from each other. Yeah. It's fantastic works well for everyone and just all this while having fun glad you actually mentioned that because some drivers do take some time to adapt yeah and it's a driver to driver basis some of the drivers you see the pro level today in the sim some of them it takes them years to get to where they are today like we're talking when they're very young 12 13 14 to get to where they are now at 18 19 20 21 22 and so forth others They'll tell you, oh, I picked up the steering wheel and immediately started winning 100 races in a, in a month or something. No joke, I've heard that that argument from one of the drivers now in, in the Enos Coco I racing series. Not going to name who, they'll probably know who I'm talking about. But talent comes in separate ways. Some, you have to prepare. Others, it takes time. And an interesting note, by the way, with the GTEs, there is a difference in cycles with the pit stops we talked about with some of the different issues for some of the cars. Racing Union is in. Bentley Gods can go another six laps, by the way. Oh, wow, P6 for the LMP2 is a scrapping. Yep, we've reached the R mark. This is where the GTEs and GT3s usually come into the pit lanes. For the LMP2s, of course, it's a lot more different. They stop in around cycles of 34, 35 odd minutes per stint. Of course, their fuel tanks are much smaller, but their appetite of just consuming and chewing up corners much, much bigger. But here comes the Porsche then, into the pit lane. We see the Simza Esports GD3 car in the background as well, also here for a change. What do they do then? Meanwhile, at this LMP2 battle on the left hand side. This is getting fun. This is getting exciting for P number six. Door to door action. This is properly exciting stuff. The 23 has the inside line, which it holds on to. But the 64 is going to fight back. Big slide. The grip is running out of that 23. Tell you what, they've just held on to it by the skin of their teeth. This is amazing. I mean, with the amount of time that's on those tires, you have to hope that you're not losing grip because Prism did take the tires, believe. Yes, 53 seconds on their last pit stop. It's the WS Racing Car with a double stint who is going to have to come in in a lap or two. If you're losing grip on fresh tires, you have to be panicking. Oh, by the way, if you're Phoenix Racing, the question is, are they panicking or are they going to be able to stay focused because Guess who is the fastest car on the track? Simsy Esports. Da, da, and yes, it's partly it. because they're making those moves to get by traffic while the counterparts have been waiting and more patient and losing two seconds on the checkup. And that gap, it's fallen down, hasn't it? It was 11 odd seconds, what? Yep. A couple of minutes ago. What, that's some beautiful driving there by Simsy comes back on to the same argument that we've had if one driver is super they'll be throwing it back in but what about the other one the team race in the end it's not a sprint one it's not one person i mean to be quite frank if i'm simsa esports i'm kind of joking probably in his ear can you do the entire race for us please uh, we'll figure out something <laughs> just run every single lap please please in all seriousness this has been an impressive run. And this team has to it be is. happy with the speed. At the very minimum, they'll come away with the second step of the podium. That's how quick this car has been. T3 Esports has been balanced out on speed even when they've had our car and drivers in the car. However, where things end up 
even in a couple hours, I don't not quite sure how far this cover can get. It all depends on the rotation, to be quite frank. It'd be interesting. Simza Esports once again clawing up the gap. It was around seven seconds. They're just chewing up literally three tenths or something per lap. Blistering fast right now. Gustav's going to pass. Greenberg has, I beg your pardon. And it's been the way in the first in as well. He was just about as good, just about as dominant. But yeah, look at the gaps. Look at the way he's been clawing in. Eight tenths, 1.8 seconds, 1.5 seconds. That is what you want to see if you're sitting in the management of Sims and Esports, the team from the Middle East. Is it sustained though? Or is it just a slight glimmer of hope amidst a fading challenge? I want to say slight. I would say if he's driving your car at the end of the race or for the final three hours, you have a legitimate shot of winning the race. You do. It's just going to be, he's going to have to, a lot of work and also has to be careful because that was a little bit of a sketchy move, for example, with the traffic. Some people are not used to that, which may fly in the real world a little bit. Some Perhaps. drivers may not have the same patience level hmm. or, or, or have the same patience level for some of the moves that may happen. Just a heads up on that if you are that driver. I think the word that comes to mind right now is damage limitation in the second stint. Yep. Yep, and they, they're they going to have to come in in about four laps. Yeah. At this rate, they might be there in four laps. This is how quick he is. And don't forget, he's got experience in the real world. In the OMPs. Yeah. So this shouldn't be a shock to anyone. But he knows it better than anyone else then. That's the case. He just knows what he's doing. Properly in command. Properly in control of everything that goes on right here. Who knows he'll be closing up in no time. Meanwhile... Oh, it's not my timing screen yet again. It's it's Dull Lewis Racing Esports Magenta in the pit lane. And just happens as we focus on this battle on the team. Team RaceKiddo.de and AMC Birkenfield EV Pre-Alpha. They've been scrapping around for quite a while then. And they've been pretty calm in the way they've approached things. Just as we spoke, just as we had an interview with the 2-1-1, they had a few incidents. They were being shot with the Renewal, let's call it that way. But they were able to bring it back on. And now they're just right there, eight tenths of a second behind. And the pit window for them Approximately opening right about now because we've reached our mark, so they should be in rather soon. And some of them are because the Prism Sim Racing Alpha team and the Valkyrie E Racing Green and GTEs are making their way to the pits, and it's a driver change for the 142 and the 113. That on screen, I think, may be able to extend for a couple more laps based on the pace. It's just a matter of will there be traffic factoring in and how they play. Especially since some of that traffic will have to come in these next couple laps. In fact, the car, one of the cars just ducked in in that fight. Louis is in the pit lane out of the fight. Interesting. Big drama everywhere here. In the GTE category as well. The Valkyrie Racing Team in the pit leaving right now. And the number eight machine, this GT3 car, the AMC Birkenfield. Bird Lily in the pitch too, so this battle has been subsided for a bit. And this impending attack has been postponed, let's call it that way, for the AMC Birkenfield team. But oh goodness me! Sheesh! That was close. They almost hit the barrier there. No one's quite hit it. That's the bright side. I've seen a couple people actually scrape some front end plates. Some front bumpers, some fenders right up against it. And guess who's losing time after that? The car who hits the wall. That car, for the most part, though, I've been interested in what's been going on with it in Sector 2 because in the past four or five laps, it just seems to struggle from Pujon all the way up to campus. Perhaps... It's just a downforce, lack of downforce, maybe running a low downforce setup. 
And yes, a brilliant observation from uh, Hugo, our director, working his magic on the cameras, as always, right here. Bit of a thankless job, this one. And our, our very own Paul Smith from Race for TV, his team flipped their TCR in that little pit corner. Yes, that actually happened. It's something rather amazing. In fact, in one of the GT3 races that we had, I think the iRacing 24 hours, not the iRacing one, I think it was the virtual 24 hour series part 12 hours that we had right here. One team just had their GT3 car stuck. And I literally mean stuck right there for 10 minutes because they just couldn't reverse or back it out. It's like that classic meme that you see with uh, I don't know what kind of car that is, but a small wagon stuck between walls. They just can't reverse, they can't go ahead, down, up, something. They're literally right there until they had to reset the car and whatnot. But nevertheless, the 40, 41, the pullout racing team, now in the pits. Wait, why wouldn't you tow after 10 minutes? I don't know, they were just there. They were stuck there for a while. And uh, it was Peter and myself on the commentary, and we just did a funny little thing. We were just checking, are they still stuck there? Maybe, maybe not. No. Yep, they were for quite a while. And the race was essentially lost. I mean, on the right side, there was the narrow car who had to pit, was there? No, thankfully not. That, they were out of cycle. Yeah, I was going to say, that happens to you in front of that. Uh, good luck. <laughs> By the way, I think we have to go to that LMP2 second place car because he is now within range. 3.2 seconds in gaining a tenth a corner on your overall wow. race leader right now. Beast mode has been engaged. Three seconds. Where has that gap gone? Into thin air. That's the answer. He has just been eating up time. Quite like nobody else is right now. Daniel Longrick, if he would, if he has a spotter sitting behind any team member, oh, he might just have his hands shaking. But that's when the character of a driver is defined. Does he crack under this pressure, or does he just survive? Does he think, keep his control, and make his way out of this bit of a rut that they are facing right now, or does he sink in to the gap and the pressure that's coming from behind? I would have to say I don't think he's panicking because if you panic, you are not going to have a good time. Sure. The thing is, there is one more LMP2 that's separating them. That's the one thing pardon me, that's going to separate them for the next little bit. Keep in mind, this is a driver that's currently in your race lead that has a lot of experience in the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series and the BMW 120 Cup, as well as the ADAC. There's a lot of confidence, you'd have to say, in Daniel's camp on his abilities. You know, I think at this stage of the race, confidence is something that you just need. You know, because when everything is just so big, there's not much happening with the circuit. That's when you just put your visor down. Oh, yeah, if you're not at home, you won't put your visor down, but at least just clutch your steering wheel a bit harder. Get prepared. The, these are the these are the tankless hours essentially of the race, but nobody takes as much notice. That's when you just have to go in. You, you're not fighting with anyone, the track per se, directly, but you're just fighting against time. You're fighting against the clock, and you're fighting against someone who you can't see. It's hard to focus on a target that you can't see, but that's what he's doing right now, and he's doing it well. Oh, look at this though, on board. All that traffic just lost a second and a half for the race leader. This is perfect, and he's timing up these moves right to the T to be able to get through this. There's only been one lead change in this race so far. Are we heading for another one? Maybe soon after the pit lane. Look at that. Look at this. The gap is gone. What a pit entry. And the main thing that hurt Phoenix Racing too is there was another car that entered with them. A Corvette held up everybody else here. And they're still getting held up. They're getting checked up here. What is what oh are boy. they doing? What is the Corvette doing here? That's the 179 holding them all up. And now we have an early screen in the pits. Oh my goodness me. Talk about things you would never thought you see. Drama everywhere. And now, 
Stims up. Are your leaders in the pits? And, and that's not even when they've boxed. That's when they're all going in. That reminds me of Sebastian Vettel. And mid entry at China. Oh, man. What's just. Uh, exactly. Exactly that. Did, did the stage one racing car run out of gas? Like, they're still crawling down the pit lanes. What in the world? I mean, I expected drama, but not this. I am just speechless. Yeah, get the driver out of there. What in the world was that? Sometimes, maybe just speak more than words. And in this case, the image quite clearly is Stimza have come back from the dust, come back from the ashes, they've dusted off everything and they are your new leaders. Crazy. I don't even know what to say. And it's not that, going to be a defining moment, but still time yeah. left, but nevertheless. On top of that, there's divergences and strategies from all that carnage. Kevin Volk's now in the car for Phoenix Racing, meaning they have to take tires. Now Gustav's gets a 26 second running start. However, you have to think there's going to be the vice versa. Can confirm that same driver ran out of gas in the pit lane. What a time for stage one racing to run out of gas in front of your LMP2 leaders after closing up a 34 second gap to give Sims the race lead. You can't believe things like this, can you? Take a look at this replay on the right hand side. And they're wondering, this is where they realize, hey, this guy is going slow. So he pulls out the Simza car and it may look like the least dramatic overtake in the world, but they've got it done. The number six has actually got it done. Yes, blink for a couple of times. Believe it, pinch yourself. It has happened. And the 66, from the way he's driving, it certainly seems like there is an air of frustration. And I, I wouldn't mean, blame him. Yeah, I wouldn't blame him either. Like, first off, they had the back of the pit entry because of the car in front. Then the car in front runs out of gas right about here. And they start blinking the lights saying, what's going on here? Why are you going slow? And then they ram them because they don't think they understood this. The Simpson car can understand what's going on and boxes them in, so to speak, after seeing what's going on. And finally, everyone gets the message, something's wrong with this car. By that point, it's too late. And now they changed up the strategy. And now this is going to take a lot to sort through on how this could play out because of all this. And interestingly enough, there was a GT3 car in the background as well. And he got stuck behind the Corvette too, so he must have lost time in his category as well. Just everything just... Oh my goodness me. And, you know, just to put things into perspective, when you're racing at top speed, whenever someone gains some time, let's say a tenth or a couple of tenths of a second, we're like, wow, that's a good lap. You've gained some time. In the pit lane, they're losing seconds freely that easily and there's nothing they can do about it and you can't even get it on the track because gaining a tenth of a second on the track is look at the bmw oh my goodness me he is angry i usually don't use this word very lightly but he is properly irritated i i mean i would be mad too yeah like this is not the track you want to run out of gas at, obviously. I haven't seen anyone run out of gas in the pit lane in the endurance layout like that before, though, with that much ramifications. That lost at least one of the class members in for that machine at least 10 seconds on the track, likely. Easily. As well as caused the change for the lead. I have never seen anything like that in my years of Simray broadcasting on the iRacing service before at this track. That's, That's unbelievable. That's a first. That definitely is a first. In, in, in the wall of fame, essentially, just of top moments, of bizarre moments that's happened. And can you even blame the Corvette? I, I don't know. May, yes, it's, a, it's the Corvette's problem. It's their mismanagement. Yes, they did a bad job in terms of managing their fuel, but they would have never known that they would have run out of fuel with all these guys behind the pit lane. 
it's just... Yeah. I don't I, even... I... I... I, n I mean, you have the F-Box to tell, but I think they may have probably hoped that they can get to at least the pit box. If that was an uphill section or even flat section, they would have ran out of gas in the middle of the straightaway. In the pit lane, rather, and in turn had to take a tow. That's the only saving grace is that car could have been on the tow truck for a good minute yeah. here at this racetrack. Instead, I chugged along 26 overall on the racetrack. Yeah, that is not normal. All of that. That is not normal to see that all play out. Well, stranger things have happened on racing circuits, but this one, mine, th this one has... I don't even know what to say. This is strange, but okay, let's... I, I think we've digressed enough on this incident. It still is going to be potentially the most defining one, but nevertheless, okay, let, let's focus on something else. That's enough on this one. I, I'm trying very hard not to go there. But okay, Bentley Gods, racing, leading in the GTE category. Now, what I'm very curious to see is where are our very good friends at HM Engineering at? They had a problem in case, uh, if, if you weren't there when this happened, HM Engineering were leading, folks. They had a big 30-odd second gap until when they did a driver swap, the new driver lagged out and they fell back to fifth in class from the lead. Yes, with a 30-second lead. Not kidding you, this really did happen. Where are they going right now then? My timing screen is... Uh, stopped. They're going to give us a bit of word on where they are then, Justin, yep. finally. HM Engineering, for comparison's sake, right now just came... They're starting to approach No Name Corner, or Bruxelles, rather. Bentley Gods is at least five or six corners up the road. Now, the gap specifically, as you can see, is down to just 14.7 seconds, so it's not as bad as it could have been from before. We're mm -hmm. talking about may take hours. It may take them single-digit hours at this rate, oh, as long oh, as they no. don't get doored by the OMP2. That was a close call, wasn't it? Crikey. Looks like he meets Micah Rain, and I don't blame him for blinking the lights either. That was way too close for comfort. There are unwritten rules of driving in traffic. You've got to let someone pass at the entry of the corner because as, as, as soon as you come to the mid part, it just becomes what too hard. What is he no. doing? He is cutting off the LMP 2s here. Exactly. He nearly just got turned by the 68 he was trying to cut him off there. And now that nearly caused a lot of trouble and lost him a lot of time. That is not smart. Uh, a really? This race has taken some interesting turns, let's put it that way, here today. Interesting has to be the understatement of the day, considering all that's going on. Just, just drama everywhere. I, I don't know, this is some, some weird stuff. But fun stuff. And it's time to recap all that fun stuff, because there's a lot of that happening all the way through. So. LMP2s, Dimsa Esports, as you see. Hold on a minute. 28 seconds. Remember, there's the difference in cycles on oh, yeah. them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Double stint yeah. for Simza, tires on Phoenix. Yep, so that's how, that's how the gap has come along. Thank you so much, Justin. I completely forgot that for a second. <laughs> T3 Esports in turn. Ring for... Uh, Ring and Esports are in fourth with Derna Motorsport Club EV. They've been doing a good job in fifth. Then, of course, the Prism Sim Racing Beta, WS Racing Esports Magenta, who always seem to be in the pits when I check my timing stream, bizarrely. And Mortal Racing Esports, the 40. Coming up in P number eight. We're just talking about that battle right with HM Engineering. They lost a few tenths with all that craziness with all the LMP2s just now. He's still 14.5, make it 14.3 seconds behind. He goes right now. Race Union has dropped to third at the moment with online-simracing.de rounding up the top four at the moment. 
Heard some sim racing alpha rounds with the top five with Austrian sim racers ROT, with Valkyrie E Racing Green, and along with Ringford Sim Racing GTE rounding up the top eight so far in this race. By the way, from one of the Corvettes, that was from Stage One's Corvette in this class. Team representatives have apologized for what just happened down that pit lane a few moments ago. Samil. Yep, it's it's not directly their fault. I mean, you can't blame them for holding up because they didn't have fuel. It just happened at an unfortunate time. But nevertheless, very sporting of them to apologize for something quite like that. But yes, as the GTE is done, uh, GT3s, family and bomber, easy at the top, nice and clean, nothing to worry about. Everything is just fine. Cool, chill. Sunday, not Sunday, Saturday evening drive at Spa for Uncle Shops. Who doesn't like that? Simso Esports GT3, second. Hyundai Motorsports Sim Racing Black, a lap down. That's how good the family and bomber team has been. The German performance Audi in fourth. Absolute Motorsport in fifth. The Ring Fizzard Sim Racing GT3 Pro team. The AM teammates have been having a bit of a bad day, but nevertheless, they're doing a good job. Albrecht in seventh, and Team RaceKidder.de finally moving up to B8. Has been just that type of a day, right, for the 257. Their organization, they've been so quiet. They've just been able to hit their marks this entire time. You have to say the opposite for the Austrian Sim Racers. They've had to deal with penalties and tire locks, but for this respective car, they've just ran away for everybody else. Not even really much of a scratch on their BMW. Clean as you like. That is how you run an endurance race. Just got to keep it clean, you've got to keep it strong, stay away from unnecessary drama. Easier said than done, yes. How many times have I said that today? 20, 30, 40, 50, nevertheless, it's the same thing. It just, it is what it is at the end of the day. That is the case with the Jonas Racing. But these guys have proven that even if you're dominant enough, I mean, we, we saw Sims are being a bit dominant, we saw... Well, I think in the GTE category, HM Engineering being a bit dominant, but these guys have just been able to keep it clean, away from any sorts of drama. And yes, even connectivity counts in something like that. In fact, I remember when we had the Porsche Esports Super Cup race here at Spa, Dane Warren for VRS Quan, a sim sport, had just joined the team. And Dane Warren is properly big. He, he's competed quite a bit in that, and there's a lot of excitement surrounding his move to VRS Quan, a sim sport. First race for the team and he gets a power blackout. So you made sure that when he comes back for the next one, he has an inverter installed, that even if there's a blackout, he still has an emergency generator just to keep things available. Sim racing. I mean, those are things you need to do, Ryan. And the main yeah. thing is, though, at the same time, you have to also have to hope your internet doesn't get a blackout because that can happen too. So you might need, say, a router with the battery backup or a modem or the battery backup or hope that the power lines aren't destroyed from a lightning strike that take the internet cable. Anything can happen, right? You need to be prepared for the unexpected. And for some of these teams, they've been more prepared than I've seen many others be in the sim in a while. There are some teams who lose three, four minutes trying to scramble in moments. Drivers today have only lost up to 90 seconds in some cases with those type of outages. Not bad. Let's call it that way. Could be worse. That, that's the one thing that comes to mind. Could be far, far worse in a case like that one. Nevertheless, I didn't quite notice, but we're right here in the sixth hour of the race. It's been going off very quickly the way all the drama has progressed so far in this race. And yeah, why not? I think it's a very good time to go for a race spot TV fan immersion. Just feel what it's all about. Go on board with the Austrian Sim Racers ROT team and just listen to the beautiful sound of that Porsche Flat 6 engine. Time for a race spot TV fan immersion. We shall be back real soon.
Back again here on the iRacing Esports Network. It's the HNR 24 Hours of Spa Frongeschamps, organized by Mule Motorsport. Myself, Soman Aurora, here along with Justin Prince, and we had a brilliant couple of laps with the Austrian Sim Racing team in the beautiful Porsche 911 RSR race in Real World 2. But that team finds themselves in P number 5 in class, that's a GTE. But nevertheless, while all that drama was going on, while we saw the Porsche do some amazing laps of the spa Francochamps circuit, the Simza Esports team, Justin, have just been plowing away at the very top. In fact, not, not only did they have a gap of around 28 seconds when they began this stint, they still have maintained that gap, but in terms of their lap times, they are not too far off. So even though Phoenix Racing have taken fresher tyres, Stims are only 3 odd seconds behind per lap. That, I have to say, is still an incredible performance by Gustas. It just seems to be knocking home runs lap after lap here today. If anything, he's grown the gap since the pit stops by at mm. least five seconds, not five, by uh, three seconds rather so far. It's just been incredible whenever he's been, been behind the wheel. But again, I don't know if this is sustainable because I, they'll have to likely take tires the next stop, right? Yeah. So in turn, that time's going to balance back out to where it's going to be tight again. And if he jumps out of the car, that's going to be the telling sign of if they can make it work into segment two for tonight's action. It's still another eight laps out, though, until they have to come down and pit. Yep, the cycle is still to go, of course. Lots of time for the LMP2s. You ought to chart a few tanks then. So these cars do chew up the corners very quickly, but then they have to come back in the pits rather soon. So unlike the GTEs or the GT3s that we also have racing right here, they do not go by the R. So that did sound a bit absurd for a second, but no, it's pretty decent for the LMP2s. It's pretty fast as we get a beautiful curb view shot of all the cars coming past. There's the 23, Phoenix Racing Esports green one. And the Audi, fourth in GT3 class, and the BMW, all the cars spread out. In fact, one car that I saw right there that was quite intriguing was the HM Engineering machine, the red and white Corvette. Rasmus Busk is behind the wheel of that car, as the BMW, oh dearie me, slides on the gravel. Welcome to iRacing Rallycross at Spa right here, folks. But nevertheless, that small incident aside, which rather clearly for them, HM Engineering have had a bit of a topsy-turvy race so far. They were dominant. They were, say, the only guys in the GTE category until Vlad Kimchev lagged out when he started to drive in. So HM Engineering fell back to P number five. That's their story. And they've been fighting their way back through. They've been climbing up the ropes. They've been climbing up the pyramid. And now they find themselves in second. Now, the interesting thing, Justin, even though they had all this drama with the LMP2 cars a couple of laps ago, they are only seven seconds behind Bentley Gods. So that's a comeback. Yeah, that's actually seven seconds gained since the last time we checked in on them. Should note that it did hit the back end of the car in front of them you just seen. That was, I believe, Phoenix Racing. They just hit the back end of in the middle of the source. Might have got a little scrape. Looking like they're going to be okay, though. That's going to be the main thing. That does add to the incident count is the downside, though, if you're this organization. You can see just no scrapes, thankfully, for either car it looked like. That could have been disastrous. Could have indeed. Thankfully, everything is all nice, beautiful, and clean, as it should be in this stage of the race. Still, 18 hours and 27 minutes left for the race to end. Rasmus Busk, of course, starting the car, qualifying it. So he's been doing a fair bit of driving. He'll be on and off. And HM Engineering have been changing drivers quite a bit recently. So it should be interesting to see where that thing plays off. But still, closing off the gap. He, he's been he's been fighting hard. The adrenaline has been getting the best of him at times because all the incidents that he had with the LMP2s were, uh, let's say, a couple of inches here and there, and they could have been diabolical. But it's good to see him be where he is right now, do a very good job. And HM Engineering as a growing team, they need results like this one. They need good finishes. They're a growing organization. They're getting people into the team. They're growing in size. They're growing in stature. This is when it all culminates and a race win right here would do them a world of good. 
Absolutely. They've had some good victories in their history, this organization, especially some of the Danish and Nordic local series, as we talked about, some great speed in some of the major events in some of the prototypes recently, especially with the last raw for the prototype. Or prior to the OMP2, rather, its predecessor, I should rather refer to. But this is one where I think this is a good stepping stone again. Helps them grow, helps the brand, helps the driver. It's an environment that I think it's going to be a good fit. Where they go is going to be up to HM Engineering as a whole, as a group, and so far. Rasmus Busk has been taking them closer and closer. Another two tenths gain this lap. Let's say he's a bit of a popping jay behind the wheel. He's exciting, he's fast, he's quick, he can get the job done, but sometimes it's just controlling the emotions, keeping them in check. That's what could be the potential downfall. And nearly was then, nearly was half an hour ago, but Edge Engineering were involved in all that drama that we had early on. Keeping it clean, thankfully. Everything is just about fine. 18 hours, 25 minutes and 11 seconds on the clock as it stands. Time is running out right here rather quickly. And all the battles that have been going on have just made sure that the time spent is a lot more enjoyable in the way things are going out. A lot more fun. And our fun is only just beginning. Because the Turing Fizzard Esports... Sim Racing LMP2 team, RP number 4, Ronnie Durek has just gotten behind the wheel of that car. They have made a resolution of sorts to get behind Mike Ehrang. Now, Mike Ehrang has been in the T3 Esports car for a fair bit. Fatigue will eventually become a factor for him. Is it enough of a factor though? Because if you look at the lap times, the, the Ring Fizzard Esports team are gaining, they are faster. In fact, the last time out, the T3 Esports team Lap time of 2 minute 4.970, a dismal one in comparison to what the others are doing. The Ring Fizzard team, 2 minute 3.162. They're growing, in, they're growing in the way they are getting up to the very top. This gap is being chewed out eventually. And Justin, when we approach this, say, some, the pseudo mid part of this race, when you get to the proper, it's a quarter half of this race somewhat. Fatigue is going to be a bit of a factor. Drivers do have to look at it stint by stint, but still. Do you focus more on the short term about nailing the moving target down? Do you still look at it and say, yeah, this is a long time. Maybe I can play longer then. Maybe I can... I don't have to stress about catching that car. But if it happens, if it happens, then that kind of a case. That's an interesting discussion point where in that. You don't want to, of course, end up running out of energy and running out of steam behind the wheel or end up passing out and falling asleep with the wheel. Because there's <laughs> been cases where I've heard that happening and you don't want to have that happen. Perfect example, the iRacing admins will put you in the video. Well, because when they're stopping this in that form of race, but what I mean essentially is that's where the rotation comes into play, right? Some drivers you might be able to pick up from the European regions. For example, put them in the car. You might have yeah. some from North America. You'll be able to put them in the car right about now, for example, because in Eastern time, it's nearly 1 p.m. Guess what? They can race in the afternoon up until, like, say, 9 o'clock Eastern. Gives you some time to swap back and forth for at least three, four stints if you have the assets. That's the big thing, though. You need to have the team members. If you're, say, all European-based, it can be difficult uh, to where you essentially have a weekend on where you're going to have to catch up on sleep sleep afterwards, but it's gratifying in the end knowing you completed the job. Now, if you're in the case of this battle, by the way, there is the different strategies. It's going to be important for this move to be made, I think, as for this organization, for when they have to take tires in this eight car, to then in turn, hope they can build up a buffer amount of time to the T3 Esports machine for later on in the race when they intersect again. Now, interestingly enough, normally if it was a global iRacing special event, say like the Spa 24 hours, the big uh, VCO one, and not to say that this one isn't big, this is huge in terms of the prize money on offer, the teams competing, but that one, that one is a far, first far more global. This is still, say more pan-European, lots of German teams competing, Dutch teams, Belgian teams. And so, 
with the driver base largely largely European this night stint is going to be literally like in the real world a night stint and as Justin mentioned you won't have anyone from North America there won't be afternoon for any of our drivers in your team so essentially you do have to enjoy it out this is still the easy part this is where you still see the apexes this is where the track temperature is rather cool all the cars are nice and clean and getting tangled up in any lap traffic you're just chilling letting the time pass letting time do its own thing but when you come dark when you come to the dark hours of the race as we will rather soon as we head towards dusk in a very very short period of time that is where the real challenge begins and that is going to be something very very fun for these guys meanwhile the ring wizard esports team just fizzling out a little bit losing three tenths of a second in that last lap clearly the momentum is shifting if not very dramatically towards the t3 esports side slowly but steadily it's all happening right here at spa it's one of those calmer phases of the race where everything settles in i was going to say there is a couple of different us based users should know watching hmm. along from who are in backup roles the main person I'm looking at is the ben Ligon squad trevor pastrami not pastrana pastrami <laughs> who is standing by. Again, this is an iRacer that is only a couple months into the service. This team having them in with 12 wins already on the road course and just 71 starts, already has gained more than 2,000 I rating in the span of a couple months, which is actually a significant clip. Has competed well against some good talent as well, including the VRS GT Sprint Series. So it's a good driver to have in your roster. Yeah. Some of these groups do have those assets, not all of them, as you mentioned, though, because some of them, they're going to have a lot of tired drivers <laughs> because of them based out of the DEAT CH club area. It's a couple of teams from Italy base. Yeah. The main American based contingency, you have to say, though, is 11 9 Simsport, where all but two drivers are based out of the United States club wise. And we've seen as well earlier today one of their UK based drivers in Dave Self. There's a lot of diversity in the field when you look at things though, based on the organization. But a lot of these teams, as you mentioned, are German based, where they've raced against one another for several different events in the past. That depends on different times of the day. And thankfully, because it's a 24 hour race, it all circles back up, so there's no particular advantage for one person. It just depends on different stints. Right now, I mean, in a couple of hours' time, the American drivers will be in the peak comfort zone, the peak territory, afternoon, evening. It's all fine. That's where the European drivers will be fatigued, tired. The sleep schedules have to be adjusted accordingly. And you may be thinking, but hey, Justin and Solomon, it's just a video game. They don't have to do, no, they do have to. It is serious. The prize money on offer, the pride on offer, the kind of effort that these guys have put in all matters towards the end. And these guys will be putting in immense, immense amount of hours in preparation. In fact, uh, some professional racing drivers, some professional sim racing drivers put in an excess of 20 hours per race. And Brian Lockwood from Racecraft Esports, a team that's not competing here, but they do in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. Brian Lockwood once spent 60 plus hours preparing for the first round of the Porsche Esports Super Cup. That's serious commitment. The cars may be virtual, but the racing isn't. And that's where, when I first started in the sim, to be quite honest, there were people saying, to be good, you need to put in a thousand laps a week. And the first thought is, how do you find the time for that? To be able to even run a race, let alone be able to practice those laps con consistently. Then you join competitive organizations and then you gain the experience and realize you need more than a thousand laps to be able to do that. What I mean by that is some of the drivers on the oval side too have seen in perspective some you know, drivers go up to 3,000 laps wow. in the span of two weeks. And we're talking for tracks such as Talladega even, not Talladega, rather more like say Michigan or like a mile and a half circuit because they're, that's how important it is to find every tent you can get in these cars. 
you can say the same of the road courses. There are several endurance teams who practice for hours upon hours per week for this type of race. Remember, some of these rosters have been locked in since September in preparation for this yep. event. Yep. So they've had a lot of time to work on this, to say the very least. And you mentioned the prize pool. Don't forget, the winner in each class, mind you, 150 euros. Second, 110 euros. P3, 70 euros. That is a lot of money to be able to come away with. It's one of the bigger prize pools of 2020, mind you, let alone for a road course event such as this. And of course, this one being a standalone event, it's not a part of a major season, so the importance just grows off size because this is the only one, this is the one big event that you want to prove yourself in. And all these teams growing organizations with high ratings of around 4,000, 3,000, 2,000 between all these drivers. So they want to make a, they want to make a mark. This is the time where they come up and just try to prove themselves to the bigger scheme, to, to the bigger audience on the grand scheme of things. And look at this battle going on right now between a Ferrari and a Corvette. No, you might be thinking, yeah, that's two Corvettes. So are you blind? But no, that's not for position. There is another Ferrari up ahead. That's the online oh, sim racing. Look at that. That's for the lead. That's for the class lead. Ah. Where did HM Engineering come from? They were seven seconds back ten minutes ago. Ah, that's a good spot. That's a very good spot. The Bentley Gods team had no inkling about this. HM Engineering are now within half a second of the Bentley Gods. This, this should be fun. My goodness, they really took advantage of some of the traffic placement and this is right so perfect. Look at this send. They nearly send it in the back end of an LMP2. Rasmus Busted just trying to take this lead back. He's pushing hard. Rasmus, my man, just go a little bit calm at this stage. Saw his emotions getting a bit high. 30, 40 odd minutes ago when he was fighting with a couple of LMP 2s This is where you have to have nerves or steel. You have to calm yourself down. He's fired up. For sure he is fired up. And he doesn't give a tinker to about anyone or what anyone has to say in this case. He sees a moving target. He wants to knock it down by moving ahead of the Bentley Gods team. It's a case of redemption in this case. HM Engineering falling back to no fault of own directly. It'll be a fairy tale of sorts if they can just get it done. And we expected Justin, we said, oh, it might be in the last four hours of the race, so it might be 10 odd hours later on. And we both were wrong. Here he is, Rasmus Bust, taking advantage of the situation. Almost there. Almost there. This should be fantastic. Corvette versus Corvette. Bentley Gods versus Etchum Engineering. Cue the drama. Cue the excitement. This is Peak and Jones Racing. It's just going to be how he takes this move. He's been 1.2 seconds quicker over the past five laps on average. There it is. Use the traffic as a pick. What a send. What a cross. Easy as you like from Rasmus Busk. It was a long time coming. And at last, he got his foot stuck in there. And that Corvette is back in the lead. Pretty early on, I must say. We expected this to go for a long, long way past. Rasmus Bus was livid. But that is something that can channel drivers to do much better. Redemption, anger as an LMP2 car. That's not any LMP2 car, mind you. That's the Sims Esports LMP2 car, the leader, going wide at Eau Rouge. Yes, indeed. They just came in for their scheduled stops as well. So right as we head towards the end of this portion, mind you, everything's getting tense again. With HM Engineering, now they can try and run off and away, but that LMP2 you just seen pop out now has Timo Toika. Yes, the fan favorite jumping into the wheel, behind the wheel for Simsa Esports, drives stock cars on the iRacing service as well as on road courses. He's going to be the one this team has to depend on now. And this is another one of the drivers who runs a lot of stock car races on the service and runs a lot of American-based splits and times. The matter is, can he keep the time? And, oh, by the way, 
The Ferrari is lapped, so take the Ferrari pit strategy out of the equation. Hmm. Hmm, that should be interesting. So what does the Corvette have in store here? He's gaining time on the Ferrari. Shouldn't be a major problem for them, so just to dispose past on the Ferrari and... Yeah, that's... That could be happening sometime soon as the clock ticks over. We could be seeing both of these categories coming in the pit lane around 10, 15 odd minute times. In fact, if you're just joining us right here, Racebot TV slash endurance for life timing. And as I say that, the Ring Fizzard Sim Racing GTE team has been able to make their way past the Ferrari. Oh, no, 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 no. The number 66 is going on there. That is the Phoenix Racing Esports team literally on the edge Literally on their, on their toes in this case. They wanted to get past both the cars without losing time to Simza. But goodness me, there was no space. So the Corvette moves past the Ferrari right here. All nice and beautiful, Justin. But what just happens to the Phoenix car? There was just a sense of panic there for a couple of seconds. I think it was more so there. Yeah, they have a good cushion, the car in front. It's just, again, the Phoenix Racing Esport team needed to gain time in quick. And that's the big key, because this is now their shot to take the lead back with them now on the older tires, yes, on the double stint. But now they can try and reel in Timo Toika on the back and forth. Oh, Timo Toika is behind the wheel, that Simza East. Yes, that's Tuka. what I just mentioned, yes. Yeah, I, I, I barely noticed that. Timo Toika, if you're just watching and if you're new to the iRacing endurance scheme, folks, Team Toika is a fan favorite. He's got a whole legion of fans following him around everywhere. And he's I mean, quick. I mean, everyone likes Fat Timo, right? That's yeah. nickname. So. That's nickname. Not in a derogatory way, but uh, maybe they should change it to Fat Fast Timo, like, like an alliteration of sorts. A freaky fast Timo or something. I think he'd prefer the, last, the latter of the two, but... In all yeah. seriousness, as mentioned, also can run good on stock cars. He used to run with Nexus Esport on that side before he moved over to the Sims sign for full logos and decals like the road sign in the middle of the summertime. He's one of the team's stalwarts. But the thing is, he's already lost about a second since the pit stops and over the past two laps. Part of it, well, most of it has been traffic. Why do you think Kevin Volk has been pushing so hard? Well, the pressure is on in this case. Everyone has to push. It may seem like lowly ass, dull ass in this part of the race, but it isn't far from it. Hey, look at that. There's your shot for his social media. Simza GT3 and Simza LMB2 side by side with each other. Breezing past him. I'm sure the team managers will be just looking for that one picture perfect one with both these machines side by side to each other. Of course, Simza Esports on the Middle East, a team recently very, very invested into the iRacing and John's side because they've been participating in many, many major events as have the other teams and that's the fun part, isn't it? Teams coming in, joining the service with such a great sense of enthusiasm. And the best part is, Justin, the diversity is amazing. Sometimes it's just a group of friends come to our racing and say, hey, I want to do endurance racing. Let, let me just form a team with my friends. Sometimes it's professional companies who say, okay, we want a representation in the sim racing side of things. And sometimes it's just real racing teams who say, we want to do have our own thing in sim racing too. And on other times, it's just a couple of racing drivers who say, okay, I want to extend my brand image. Here's a team with my name. We've got so many multiple types of racing, sim racing teams around, but nevertheless, the competition is equally as high and the pace, they're just pretty similarly matched. Exactly, and you want to have someone to push you to be able to help you improve and in turn, feel like you can help them. And I think in that type of organization, they have that, but... For Kevin Volk, he's going to be upset with that traffic he just had to deal with. He lost more than a second and a half back trying to get around. I believe that was an Audi. Yep. Not working out for Kevin Volk as it stands in second place. Losing the lead, remember? In the pit lane to Sims Esports after a dramatic comeback from their end. And now they're losing time in traffic, so it's certainly not 
ideal for the Phoenix Racing Esports Dream Team. But again, they've got the Phoenix in their name. Can they rise like that from the dust? And pro progress to do something rather special. Meanwhile, uh, the car that you see in the pit lane, the flashing BMW, that's the Ring Fizzer Sim Racing GT3 AM machine. We've had, we've, had, we've had a bit of a tricky day, let's call it that way. And meanwhile, Simza Esports GT3, Burkhard Maring, has also made his way in the pit lane. So the cycle is just about beginning, but I would be slightly worried if I was Simza. Because I've come in six hours, six minutes, I beg your pardon, before the R ends. 25 laps to stint too, and some of the drivers have gone an extra lap, but they've been pushing hard and having a lot of fender benders. Let's put it that way with that left front, but they feel comfortable with this as we'll try and see what they can do here they are just at the very edge of the pit limiter here too to try and roll their way into the pit stalls here there have been some different strat calls for the double stint the double stint dip pit stop times for reference sake 41 seconds this will be one of the minute and 10 second stops though new driver in the car lewis goodway now the drum to just me two and or is the cloud cover starting to really kick in as well? And the track temp is now the lowest it's been all race. So, can we see triple stints? Potentially. Is there a benefit of triple stinting? Perhaps. Because double stints are a reality. We saw them at the very beginning, even in the morning half of the race. But I would have to say I think it's possible for the night time. More so. Right now, you might be able to try. The main test subject will be though, when things cross over to Peter McKay and Jonathan Burr, if Simsa decides to do that with GT3, because they might actually be able to possibly do it now because the clutches. Yeah. This track isn't gonna get really any much hotter if the sun comes back out. It's going to dip and quick once the sun goes down, right towards the on-racing minimum, if not lower. In other words, and don't be shocked to see it. Exactly. It's dipping. We're coming towards dusk. Clouds are coming coming over. And that just brings me on to a question that I have for you, Justin. You've been on the iRacing service for far longer than me. And, you know, night racing is something that's rather compelling about iRacing. Unlike other sims, iRacing does offer proper comprehensive night racing simulation. So it's not just like we put a dark screen on the top and it's like, hey, there we go, night racing. <laughs> It's a lot more different, it's a lot more serious in the way things go about. So, when you're racing in the night, is spotting your apex is really that much of a challenge? And we, we spoke before the race began about incident points, about penalty points. Drivers cutting the corners and getting penalty points for that. Is it going to be as serious of a factor while times progress as the race union team cycles back out from their pit stop behind the online sim racing .de car, which is still yet to pit? I think it's still going to be a, a big factor. It's not as big as when it first came out. Because when night time first came onto the service, or night cycles in most cases rather, there were a lot of terrified drivers. The, fir the first race on the iRacing Esports Network, and for race spot, mind you, at the time, there were drivers speaking where they couldn't tell where they were going for some cases. It just, as time has gone on, drivers have gotten used to it and have been able to, in turn, get more preparation in for their marks. If you don't know your marks around the track, you're not going to have a fun time in the night time. Let's put it that way. Several of these cars are set up for the night time because it's the coolest part of this track and most of the race is likely going to be in the night time. In other words, the night time is a crucial part of the race. It's also where you might see the biggest attrition of the night and where several teams are where they have to deal with boom or bust situations. And some teams have really boomed and crushed their way out of chances. Others have absolutely busted their chances of victory from one major mistake in the night and trying to get around traffic in the night time. I mean, I remember Peter was going to be commentating on the next half of the race. I was commentating with him on a Porsche Sport Carrera Cup race 
happen in the night at Interlago. So the difference is there, there are no track lighting. So the drivers will literally, it was all about who practiced more. And that was the critical thing because in iRacing, all the bumps, the markers, the curbs, everything is scanned, laser scan, folks. And yeah, you may be saying somebody acting like an iRacing salesman right now, but no, generally it is that good. And the drivers who know the circuit pretty well, it's not just which way it goes. They are the ones who benefit in that phase. So then, all the race union team gets past the online simracing.de Ferrari. Maybe if not now in a couple of laps because of course, fresher rubber. We can do a very quick top 8 rundown before we change the streams, remember. We've reached the 6-hour mark and so the next stream will be coming in on different link which has been posted by the admins in the chat. So if you want to continue watching, which you surely do, I've got a clip on that link for that one. Simza Esports, after getting the lead back in the pit lane, are up into P1. But the main question right here, is it sustainable for them? Phoenix Racing Esports screen, high in MP2, losing time as it stands, but still a promising race up ahead in stores for, for them. P3 Esports were fighting with Ring Fizzed. Now they have established a bit of dominance in B number 3. Zim Sim Racing Better is in 5th. Turner Motorsports Club.ev in 6th. With the WS Racing Esports Magenta in 7th. And the Milner Motorsport Team Racing Pro, the guys who organized this event, in P number 8. Uh, Justin is here with us for the GTE wrap ups and wow, what a battle we're having on screen. Inch of Engineering currently holding on to that spot by four seconds now since retaking the lead after having to close in from 30 plus seconds after one of their drivers lost connection. And we gods in second, Prism Sim Racing Alpha in third, then Bugright E Racing Green in fourth. Keep in mind there are some drivers who will pit off cycle. And for Sim Racing GTE is currently scored fifth, online Sim Racing DE in sixth, Racing in seventh. This could soft shuffle around as you see one car just pulled off the pit lane. Austrian Sim Racers is also a recovery drive rounding up your top eight. Meanwhile, when you compare that to your GT3s, it's been a Sunday drive for the 257. 12 second gap still. Simsy Esports is closing in a bit since the pit stop window for some of the cars, but Absolute Motorsport is a lap down. No, nearly 202 minutes and 10 seconds back in their Aquavit Design sponsored machine. Motor Motorsport Sim Racing Black and Fourth, Frank Burchard Sim Racing GT3 Pro is in fifth, German Performance Sim Racing Team Race Getter along with the AMC Workenfeld.e.b. Pre Alpha Machine. Two laps down is the separation from P1 to P8. Been an interesting one so far. There's been some calm moments, there's been some clean racing, and then there's been the everything else that has happened, to say the very least, over the course of six hours to start this event. There has been indeed. What a race it has been so far, six hours in. Still, 17 hours left. It should be a fun one with Simza at the lead of this LMP2 category. So long then, folks. On behalf of Fugue Louise, Justin Prince, my co-commentator, it is myself, Summer Aurora, bidding goodbye. Stream number two, the link is right there in the comments. The racing is going to be fun. It's going to be Peter Mackay and Jonathan Burke taking over the commentary box. And man, they're good at their job. Trust me, they really are. Should be a fun one. See you folks and have a very, very good next 18 hours. Enjoy.